let it float like a butterfly right to your throat. Think it's a joke till you tenderize. Beat you up so bad, your friends are ass. Which way did he go? Hard to recognize, sort of like the face of a ghost. I'm blazing your boat. Don't think you're gonna be staying afloat. The waves on the coast claiming you on your way to the ropes. So let's go. Come on. If I was born to be a winner, then I'ma grow up to be a go getter. Yeah, that's what it is written yeah. in the plaques of kings One yeah. in a million, the billions yeah. are half the same yeah. If I was born to be a winner Then I'ma grow up to be a go-getter But what it is written in the plaques of kings One uh. in a million, the billions are half the same I've been a champion for all of my life uh -huh. As a young and golden medals more than something I like That's how it always look for challenges The sorcerer's type yeah. Always wear the hazard is Left hooks so where the Japanese yeah. Brought up with the savages I had to win Thought about the war long before they brought the battle in Hashtag warrior what he channel Pick up the ball, then I'ma slam it in What do you call what's really happening? Slapping with the platinum hand Full house, now bring it back again Oh, you lost, get back to hassling uh, Or hustling hard to get back to the front Reach for the stars until the day you catching them up But you ain't never gonna catch me, son You can call me the immaculate one Flip the track and you're done Supersonic, I'm a comic, short the black of the sun It's now back to the one If I was born to be a winner, winner. then I'ma grow up to be a go-getter. Blood, sweat, and tears written in the plaques of kings. One in a million, the billions are half the same. Come on. If I was born to be a winner, oh, then I'ma grow up to be a go-getter. Blood, sweat, and tears written in the plaques of kings. One in a million, the billions are half the same. Come on. If I was born to be a winner, then I'ma grow up to be a go-getter. Blood, sweat, and tears written in the plaques of kings. One in a million, the billions are half the same. If I was born to be a winner, then I'ma grow up to be a go getter. Blood, sweat, and tears written in the plaques of kings. One in a million, the billions are half the same. There is no quit.
chicas que nunca se les olvida. Las mujeres lo hacen mejor. They say there's something in the water that got them all acting so crazy. We can do it. 
say Sister Evolution or Revolution? Good morning and welcome to the Sister Evolution Central Coast Pro QS 3000. We are at Avoca this morning. My name is Britt Nicol, joined in the booth with Adam Hennessy. How are you going, Dimmy? Yeah, good, Brett. Stoked to be here. A big, important day of moving day for these athletes as they try to sort of advance into that really uh, solid point system. Everyone looking to try to get themselves onto the Challenger Series. So this event right now is critical to the outcome of where these servers will sit when it comes to qualification. Good looking waves too. We have a little bit of a bump in swell throughout the week. A little bit of a wind on the face, but still plenty of opportunity out here for the surfers. We do have the women in the water this morning. Yeah, there was definitely waves down in my hometown in Manly. Yes, that was like four or five foot. So I knew there'd be waves up here. And by the looks of it, we've had some really, really tight heats, tight battles. We're into the uh, round of 32 in the women's. Uh, big heat it is. Dimity Soil out there taking on Lillian Young. Isabella Campbell and True Stein, so just a stack way to start the morning. I do believe, Britt, these are 30 minute heats. And uh, we're going to be running right through the completion of this round and into the men. So it's going to be a bumper day. Excited. And as I said, so much on the line here. And we've already seen both men's and women that have been some upsets. And um, it's going to be interesting to see who actually, you know, takes that challenge on and handles the pressure of trying to get those 3,000 points. It is, and a lot comes down to this event. This is, of course, our final stop of the Vistula New South Wales Pro Surf Series 2023. Second last opportunity for surfers to lock in points for that Challenger Series campaign. We have the 3,000 here, and then finishing off this leg of events, 5,000. Yeah, definitely. Like you said, uh, 3,000 points is going to be a big chunk of your, uh, your performance when it comes to qualification. And already, as I said, having a look through yesterday's scenarios there was uh, you know some dramatic you know falls from the draws in the men's and women's so it's going to be a bumper day and as you said the last event of the Vistula New South Wales Pro Surf Series and traditionally one of the uh, the better events on the circuit in Australasia and as as we spoke about a little bit of bump on the face at the moment but great to have Vistula and Sister Evolution involved in the event and uh, I'm sure the athletes are appreciating a little bit more power in the wave, considering what we had at the last event. Actually, mind you, Maruba <laughs> was pumping. We have had uh, some small waves throughout the entirety of this series. But uh, yeah, surfers just managing the conditions that they've been dealt with with every single event. We've had massive waves to tiny waves to what we've got here this morning. And well, surfers making the most of this opportunity at the moment. Isabella Campbell, she's only locked in a 0.9, but still plenty of time remaining in these heats, Dimmy. Mentioned they're 30 minutes, so allowing surfers all the time in the world to lock in the scores that they need. A yeah, nice little airdrop out of the lip there for the surfer up and right, and I do believe that. Might be very hard to see in the glare at the moment, but I'm sure we'll get a confirmation of who that was. Nice read, and look at these nice, tasty rides. So that looks like true, just on her body rotation, really nice turn. Getting very funky with it indeed and able to ride out of that turn. So that was a definitely a point of difference for the surfer from North Narrabeen. She's got a very unique way she goes about it and very, uh, you know, pretty to watch on a way, but it was good to see her sort of, you know, change that up with a bit of aggression on that, that final manoeuvre, Brett. It was, Dimmy. It wasn't a clean manoeuvre, but true, you know, she engaged the core. You could just see the, the core strength required to even complete that turn. She drifted the tail, got a little hung up and down the face. Just stuck with it. And hopefully it off for the surfer in green. Got the completion that she was looking for. Probably one of the better waves that we've watched so far in this heat. Of course, heat number five of the women's round of 32. Sister Evolution Central Coast Pro QS 3000. We are at Avoca, just in front of the Shark Tower. 8 a.m. start. The women's round of 32, and we'll be following that with the men's round of 32. So a massive day of action here at Avoca. Yeah, it's going to be a bumper for sure. And waiting on these scores to lock in that first wave of true starling was a 5.17, so that's a nice way for the North Narrabeen local to start off. And as I said, I like the aggression 
and the judges rewarding that a nice uh, combination of turns. Look at that glare out there. It is a beautiful day. Apparently it's going to be 34 degrees today, so it's going to be a hot one. And here's that one from True, just that really nice engagement of the rail and that turn. You just see how low she got that drop while it's sort of leaning into that turn. I felt she probably left a little bit out there with the, uh, with the, you know, exit of that turn. But I do like the fact that she really had a crack at it. So the judges gave that a 5.17. Lillian Young was on the way before and she had a 3.33. So not a bad way to start, of course. Dimity Stall, uh, one of the most decorated surfers of her generation, definitely coming through, looking to get herself back into the elite ranks. And it will be interesting to see what she brings with her power game. These days, sort of mixing it up a little bit with WSL, uh, working as a commentator along with Laura Enova. But uh, for her right now, it's, she does want to be behind the mic. She wants to be in front of the mic. She does. She wants to be on the other side of that camera. So Dimity saw a bit of a slow start, which is uncharacteristic for Dimity, but I feel like with her experience, she'd be just waiting for those good waves to come through, really putting herself in that position to catch the ones with quality. And like we said, 30 minutes on the clock, there's plenty of time for these surfers to lock in those excellent scores. Yeah, I feel like with 30-minute heats, she's probably uh, hasn't even, you know, that, that thought process. She's just out there focusing on that next opportunity. But 30 minutes definitely gives the athletes that advantage of being a little bit more patient but uh um, yeah these the service are lucky to have 30 minute heats today. i reckon that's going to be really intriguing when you get into both the men's and women's because they they've been coming from that sort of rapid fire 20 minute exchanges so that little bit of extra time uh, it does change the scenario when it comes to your strategy and the way you go about your heats Oh, it does, Dimmy, for sure, you know, and it's one of those things. You don't normally see 30-minute heats until the very tail end of an event towards the semis and finals, but we're into the round of 32, and we've already kicked off with 30-minute heats. So, you know, normally we, we do see that with smaller conditions. It might be allowing those competitors the extra time, but uh, we've got plenty of time in our schedule to give the surfers as much opportunity as they can for this event. This is, of course... Sister Revolution. Central Coast Pro QS3000, great to have Sister on board. They are the sister brand to Vistler. And, well, it's the first new women's pure surf brand with an offer from swim apparel, swim to apparel to wetsuits. Who have launched in the past dec decade. Great to have Sister on board. If you're wanting to look at their product, head to sisterrevolution.com. Plenty there to be had. Yeah, I did uh, just that not too long ago, and they've got some fantastic apparel and, and uh, very environmentally friendly as well. So great to have Johnny and all the team from that brilliant brand involved. In and they've been a real kind of key element to the development of this series and the development of events within New South Wales. You know, the QS is to have multiple events in our own states, pretty incredible. You don't get that sort of luxury around the world as we see a surfer up and riding. And I think that might have been Dimity. Maybe wrong. Oh, no, it was Isabella Campbell. But, yeah, great to have such a, an amazing brand involved, supporting development within Australia. And as I said, this event itself, so many different partners. Of course, the presenting partner, Mad Max. And our supporting partners, without them, we wouldn't be able to hold these events. The Central Coast Council of Oka Beach Hotel, what a great venue that is. We've stayed there a lot over the years. Uh, Destination New South Wales, WSL and Surfing New South Wales. So great to have all these partnerships with these brilliant brands and uh, to Rowan and his team on the ground doing a great job. But right now, it is... 20 minutes to go, so right now 10 minutes has elapsed, so a third of the heat's gone, Dimity saw still out there just waiting for that opportunity. She, they're probably all out of free surf this morning, so they've identified where they want to position themselves on the bank, so it'd be pretty important for her next ride to sort of stamp her authority on, on this seat. When you look at it on paper, you go, yeah, Dimity saw probably the most experienced campaigner, but these other three athletes, they've got games, so she's going to have to be on it. Dim, she'd definitely be the favourite on paper. She's a former World Tour surfer, was on tour in 2014 and 2015. 
Well, she's looking to qualify for that Challenger Series and get back on tour. We're just under 19 minutes on the clock. This is the women's round of 32, heat number five. At the moment, it is True Starling in the green from Northern Arabine with a 5.17. Lillian Young in the black, 3.33. Izzy Campbell from Western Australia in the white in third place and Jimmy Stoyle in fourth at this point. But that is True Starling on screen. Great first turn. Can she get another connection? So she's looking for a backup now, Dimmy. Almost called you Dimity then. We've got Dimity in the heat. Nickname's Dimmy. Don't worry, that's all good. <laughs> People do get uh, for the first heat. Exactly. <laughs> I will say right now that I feel like uh, True Starling has really started to find, you know, that that meat in the sandwich when it comes to competitive uh, prowess. Like I feel like in the last couple of years she's developed that skill set. But going off what she's achieved in 2023, I'm impressed by her ability to put you know, multiple performances together. I felt like when she was a little bit young, it was a bit hit and miss, where she was trying to find that rhythm, that groove, that comfortability in, in heat scenarios. But right now, I feel like she's starting to really show her wares as, as a solid competitor. And it'd be great to see her take the next step and get herself into the challenger. Right now, she's in the lead. Last wave, a 4.40 and a 5.17 is the highest wave. But I think it's more about the visual effect of how she's surfing as well. I think she's made a lot of advancements. She's uh, worked very hard on her craft and it's starting to pay dividends. It is starting to pay off, starting to pay off for True Starling. She's now living on the Tweed Coast up at Cabarita. So she's made the move with the family. She had a second place at the Gold Coast Open, but like you said, she's had a couple of results already in this Missler New South Wales Pro Surf Series and one of those things with True Starling you know, I think both of us have witnessed just going off that conversation, the consistency in True this year. 100%. That's the most impressive thing. Where she, I felt like in the last couple of years, she could put a really good heat together, but she sort of struggled to put that back-to-back -back performances together. I feel right now that she's so confident in, in what she's working on and what she's been, you know, training for that she's now really starting to find that groove of, you know, getting four or five heat wins back-to-back. -back. And that's what it takes to get to that next level. You know, these surfers, are, there's so many great athletes in these events. You have to be able to be on your game, on your A game, every time you hit the water. I feel like that's what she's been doing in the last, especially in 2023. Yeah, you do. And I feel like with the QS, you know, like you want to be consistently making quarterfinals at least, the bare minimum for every event to, to be looking for that Challenger Series qualification, particularly in the bigger events like this one, for example, QS 3000 and the QS 5000s you make the quarters in those type of events, there's a lot more points on offer as opposed to QS 1000. So although a lot of surfers might have, you know, some really good results in the QS 1000s, when it comes to these bigger events, that's where the difference is going to be. Yeah, a quarter final is going to outdo a, a win in a 1000 for sure. And if you look at the ratings and the way it's set up, you can see those athletes that are at the top of the pile, they've, they're consistently getting quarters, semis or finals. And to be honest, when you have to raise that level again and go on the challenger, that's where it's going to come into play because you have to be able to put these back-to-back -back performances in to get on to the Our World Tour. And that's what they're looking to do out here. And right now, it's pretty intriguing to watch this heat because the Serpent Red, no, she is out there, ladies and gentlemen. She just hasn't got a wave. And I think as... That looks like true. In it again, she's... It's effortless the way she serves. She's got such a beautiful technique on the rail. And she's definitely got the, a unique stance for sure because you can tell every time she, she takes off where she's positioned. Yeah, even in a glary morning, um, you, can, you can really pick True Starling's style even just from the shadows. We watch a surfer on screen there. Not 100% sure who that is. It might be Lillian Young, but it could be Dimity Stoyle. Looks like that is Lily from the Angara Yamba region. So she'll be looking to get an upper number on the board. She's already locked in a 3.33. Dimity, she took off on a wave, Dimmy. It was a 1.07. So was it worth the wait with priority with 14 minutes left? Yeah, that's going to definitely throw a rhythm out for sure. And Lily and Young getting the job done, of course. Young girl from up the coast. And she's, she did a bit of our commentating with us last year at the, uh, the Skull Candy. She's great little commentator as well so she's got a lot of strings to the bow but right now for her she's just trying to improve on that 2.93 
like you said, Dimity saw very un... It's, it's not her normal game to be this sort of patient out there. And the fact that she took away with a 1.07, you know, that's put her under a bit of pressure now because she's at the back of the rotation and she's going to have to sort of give herself some separation. Maybe that will actually help her. It's interesting even just watching on screen now, this competitor here, that's Dimity. She took off right on the end section, but I just watched that wave just break so much further out. And I feel like there was a lot more opportunity for a couple of critical turns before the section where Dimity took off. 100%, but I really like how fierce that rail was engaged then for that turn for Dimity. And sometimes that can free you up. You know, look at that, a 6.17. Having priority... You can overthink it at times, and I felt like she, her, the strength of that last wave was the fact that she had the freedom of just sort of scouring the lineup and just putting herself in any position she liked. And imagine if she got that wave from deep on deep on the peak. That could have been a nine. We had the cameraman was ready to go, and I just I just watched it. I'm like, is anyone really going this thing? Going, going to go this way? They're just out of position. But Dimmy Soil, she capitalised off the end section. She locked in a 617 to the highest single wave of this heat so far. So the surfer in red, originally from the Sunshine Coast, now only looking for a 3.4 to move into first. Now resides on the Goldie. She's been there for a long time now. She has been there for a fair few years now. She, she's in the drag pack. <laughs> Is that what they call themselves? They've got, you know, like Steph and her and all the girls. They are always, they always have some fun, always having fun, always with a smile on their face. But she is, as I said, a fierce competitor. She's so well established in the uh, competitive ranks. And she has that steely kind of uh, way about going about a business. And that's why I still feel she's got so much to offer at a high level in the sport. You just saw that. She got a wave basically not on the end of the peak, but halfway through the peak. And she's still got the best wave of the heat. So that's going to give us some confidence moving forward. She's probably out there a little bit frustrated where she sits, but such as her uh, you know, expertise, I, I feel like she's in a really strong position now to advance on through this heat. And like you mentioned, Dimmy, that the priority situation, sometimes when a surfer does hold priority, they can become too selective and start to say no to waves that potentially they should have said yes to. So I feel like even though Dimity is in fourth priority right now, this could work to her advantage and just take that pressure off, allow her to kind of hunt the line up a bit more. Yeah, definitely. It just frees her up a bit. I feel like at times the handbrake that can be priority can really mentally sort of fry an athlete where you're sort of overthinking it and, and you're not really as free as you normally are. To be honest, I mean, they say surfing's a pretty easy sport. You get two waves and you do your best on two waves, but there's so much that, that inside that bubble of those two waves comes to formulate a heat. So it's great to see her actually free up a bit. And you just saw how, how solid her foundation is with that rail and the judges lapped it up as we head towards the ten and a half minutes to mark and someone is going to have a crack at this. This looks like true, is it? I do believe that was true starting the current, current heat leader. So that is the surfing green. And like you said, she's had some consistent results this year. Looking strong, looking to get herself into that round of 16. But there's still so much time on the clock for these other three competitors to get the job done and put a little bit of pressure on. Dimity Stall only needs a 3.4. Not a lot. There is not a lot in this heat at the moment. Lillian Young only looking for a 3.92 to move into second, and Izzy Campbell chasing a 6.34. So quiet heat here for the competitor in the white, Izzy Campbell. She's holding first priority and looking for a pretty decent score at this stage. We can up and out there for True Starling. Yes, yeah, so True Starling comes into this event ranked 19th, which, uh, you know, she's there and about. So another good result here will push her up that ratings for sure. But uh, she's going to have to have a, a big result here to get herself into that kind of mix of getting on through. Right now, Paige Harab, of course, is leading the QS ratings when it comes to the women's. And uh, good to see Philip Anderson get through again yesterday. So... We talk about consistency. Philippa has locked in herself quarterfinals in multiple events, in big events too. So that's why she consistent. Her consistency level puts her in that frame where 
she's going to have a crack at the challenger. But sitting in the position she is, she she knows that so many of the female athletes are chasing her, so she needs a big result. Here we go, surfer up and riding, and <laughs> lovely little dismount there with eight and a half minutes to go. Of course, it's been a pretty. Uh, I want to tap into this with you as an athlete, right? It's been a pretty long journey for the surfers, both the men and the women. And I felt like last year it was a real learning curve for for both the men and women when it came to making the adjustments with fatigue, because we basically had four or five events back to back. And that takes a lot out of a surfer mentally and physically. So I feel like this year, talking to the surfers, both uh, the guys I've been involved with and stuff, I feel like they've tapped into a better system that has worked for them. Because I felt like last year when they got to Avoca, some of them, some of them really sort of jumped, jumped up, and some really fell behind because I felt like they were a little bit drained mentally. So I think 2023 has been a bumper year when it comes to identifying that here we go it looks like dimity up and right in how do you deal with that the fatigue yeah like yeah like, as an athlete you have to go back and just switch off and, and put yourself in the best sort of position you can be mentally to make sure you stay fresh i think it's um identifying how you switch off like obviously people switch off in different ways and i think if you can identify what works for you that's where the difference is um you know like you might be surfing and traveling and, and you might be studying while you're on the road as well, but that's not necessarily switching off. I think yeah. it's finding um, different hobbies or, you know, ways of relaxing or tuning in with yourself um, to really just make sure that whatever you're doing to switch off from your contest zone is actually not creating more stress and more anxiety. That was a lovely turn there from True Sailing. But, yeah, and I think if, you, if you're winning too, that helps because it's that sort of that – positive energy as we see Dimity just getting loose but yeah uh, it's hard because I think they'd all be looking at you know scenarios and where they are positioned it's, it's, I mean you can tell surfers not to worry about that stuff but come on they're athletes they're finely tuned they'd be looking at the ratings they'd be going okay I'm in a great position that in itself adds a little bit more pressure to especially to someone who is young and coming into that ranks where I feel like someone like Dimity a little bit different because she's got so much experience. But, yeah, I feel like, you know, there's so many ways to go about it. But from an overall point of view, I've, the athletes have definitely sort of embraced the, uh, these multiple events better and they've ha handled it a lot better this year. Yeah, I agree with you there, Dimmy. I feel like a lot of these surfers have just found what works for them as we watch Izzy Campbell. Just a quick one there. Unfortunately, not able to get the completion. But, yeah, I just feel like... Yeah, if they can find ways of switching off outside of the contest zone, even if it means like, I know a lot of surfers stay right on the contest bank and they stay in houses that might be right there, but I feel like sometimes it's better to stay 10 minutes down the road and you can really just disconnect Give yourself the some, event site. Yeah, some space. Um, I think that that's a good option sometimes. And I, with the rankings thing, it, it's a hard one because you look at the rankings and you want to know where you're sitting, but then at the same time, it does create that, that extra pressure. And I think there's ways of going about it that you could potentially not look at the rankings and just solely focus on your performance. So if every event is if you've got to get through heat, so you're not there to lose. Um, you know, you're wanting to put everything into every single heat that you surf. And at the end of the day, if you've done enough, you'll get through, right? I definitely feel like there are some surfers who have that ability to just lock into that 30-minute challenge and then identify it and then able to switch it off and then sort of re sort of calibrate what they're doing and, and refuel and do everything you need to do to, to make sure that you're in that really good uh, physical and mental space when you go back out there but it's definitely an art form that they have to learn and these this is what these series is about just learning your craft as we see surfer up and riding attacking that is dimity she was looking to offload that 1.13. That's definitely going to be out of the equation now. But, yeah, like, it's such a great development program that WSL have got when it comes to you yeah, allowing such a high level of competition but also allowing these surfers to actually learn and sort of they always used to talk about the QE grind, you know, but just allowing them to develop their skill set because you can be as talented as, you know, anyone in the world. You can be one of the best surfers. It doesn't always 
transfer into the competitive field. So you've got to learn your craft. And I feel like that's why overall, even at the highest level, the sport's growing really rapidly because of these systems. It is. It's a whole picture sport. You can't just rely on your surfing. Like, yeah, one one thing is talent, but there's so many different factors that play into the sport as a whole, whether it's your nutrition, your psychological performance or your physical performance or your surfing or you know there's so much mental strategy that also goes into surfing and you know it really is a whole package bigger picture kind of thing you can't just solely rely on surfing no there you go look dimity store as we spoke about before look there's a barrel locked in a 617 and it's just backed that up with that two turner a five point ride so very professional approach Knowing she needed to offload that 1.13, she's now in the lead. True Starling now in second and is up to the surfer in black to get a 7.44. And unfortunately, a little bit out of rhythm. It happens in some heats. Isabella Campbell, she needs a 9.67 and she'll need to get that, I'd say, in two increments. So she basically needs to start again and look at True Starling's 10.77. But time is the enemy, Brett. It is two and a half minutes on the clock. This is, of course, the women's round of 32, heat number five. There are eight heats in this round. Following it with the men's round of 32. And, well, we have 30-minute heats, so plenty of time for surfers throughout the day to lock in the scores required. But at the moment, Dimity Stoyle in first place, True Starling in second. You'd almost say the two more experienced competitors when it comes to QS campaigns are moving on through this heat at this stage, whereas Lillian and Izzy, they're relatively new to the QS, still quite young, more than capable of getting the scores oh, required. talented. Very talented indeed. And I was just thinking about the tides today. It's going to be pretty tricky today because the tide, I'm pretty sure the low tide's about 10 o'clock. So um, it's going to be a tricky day when it comes to making sure you're on the right waves because I feel like there's going to be some waves that offer a lot of scoring potential and other waves that are going to run across that right pretty quick especially as we head towards our low tide but what is really good is the size of the waves and the quality when they come in i reckon there'll be a couple of uh pits go down today a couple of barrels the guys trying to get drained we almost saw one just before just the surfer wasn't able to get on out of there but uh yeah you mentioned conditions there dimmy and just you can see on screen just how much water is moving on that inside section and that's where it can get tricky as well you know you take off you catch a wave and then you can sometimes get caught which makes it hard throughout the heat towards the tail end to actually put yourself back in position if you're in second or third and fourth sorry five minute paddle out is really going to uh, affect you know your ability to get multiple ways but it also affects your uh, your levels of you know, like your breathing levels and, and trying to get that fatigue factor back. So it's so important to find those ways that allow you that opportunity to score, but also be smart in the way you actually, you know, work out how to get back into the lineup without, you know, cooking yourself too bad. So we are going to be heading down to the end of this heat. What a great way to start. So Dimity Soil really slow out of the gates, but forced away back with that 6.17 and backed it up with a five. So very, very professional approach from the surfer, from the Goldie. It looks as though that concludes the women's round of 32, heat number five, Dimity Stoyle and True Starling moving on through. We'll go to a short commercial break and join you back here with all the live action of heat number six. <laughs> motivation.
it in all of us. That craving to feel new again, to see something new that will blow our minds, or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales, a place to feel free, to feel alive, and most of all, to feel new again. Welcome back to Avoca Beach for the Sister Evolution Central Coast Pro. This is a QS 3000 event and our final stop of the Vistler New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2023. We are now into heat number six of the women's round of 32. My name is Britt Nicholl. Join in the booth with Adam Hennessy. How are you going, Dimmy? Good, mate. Good and stoked to be here. And uh, another exciting heat. And what I have noticed is there's a lot of Japanese contingent surfing in this event, both in the men's and women's, as we see surfer up and right in nice first turn. I feel like that's Paige Harab in the white. She, it's very much like True Start in that last week. She's got such a unique way about surfing. And she's the actual current leader of the series. She's been on fire. She wants it. She wants to be back in the CT ranks. She does. She, she's probably looking at Portugal the other day going, <laughs> oh, God, get me back there, please. <laughs> she's got a bit of work to do, but she has been seriously the standout performer with surfing like that. What about the way she just went 12 o'clock into another big jam? And I love the fluent nature of that second turn. She didn't get caught in the lip and the judges lapped it up at 6.83. But like we said, uh, she's definitely been the standout performer on the series in 2023. It was interesting to speak to her on that post-seed interview a couple of events ago. And she spoke about, you know, how what COVID did to her mentally when it came to, you know, missing just that. Because she's been traveling since she was about 16 as a competitor. So she said she that time at home really sort of allowed her to evaluate exactly what her career meant to her and it sort of re sort of uh, fueled that passion she has for competitive surfing and you can see in the way she's come out this year she has just absolutely been on point she has been well she's ready to go she's currently number one on that 2022 2023 wsl qs series ranking paige harris she's a former world tour surfer a total of seven years 2010 to 2014 and then 2018 2019 so she knows what it feels like to drop off and then work her way back on tour so she's more than capable of rising to that challenge hey Charib, she competed on the challenger series last year finished 33rd i feel like she didn't necessarily have the year that she was looking for and maybe left a little out in the water but she's looking to go a lot better here for 2023 yeah, I feel like last year's challenger was, would have been disappointing for someone of, of her stature. Her best result was at, Bledo, at the Bledo Pro. She got a ninth. But yeah, I, she would have gone away and really had to think about exactly what transpired in those events because there were some really good events that I felt like suited her surfing as we see up and right in. Nice forehand gouge in turn. But yeah, if she gets another crack in 2023, which I'm pretty sure she's going to, I feel like uh, she's going to be a lot more confident going into it. Oh, she should be. She's been in that contest rashy for a number of years now. She's certainly got what it takes. But I think, you know, like, like we were talking about before, it's one thing to have the talent, but just all that hard work behind the scenes. And we were talking about fatigue and mental fatigue. And, you know, for someone like Paige Harrow, like you mentioned, she's been traveling the world since around the age of 16. She's 32 this year. And I think, you know, over time, you really got to find ways of re-energizing yourself and remaining current as we uh, speak to another former World Tour surfer. We have Dimity Soil down there. Dim, it's Britt Nickel and Hello. Adam Hennessy in the booth. How are you feeling after that Hello. first seat? It looked a little bit tricky and slow to get started. Yeah, I was missed of so many good ones. I was just out of position and the rip was up. Yeah, I feel like I was just sitting out a bit too far. Kind of got the spot at the end of the heat and then... Um, yeah, by the end of the heat, it was kind of over. I'd, I'd already had um, a couple, but yeah, if I'd had start that heat again, I probably would have sat in a little closer. 
Well, you don't need to. You uh, got through and got the job done. But talk us how you go yeah. approaching first heat of the morning. Obviously, you know, you've got a heap of free surfers out there. Then you paddle out for a heat. Only four competitors in the water. Can it sometimes be a little tricky to find your positioning in the lineup? Yeah, I hate being first heat. I like I don't really know a surfer that likes it, really. It's like um, you're also just um, you're the test pilot heat for the for the contest, you know, like um, – and when there is like, there's about 50 free surfers in the lineup beforehand. So I don't free surf before because I just, um, yeah, I don't see the value in like <laughs> trying to get waves when everyone's like really hassling to get waves. So I relax and stay on the beach and watch and um, prepare for my heat and my own. And, um, but it is hard because when there's 50 people in the lineup, everyone seems like they're getting good waves. And it's not until you actually look at what's like what would be a scoring wave for a heat and then you count and there is not that many you'd be like you've just got to be smart when you're watching a free surf and kind of not look at all the people ripping but just look at what what you think you might be able to do on that wave because boys are a different story too like they can punch out big airs on like a section which um yeah we can't so those things yeah, Dimity Dimmy here. Uh, question about, hey. you know, the 30-minute heats. How are you? Yeah, good. How are you? Those are <laughs> good. Thanks, Legend. Uh, but those 30-minute heats, uh, d does that uh, sort of change the strategy a bit uh, compared to, you know, the sort of that frantic nature of those 20-minute heats? Do you, do, you, do you get to sort of breathe a bit more air in and, and really calculate exactly what, what, what you want to do? Because even though you didn't actually get off to a start, I always felt that, you know, once you had the freedom of no priority, you were going to go attacking anything you could find. Was that how it felt to you as well? It's, um, it is hard with four in the lineup, you know. Like, if you take a bad wave, take the fourth priority, you kind of have to wait a while um, to be on a good wave. And 30-minute um, heats is just so much nicer. It um, gives you a chance to, like, open up and... Even though I gave myself a nice 20 minute heat in the end, I didn't take off until <laughs> about the 18 minute mark. But the difference was I had priority. So I kind of just said to myself, I'm like, yeah, sweet, you've got a 20 minute heat now, but at least you got first priority. So I can pick any wave I want. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a. <laughs> Love it. All right. As a fellow commentator these days, I wanted to ask you I, I know. Like so many of us know how strong you are as a competitive beast and, and we know how, how much you want it. How have you translated that, like, you know, to having to pull the rashi on and then having to sit back and watch the CT and go, oh, that's exactly where I want to be? How's that, so how's that <laughs> yeah. been? Has that been tricky? Oh, it's been, I mean, it's half-half, you know. Like, sometimes I'm sitting back to watch. Actions look so hectic, and I'm like, wow, I'm so lucky I'm not out there right now. Like, <laughs> the, the girls, um, there was a heat, and the girls were like losing. I think Gabriella Bryan needed like a 1.5 to make the heat, and it was just a dead closeout, like the worst waves you've ever seen for a heat. That's a, the points like that where I'm like, oh, wow, I'm like kind of glad I'm not out there. Like, it looks so bad. But then you've got, um, you know, like in, in those other heats where like, the girls are getting some nice barrels and like, yeah, I'm definitely like, those are the most, I'm a good weather surfer these days. <laughs> I just like to surf when it's pumping. <laughs> well, hopefully you get pumping waves in the round of 16. We're going to wrap it up there, Dimity, but well done. Thank Congratulations. You. We'll be looking forward to interviewing you again soon. Thank you. See you later. So, Dimity, yeah, she's such a good competitor. She's fierce. And, and that's what I like about uh, the nature of what she goes about. I, and I was thinking about it actually, uh, not today, but I've been thinking about it over the last month when I listened to her commentate and I was like, surely deep down she knows she's got it and she knows that's where she wants to be. And, I mean, she surrounds herself with some of the best athletes in the world. So that would fire those juices up as well. And I just feel like, you know, 2023 could be the year if she can get on to that challenger and, and, and if she could make the CT ranks. But, yeah, it is a, it's a fine line. Look, I was just thinking about it when she spoke about, you know, the Gabrielle O'Brien thing. Uh, um, I watched the heat of a young guy I had a lot to do with when he was young, Maxine Houston, it the other day, and I was, like, so frothing because I was like, he's true, you know, in a heat. Caelan Robson dropped a 10-point <laughs> ride in the last, like, minute or two. 
And I saw it pop up on my phone, right? I actually turned the heat off. I went, I've got to go to bed. And all of a sudden it said, Caleb Robson, perfect 10. I was like, no way. <laughs> I said, at that moment, you know, you just feel for these surfers. And uh, Dimney sort of would have that in her arsenal as well because she's right there. She's, she's, on, she's on the CT as a commentator. She's analysing exactly what's going on. But deep down, I reckon she, uh, it's fueling the fire a bit more for her. Yeah, I remember having this conversation with you a few weeks back in one of these events while we're on broadcast, and it is, I feel like, you know, Dimity's there, but she isn't where she wants to be when she's there, if that makes sense, and, you know, she's, she does a DJing as well, you know, Shimmy Disco, she does that with a lot of events and around that crew, and, you know, and then she's on the scene commentating those World Tour events, and, yeah, like you said, I, I think deep down, where she wants to be is on tour. Yeah. She's there at the moment, but just not in the surfing aspect, and I think... You know, if she can just find that consistency again this year, qualify for that Challenger Series, and, well, she'll see herself back on tour. She knows what it takes. No stranger to winning events at that top level at the moment. We've got a replay. Uh, Destination I was replaying. This is his first wave of Paige Harrow. Very nice connection. Just the depth of that bottom hand turn helped to really elevate to 12 o'clock and uh yeah very nice way to start another nice ride for a goofy footer look at that just aggressive i think that is surfer very hard to see at times out there this morning with the glare but yeah the girls really i believe that was the the japanese surfer in green with a 4.83 so nearly halfway through this 30 minute heat and interesting in, to get the inside of dimity regarding just that first seat and you become like the crash text dummy of of you know of what the scale is set really when you think about it uh and she said it and she identified it really well she said that when you're watching guys in the lineup free serving before a, an event there's 50 dudes in the lineup and it feels like everyone's getting good waves but when you get out there it, it just changes the landscape so it's it's good to sort of get a different view on you know how tough it is i remember an interview with kelly slater he hates morning heats i think it's because he uh likes a bit of a sleeping but like he does he's he doesn't like the morning heats and you know dimmy said it's hard to get out there and be that sort of that benchmark of what the day is going to actually provide when it comes to not only the wave quality but the scoring potential and what the judges are looking for what scale they have set yeah that first heat i feel like it is very much a guinea pig heat and well yeah it sets the tone for the rest of the event and the rest of the day so competitors really having to identify where the position is on the bank and like Dimity mentioned she chooses not to go for a free surf when there's that many competitors in the water just sits back keeps a close eye on it and really just tries to pick the eyes out of where those good waves are coming from because when you've got that many people in the water it's just everybody seems to be up all the time and it can be tricky so she did well. She uh, did well also to just readjust. 30 minute heat, she thought of it. She goes, you know what? It's just a 20 minute heat now. And that's how she approached the situation. So she did well to just click into that mental strategy as well, knowing that she's just got a norm another normal heat on her hands really. Yeah, so it was Anun Masuka out there with that 4.83, Paige Harrop with a 6.83, and it's up to uh, the surfer in red to get herself a 2.57 and Charlie Hurst out there only needs 1.67 so a bit of a slow start and how you know how many times you see at all events all around the world where you see as we see this replay of Paige Harab's first wave just what a way to click in a gear but how many times you see it uh, at all levels where it looks like it's pumping just before the first heat of the day, you get out there and, and the uh, ocean stops. <laughs> it does happen it a shows lot. you who's boss. It's <laughs> like, mate, I'm controlling the reins here. I'm pushing all the buttons. And everyone's like, oh, what happened to the waves? But, you know, that happens so many times on, uh, on all levels, even junior levels. You, kids will just come in and go, what happened then? So 30-minute heat today, I feel like that again is a, a major advantage for the surface to identify and uh, take a, a different kind of look into what they're trying to do out there in the ocean it uh, frees them up a little bit more but it also we've said it so many times that 
sometimes, you know, that extra five minutes or extra 10 minutes, if we say, can prove a hindrance as well because some surfers, when you're in the lead, you just want it over, especially if you're in second position and someone doesn't need a huge score. Here we go. Looks like... Is that the surfer in red? Very hard to see out there right now. We'll wait for those scores to lock in, but with 13 and a half to go, of course, this is the Visla New South Wales Pro Surf Series, the final event of four in the rotation. Great to have such a, an amazing brand. And this is the Sister Evolution Pro, the sister brand. Of course, they celebrated their first basically anniversary and then COVID hit. So to actually fight through that scenario and, uh, and still be flying high, it's, it's considered by the public as just one of the most great brands. Uh, the apparel is amazing, both men's and women's. Wetsuits are, are great as well. And to have them involved and being the major sponsor of this Pro Surf Series is, is great. It's a big shout out to everyone in the office and everyone who is uh, a part of that Missler team, Johnny and, and Toby and everyone. It's been great to have you guys involved for a long period of time too. I was going to ask you, do you know who's actually leading the series in men's and women's? Uh, the... yeah. No, I don't actually. Yeah. I'm sure you do though. It's oh, probably why you asked me the question because I feel like you know the answer. I actually don't. <laughs> but if I was going to say who I thought, uh, I thought maybe Solly. Well, actually, no, Mikey Madonna would be. What am I saying? Yeah, Mikey Madonna. Been... He's won two events. So Mikey would definitely be winning the yeah, New South Wales Pro Surf Series in the men's. But it's been three. Maybe Kobe Enright. Maybe. She'd be out there. Nixie. Nixie? Yeah, she'd be out there as well. I know Nixie won the series last year. But it's interesting too because we had the Great Lakes Pro, which was a QS3000 as well. Yeah, that so sort of changed things up. I feel like that that's probably the determining factor on who's where. Yeah, that's those. actually, you're probably right. So Nixie and, and Mikey would probably be first in both the men's and women's there as we head down towards uh, the final 11 and a half minutes. So it's actually been a pretty slow, even though there's plenty of waves, you can see them rolling in. It's, it's trying to find those waves with those corners and, and allowing these surfers the ability to really attack. So we haven't seen a lot of long rides, but we've seen quality and depth, especially from Paige Harrop. A 6.83 was definitely the benchmark of this heat. And I love the patience and the uh, fluent nature of the way she goes about it. She is in first. And as we speak, Charlie Hurst has jumped up in the second with that last wave at 3.8. It looks like in a 3.17. But as this tide Brit starts to drain away, they're going to have to be a lot more picky about trying to get themselves on quality waves. You can see the surfer in the lineup waving their hands. If you're a bit of a novice, that's just trying to get the attention of uh, the beach announcers. They're not looking at anyone on the beach saying hello, good morning. They're just trying to get some information. And what a critical role the beach announcer plays in, in all events because they, they're the ones who have to give the information to the athletes. You sit there and you go, oh, how cool is it to listen to someone talk on the beach? But realistically, their main role is to feed information into the uh, mindsets of the athletes. And it's such an important role as well. So we are down to 10 to go. Surfing Red did lock in uh, 2.27. And I feel like that was Paige Harrop again. So right now, the Japanese surfer, Anu Masuka, needs to get a 2.14 to move up. Pretty tight between second, third and fourth. And Paige Harab, the current QS ratings leader in this region, again, just showing, I feel like uh, very much like Dignity in that last seat. They just have a, a very structured way of putting the blocks and the bricks on the house. It's impressive. It is, and I think, you know, that, that comes with maturity in the sport and the fact that they have been competing for such a long time and... Just being able to fine tune everything. And I think, you know, we talked about Paige Harab earlier with that transition over COVID. Just being able to reevaluate as we watch live action in the water. That looks like it might be the competitor in the black, Charlie Hurst, just not able to get the completion. Catches a rail. She's currently in second place. 
not going to be the 7.2 that she's chasing for first, but will she improve on her second place position? Yeah, I feel like they've got a, all the surface today are going to have to be really aware of just that that breeze and that little bit of chop on the face as well, uh, because you'll find a lot of people do grab rails and uh, and and that can throw out the rhythm of, of the ride. So it's just being aware exactly where your position is on the wave. And that looked like a good wave to start with as we see someone on the back end and, oh, nice elevation into the lip. That was the surfer in green backing up that 4.83. And I feel like that's going to be enough to get her back into our second position, the Japanese competitor. And out wide, just dropping into a bomb. Wow, that was a lovely turn. And that was red, I do believe. So this is starting to really tighten up. We saw a 4.23 Brit for last of green. And that was a really solid connection on that turn for the surfer in red. Wow, I liked it. The surfer in red, that is Anissa Flynn. She's looking for a 6.79 to advance at this stage. She's only got a couple of small numbers so far as we watch the Destination New South Wales Wave replay. Cracks a lip. That was the competitor beforehand, but here, beautiful first turn, top turn combo. That was so well placed under the lip, and you just see how much, how much speed she got off that bottom end turn when she engaged that rail. I'd love to know what she was riding out there because that looked... On point, a 4.07 wasn't enough to put her into our second, but it's shortened the gap. She only needs a 4.99 to go from fourth to second. Charlie Hurst with that last wave needs a 5.26 for that nice connection for the Japanese surf. I felt like uh, put her in a position where she's got two waves in that sort of mid range, and it's put a little bit more pressure on both third and fourth. It also puts pressure on surfers like Charlie Hurst having competitors in the event that aren't from the region. So we've, we've spoken about it before with the Sarah Baum case of her points not counting. She surfs for the South African um, country. But you've got competitors like Anon in the green and also Anissa in the red. They're both international competitors, not part of the Australia Oceanic region. So their points won't count. They're just here for experience. But it means that they could potentially be spoilers for surfers like Charlie Hurst. She's currently in 11th place on our rankings and looking for a result here at the Central Coast. 100%, and we just saw a lovely finishing move for the surf in white, and you knew she liked that. The way she came out of, the way she rode out of that wave, I felt like she knew she was on a winner here. <laughs> that is such a sick turn. And, and like you said, like, Charlie Hurst, it's a different mindset because when you go against surfers that you're actually, you know, day-to-day -day competing against, you know what they bring to the table. And sometimes the unknown can be a real, you know, heavy distraction for a surfer. Can be. You don't know what to expect. And at the moment, the battle of the goofy footers, all four mm. surfers on their back end. Yeah, that's an interesting stat. I wonder what the ratio these days are, natural to goofy worldwide. What are you doing? That should be my next adventure. Try to work that out. I'm a goofy footer. I'm very goofy. <laughs> out of Just, the water too, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> had an intriguing uh, morning this morning trying to get to work, just doing the hard yards as I do. But, yeah. Yeah, I'm a goofy footer. I love goofy footers. All my uh, heroes were goofy footers growing up. Barton Lynch, uh, definitely Tommy, TC, uh, Tommy Carroll, and... Um, and then a little bit further along, Damien Hardman, all Northern Beaches surfers and uh, all world champions and all goofy footers. And, of course, probably sort of my finest, you know, later on would have been, oh, coming back from what he went through and uh, to fight back and get himself back on tour and then finally winning a world title. That is tearjerker kind of stuff. So, yep. Not a lot of goofy footers down in Manly, but they all do go left, but at North Stain, I will say that. Because <laughs> that pipe is dangerous, that pipe. Definitely the pipe. All right, so we're down to four to go, and it is the surfer in white. Paige Harrod locked in a 6.23 for that last wave for that one turn. So judges rewarding that, and wow. That was... She's feeling it. You can see the body language. She's just... I feel like she's just on point with every turn she's doing, and, and that kind of momentum will carry her through 
into the coming days. Look at the way she just attacks this wave. Nice setup. And this, bang, wow. Solid connection with the lip. Was that a half claim? A mini claim, you reckon? I feel like it was a semi no oh. claim claim. There was a bit of hand jiving going on there. So there it is. Last of green is 6.03. It extends her second place position, Charlie Hurst, in the black. Now chasing 7.06 and the competitor on screen, Anissa Flynn, chasing a 6.79. So requirements have extended. The job is a little harder now for third and fourth with just over three minutes on the clock. Yeah, I'm impressed by the surfer in red, Anissa Flynn's attack. She, she comes from a very solid base and her speed lines are amazing. I just feel like it's been unfortunate so far. She just hasn't found those waves that open up. She, if she gets two turns done, she'll, she's dead set got the game to have an eight. Look at that, how quick that transition. Had she been able to get into the lip of that next turn, I feel like that wave is going to be a solid keeper. So we are down to the final three minutes to go. Great to have, of course, Destination New South Wales involved in this event through its uh, major events agency. They've been supporting serving for a long time and, you know, it gives everyone the opportunity to, to come to these beautiful venues, Avoca Beach on the Central Coast. Great place to bring your family. Central Coast is uh, one of the most, you know, drawn out spots when it comes to quality of waves. There's so many different locations. We encourage everyone to get down there and uh, have a look at the event if you can in the next couple of days. And also, if you want to bring your family, come to the Central Coast. It's a great place to visit. Two minutes. So both black and red, Charlie Hurston and uh, Flynn, they need some big numbers to get through now. But their surfing has been on point and it's going to be about opportunity. Paige Harab, the, uh, the veteran, I would say. She probably doesn't like being put in that kind of scenario, but she is a veteran. She's been around for a long, long time. And uh, as you said, seven years on the championship circuit. That is... Stats-wise, that'd be right up there with some of the best ever. I feel like, you know, getting yourself on the, on the CT ranks is such an achievement, such a, a wonderful achievement. To stay there and the longevity of being there for seven years is an incredible achievement as we see surfer in and out. Even just showing that resilience, you know, in, within that seven years, she did fall off to her and she had to, Twice, I think. She had to grind her way back there and, you know, like... Hey, she knows what it takes. She's been around for a long time. And just to have that resilience to be able to go, you know what? I still want to be on that world stage and, and find a way back there. So hats off to the competitor in the white. Kiwi. The Kiwi bro. And Sister Evolution, great to have them involved. Of course, the sister brand of Vizsla only launched a few years ago and has been involved with Surfing New South Wales in a competitive nature since its inception, as we see the surfer in green, I do believe, up and right, and that is. I think that could no, be Charlie. No, that's Charlie Hurst. Hurst, actually. I was just going to say, I noticed that uh, that style for sure. So she needs a 7.06. I don't know, Britt, if that's going to be in that ballpark, but she's definitely a talented young competitor and she's got plenty of game. She does. It was a beautiful first turn, but just not able to get another connection. The wave kind of just fizzled on her. But Charlie Hurst still puts together a great effort here for the women's round of 32, heat number six. So we will conclude that heat. That's the current heat leader up and riding, doing a bit of a victory lap. Paige Harab, current first place woman on the QS series at the moment. We're going to cut to a short commercial break and join you back here with all the live action of heat number seven.
or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free, to feel alive, and most of all, to feel new again. the motivation. It's a beautiful day, huge thanks to Surfing New South Wales for getting out there, not only um, communicating with people about why it's important to not use single-use plastic, but how easy it can be to transition and stop it and swap it. We're basically down here to showcase how we are reducing our plastic footprint through all things like keep cups and reusable water bottles and our beautiful toggles which we use instead of cable ties. We've invested in about 100 water bottles and keep cups. Um, we've distributed to the whole team. You know, everyone's so passionate about this program and so enthusiastic to be a part of it. We're doing our bit to give surfers a cleaner ocean and save the environment for a better future. Welcome back to the live action at Avoca Beach for the Sister Evolution Central Coast Pro QS 3000. This is our final stop of the Vistler New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2023. My name is Britt Nicholl, joined in the booth with Steve Robertson. Robbo, we're into the women's heat number seven of the round of 32. Yeah, what a fantastic day. Um, we've got waves, we've got uh, amazing weather. It's almost like summer here and uh, it's going to get hotter as the day progresses. We've got a few replays from earlier in this heat. Talk us through this, please, Britt. Beautiful first turn, a little hung up, but she managed to capitalise through that section. Frothy wave. So a couple of competitors off to a quick start. That's Nixie Ryan on screen there, carves into the pocket, looking for the inside connection. And also the surfer in red. So quick, quick couple of scores there, nothing too much of substance at the moment. The highest in that first exchange was Coco Cans, a 383. So at the moment, she is in first place. These are, of course, 30 minute heats today, starting with the women's round 32. We'll be following this up with the men's round of 32. Moving on into the women's round of 16 will be Paige Harrop, our previous heat winner. Paige, it's Britt Nickel and Robbo in the booth. How are you feeling at Avoca this morning? Hey guys, um, yeah, I'm cooking. I shouldn't have worn my wetsuit, but it's um, pretty nice out there. Hey, hey Paige, you're no stranger to spending a lot of time on the road. Dimmy and I were having a conversation throughout your heat, just in terms of the mental and physical fatigue that some of the surfers and athletes can experience throughout this leg. Can you talk us through how you manage the fatigue? 
Yeah, my home, most of the year is my suitcase. Um, but yeah, I've been doing it for so long now. It's pretty much all I've ever known. So um, yeah, I love it. It's um, definitely a bit of a roller coaster ride over the years, but um, you just have to listen to your body. And um, when it doesn't feel right, you have to actually take a day off. And um, yeah, it's hard sometimes, but just uh, learning to listen to my body as I get older. <laughs> Paige, coming into uh, this event and uh, next week you'll be in Newcastle, no doubt. And after that, the Challenger Series. You must be really focused on, on this coming month. How are you feeling about you know, what's ahead of you immediately? Yeah, no one's actually said if I've qualified yet. Um, so I still want to try to get a couple of good results in the next couple of comps. Um, but yeah, looking forward to the Challengers and Surfing Snapper again and the new one at Narrabeen would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, just liking my boards and feeling really good for the rest of the year. Well, no doubt you will, uh, you're, you're really focused at the moment, so we'll let you go and prepare for your next round and good luck as you uh, surf on, Paige. Cool, thanks guys. That was Paige Harab, our competitor from New Zealand, former World Tour surfer looking to get back on tour. She is also the current leader of the WSL QS series for 2022-2023. So as she just mentioned then, she's not safe yet. No one has told her that she's qualified yet no. for that Challenger series, but maybe a good result here will solidify that spot. You'd have to think she's very close, being in the number one position and progressing through already into the round of 16. And with all that experience, know-how and ability, um, Paige is uh, ready for a great campaign this year, I'm sure. That's our surfer in white. That is Sasha Baker. Great two-turn combo there from the competitor in the white. We'll wait for that score to be locked in. Right now, she is only looking for a 3-3-4 to move into second place with 22 minutes on the clock. So there it is. Last of white, a 4.67, the highest single wave of this heat so far. It puts Sasha Baker into second place, now only chasing a 1.56 for first. Ray Campbell in the red in first place, thanks to a 3.73 and a 2.5. As a QS 3000, uh, great to see the contest organisers actually adding 10 minutes or five minutes to these heats, 30 minute heats, plenty of time. They're giving the surfers every chance because these points are really, really critical. Yeah, you're right, Robbo. We don't often see 30 minute heats this early in an no. event. Uh, you know, it's normally our semi-finals and finals that we might move into 30 minute heats. So the surfers having that opportunity and the extra time in the water to lock in the scores required. But I feel like it can also be a case of, oh, as we watch a surfer, <laughs> just go for the barrel. That's Coco Cairns. He's already locked in a 3-8-3. I'll be interested to see where that score locks in on the leaderboard. But just back to that, I just feel like it can also be a case of, I wish there wasn't an extra 5-10 minutes. If you're at the <laughs> tail end of the heat and you're, you're in first place and then all of a sudden yeah. you get bumped into third or fourth, it can be a You'd tricky be one. you it, yeah. It can be the quickest or longest extra yeah. time. But with four surfers out in the lineup and they're all... Uh congregated together on the one bank i think 30 minutes gives them absolute uh, maximum opportunity to get their waves coco cans a 4.83 and a 3.83 she's been impressive all this season on this series and no doubt she's focused on that qualification into the challenger series which are coming at us really quickly brit they are. It has just been one event after another, back to back to back. Coco Cairns, she's had an amazing result already. She got a second place finish at the QS 5000 on the Tweed Coast. So it was a great way to, I guess, start her 2023 campaign. And in saying that, the points did carry across from late last year, but just a great start for the surfer in the black. She looks to qualify for that Challenger Series. But on screen, that was Nixie Ryan from Lennox Head in the green. She's currently sitting fourth place on the QS series at the moment. She's looking for a spot on the Challenger. She's had some great results already this year. She's had a fair few first place finishes, so she knows what it takes to win. Live action on screen there. Any idea what the schedule is today, Britt? 
I believe it is the women's round of 32, heat five to eight. And then we'll be moving into the men's round of 32, the eight heats in that. And then the men's and women's round of 16 are on standby. So okay. they may or may not be on later All today. Right. It's either a really big day or it's a uh, reasonably comfortable day ahead for us. And it's hot. There's an expected heat wave across New South Wales and southeast Queensland. La Nina is finished. Be like 35 degrees or something. I feel yeah, like no. I, I can't feel it at the moment because I'm in air conditioning and freezing. But I, if I stepped outside, I'd be boiling. I know it is. No, I've been out there and it's a really hot day, and you can feel the heat. And it doesn't feel like autumn. It feels like summer. Watch the Destination New South Wales Wave replay of Nixie Ryan. One big turn, and it looks like she might have got rewarded on the scoreboard. A 5.67 last to green. So Nixie. Moves into second place. Coco Cans in first. Raya Campbell now in third place in the red. Sasha Baker in fourth and on screen. That was the current heat leader, Coco Cans. Looking for another number and wanting to move on through to the women's round of 16. Is of course the sister evolution Central Coast Pro QS 3000. Great to have sister on board for this event. They are the sister brand of Visla. Watch the replay on screen of Coco Cans. Great, uh, great turn in the middle there. She's got a lot of power, a lot of precision in her moves. I feel if she gets the wave that links up, we're going to see big scores from Coco because she's definitely got the power moves there. I just liked how she really just put that extra flair into that turn. She you does. You just see the drift in the tail. Yeah. Just over 17 minutes on the clock day at Avoca Beach. I feel like conditions are maybe starting to improve, Robbo. The, the wind had a bit more, uh, I guess, feathered texture on the faces earlier, and I feel like it's just started to back off a little bit. Yep. These are, they've picked out a great beach, Avoca. It's such a beautiful area, and there's always good sandbanks along here. It picks up plenty of swell, so there'll be no shortage of good waves, and we've got that light wind almost tending a, a light westerly and it might clean up even further but we're in for a great day of action that's for certain we have raya campbell up and riding on screen on her back end she's chasing a 4.88 to move into second place smaller wave but she's got the inside link up can she finish well, that's going to be interesting. There, like you said, it was a smaller wave, but it offered plenty of potential. And Raya reeled off some impressive moves, bottom to top turns, linking them together, staying in the pocket. So that wave, even though it was smaller, it offered a lot of potential. And she finished off well. So I'm interested to see what she gets for that. I think it's, it's potentially going to put a up position. We will wait and see. We'll leave that in the hands of the judges. Was it a 4.88? Will the surfer in red move into second place? Or will she still be looking for a score with 15 and a half minutes on the clock? Live action on screen. That is Sasha Baker from the Sunshine Coast. Further down the line, that is Nixie Ryan from Lennox Head. Get two turns in. So she's looking to replace a 2.93 and I feel like she's done the job there, Robbo. Yes. That's um, Nixie Ryan. And Coco Cairns, yes. beautiful turn there from Coco, laying into that last section. She's just got to find the wave that offers that a little more potential, and she's uh, hunting down big scores. But a lot of her waves are only giving her one move, and she's really pushing it on those moves. We watch the Destination New South Wales wave replay. Flurry of action out the front at Avoca Beach. White and green. And we also had Coco Cairns answer back. Just love the style of Coco. So effortless to begin yep. with and just laying everything into that last section. Just really nice to watch. She is. There we go. Nixie Ryan has improved her position. She's gone up into first place. We're probably waiting for a wave from Coco Cairns, but Nixie's well positioned with a 
5.67 and a 5.17, but there you go, Coco Cans. That powerful move has been really well rewarded with a 6.5. So Coco Cans goes to the lead, a 6.5 and a 4.83. Nixie Ryan in second with a 5.67 and a 5.17. Sasha Baker has a 4.67 and a 3.07. She requires a 6.17. And Raya Campbell in fourth position looking for a 7.11. So first and second have opened up a healthy lead, Brick, with uh, some good wave scores on their chart. They have. And interesting to know that Nixie Ryan, she opened up with one big turn. And it was a 5.17. So judges rewarding that one section, one big turn. And they've just done the same thing for Coco Can. She took off nice and cruisy style. She set up the section perfectly and she got a 6.5 for the one maneuver as well so i feel like judges just really showing what they're looking for in the criteria today surfers getting critical doing those big turns in the bigger sections and i feel like for coco cans the separation potentially might have been the fact that there was a bit of progressive and innovation side to her surfing there it, it was power surfing but she it drifted is. the tail yep so we watch the destination new south wales wave replay this is it here 6.5 wow she really lays into it and uh, yeah, puts it on the line. And that's why the judges reward those sorts of moves. So you can do um, I won't call them soft, but you can do medium backhand turns or forehand turns and do four or five of them, but one big powerful turn will eclipse numerous um, mediocre turns. And I guess That is the Destination New South Wales wave replay of a wave there from Nixie Ryan, a surfer from Lennox Head in the green. Currently in second place, so just over 12 minutes on the clock. Surfer in green, she's chasing a 5.67 to move into first place, so something identical to her highest single wave of her heat so far. This is, of course, the women's round of 32, heat number seven in the water. Sister Evolution, Central Coast Pro QS 3000. This is, of course, our final stop of the Visla New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2023. It has been great to have Visla on board again this year. They have partnered with Surfing New South Wales for the past four years on the QS events. And this event is, of course, the Sister Evolution Central Coast Pro. We do have the women's in the water. We've also got Visla Central Coast Pro for the men's side of the draw. The Visla and Sister Brands have a history in investment in grassroots surfing, both at a competitive and free surfing level. They have a range of products available. They are environmentally conscious and uh, looking to lead the way for sustainability. Be sure to check out Visla.com or SisterEvolution.com. Grab yourself some clothing, wetsuits, accessories, you name it, they've got it. We are thankful to have Visla and Sister on board. It's a fantastic partnership between Surfing New South Wales and Visla. Four years indicates that both parties are happy and it's um, growing all the time so it is amazing to have good partners like that developing surfing not just in New South Wales but the, for the whole of Australia and um, yeah we've got an amazing field here across the men's and women's there's a lot of international surfers I guess a lot of those surfers are in Australia prepping that they would have already qualified for the Challenger Series and they're warming up in these events. So I had a look at the draw before and, yep, there's a lot of Japanese surfers, there's Philippine surfers, they're coming from everywhere. And we're entering the real surf season. It is, and it, it's already been a long leg for competitors. And <laughs> I know you've had a lot to do with the Asian leg of events, Robbo, over yes. the years. And uh, within this event in general, I feel like there are a lot of competitors from that Asia region, like you said, Philippines, Japan, Indonesia, they're yep. all in this event. And for them, I feel like you mentioned it, it comes down to just having that competitive experience, experience in the Rashi. Um, they're competing against the Australasian Oceanic region right now. And although it's a, it's a good experience kind of thing and, and builds the momentum for those competitors from the Asia region, I feel like it can potentially be a spoiler for our Aussies. <laughs> Absolutely. 
You talk about the Asia region and, yep, it's uh, the last five years with a couple of my colleagues. It's been fantastic to work in that region and see what's developed and what's coming through that region is amazing. And um, already, and it's in a very short time, we've got uh, Rio Aida on the championship tour and he looks like he's already qualified for next year's championship tour. He's doing that well. So what's coming out of that Asia region is incredible and it's watch this space over the next uh, decade because as we know many of the best waves in the world sit in the Asia region and now we're seeing surfers of incredible ability come out of that Asia region as well and it's just growing and growing fast. They are here competing in our Australian Oceanic region Nixie Ryan up and riding. She is looking to qualify for that Challenger Series. She wants to come up against those competitors on a bigger stage. And we talk about those regional structures. The changes became effective once the COVID landscape kind of made things different for WSL. They adapted to that situation and created the regional series. So the seven regions throughout the world surfers competing in their own regions to then qualify for the Challenger Series and then look for that spot on the World Tour. A couple of good turns there from Nixie. Wait for the score to drop. Was it a 5-6-7? Will it take her to the lead? I feel like Coco Can's on a good way here. She is looking to extend her lead and wants to move on through to the round of 16. She's sitting... 15th on our QS series at the moment as we watch Raya Campbell up and riding answering back the surfer in red in fourth place chasing a 7-1-1 to advance so it's a pretty high requirement it'd have to be the highest number of the morning so far but Raya Campbell she is more than capable of locking in an excellent number just over seven minutes on the clock Nixie Ryan staying busy Robbo she is and um, I feel Coco Cairns may improve her scoreline as well off that last wave and Nixie has improved her score line so some good scores coming in it's going to make it tough for the surfers in white and green with just under seven minutes remaining but Nixie Ryan's gone to the lead I think we may still have a wave for Coco Cairns to come in I'm not sure Yeah, you mentioned that restructure from uh, during the COVID period. And I mean, it's nearly impossible to say anything good about the COVID years, but uh, it, the World Surf League spent a lot of time during that downtime looking at, their, at the way things were structured and they made adjustments. And those adjustments are evident right here. There's a beautiful first turn linking onto the inside. Will she finish it off? Not quite. Was that Coco Cans? That was Coco Cans in the black. She's chasing a 6.08 to move back into first place because Nixie Ryan in the green locked in a 6.9 and went straight into the lead. I feel like Coco, it was, it was a great wave. Wave selection was perfect. Beautiful section to start with, but yep. just couldn't quite couldn't get the completion. It off. She did get a 5.33 for a second to last wave, which improves her heat tally. It's made the requirement for white and green a lot tougher. They need a 7.16 and a 7.13 respectively. It's not impossible, but it has made the task tougher with five and a half minutes remaining. They need to get the best wave of the heat be the best wave of the morning so far. This is of course the women's round of 32, heat number seven. We have eight heats in this round. So the final heat of the women's round will come up next. And we'll be following that with the men's round of 32. And both men's and women's round of 16 still currently on standby for later today. They may or may not be on. The moment we know that the round of 32 will be served. Might be too hot to work by then. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be hot and humid, that's yeah. for sure. It's only not even 9.30 yet. Yeah. You mentioned Coco Cans. I think you said she's in 15th position on the rankings. But that, I think that's because she's missed a few events from last season. And I don't recall seeing her in Taiwan. So her 
her rankings, her ratings will be going up with every heat that she gets through, especially on the back of that second place in the uh, Tweed Coast Pro. Oh, wow. Dixie Ryan. She's got a uh, wide variety of um, strengths. How are the judges going to score that? As we watch the Destination New South Wales Wave replay, Nixie Ryan getting progressive, shows the innovation, goes for the crab rail air. I like it She got it a lot. the completion. Yeah. I'm interested to see where they go with that too, Robbo. Yeah. It was Something a smaller different. wave. It was a smaller wave, but she's degree of difficulty on those moves is really high, and she executed that perfectly. We have a replay for the surfer in red. Looked for the barrel to start with. Didn't get it, but got a couple of nice back-end turns to finish with. That was Raya Campbell. She's chasing a 7-1-3 with just over three minutes on the clock. Watch the Destination New South Wales wave replay of Nixie Ryan again, Robbo. Yep. Yeah, yeah. She's had her eye on it. She gained speed and executed. I'm not sure what that aerial's called. They've all got um, different names, but she has been well rewarded with a 6.33. So, yep, excellent surfing from Nixie Ryan and uh, displaying her wide variety of uh, talents. It's great to see. She pulled that off perfectly. It is. She had a great read on that section, and I feel like she backed herself she had the confidence to go for the air and got the completion so it just goes to show that that is something that she works on outside yep. of the competition arena and we often see the men take to the air but we don't often see much from the women when they've got that competitive rashi on and i feel like that is where the point of difference comes in for nixie ryan and, and she, she got rewarded a 633 deservedly so It wasn't much height in it, but no. I feel like it was considering above the, the lip. section on the wave. <laughs> yeah, I know, and yeah, no, it was really well done. And uh, I applaud the judges for rewarding. Huge turn there from Coco Cairns, but just burying the rail on the way down. So she's sitting in second place, Ray Campbell. Well, she's gone into third place, a 5-1-3. She's now chasing a 6.7 for second. And Sasha Baker in the white chasing a 7.16. So will there be another opportunity for red and white to get the numbers that they are looking for with just over one and a half minutes on the clock? Nixie Ryan in first place, the 6.9 and a 6.33. So impressed that she read that section and decided that she wanted to take to the air. And did she win our last event on the series? Last event was Marubra, I think. Was it the event I've before? I've lost track of all these <laughs> events. I know, after I know event, she won after the, event. The, one, the Great Lakes Pro, which is a QS3000. That's the one she won, yes. So a lot of points yep. went into Nixie's series campaign here as we hit the mad next minute. Grab life by the burritos. Two for one burritos. Scan at that QR code on screen. Thanks to Mad Mex, our webcast partner, keeping us well fed and you watching the broadcast, keeping you fed as well. They have partnered with Surfing New South Wales across the entire Pro Surf Series to help share their passion for healthy Mexican food. So throughout the event, we'll be offering two for one burritos for all attendees of the event. And for those tuning into the broadcast, you just have to simply download their app today and enter the code SURFING with a capital S to redeem the great offer that was on screen. As we watch live action in the water, this is Raya Campbell looking for a number of her. Yep, and she's, uh, she's not lying down. She's giving it everything. She's improved her position on her previous wave. She's chasing a 6.7. She won't get it on that wave, I don't think. And, um, but she's certainly giving it everything as we count out this heat. Sasha Baker just finishing. She was chasing a 7.16. But it's going to be Nixie Ryan and Coco Cairns progressing out of that heat. That concludes the women's round of 32, heat number seven. We'll cut to a short commercial break and join you back here with all the live action of heat number eight. This is the motivation. <laughs>
craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. And most of all, to feel new again. Welcome back to beautiful Lavoca Beach. This is the Central Coast Pro presented by Mad Max. It's men's and women's WSL QS3000. We're at Avoca Beach. Adam Hennessy, no better man to tell us a little bit about Avoca Beach, Adam. What, what's special about this area? Uh, the banks are always good up towards the Shark Tower. I'm pretty sure the, uh, they've set up today about halfway up towards the actual south, which is towards the actual point. But banks are traditionally really good. Uh, the area is just so great to visit. The shops, the uh, local crew, they've had some of the most amazing surfers come through their system at Avoca. The Who? likes of um, Tell me. Ace Buckham. Yes. Uh, Micro. <laughs> Wade. Carmichael. Micro's still in this event. I oh, know. That's what I mean. <laughs> uh, uh, who else? One uh, of the world's greatest coaches, Micro Hall. Definitely he's been able to transfer that professional approach into his coaching. And uh, Matt Wilco. Oh my, and, uh, yeah, and, the and, names you know, roll on. Oh, Mark Sansbury. Yes. Uh, Ross Clark Jones. Ross Clark Jones. We could just go on and on about what. Glenn these, Winton. Glenn Winton. Who these are? Uh, these banks have like you know turned out over the years. But yeah, great to see everyone back here. And traditionally, Robbo, it's always been one of these event sites that actually has always got ways. Very much like uh, Boomerang. I feel when we come to Avoca, traditionally there's good waves on offer. We've had some great years, uh, and you only have to look at the likes, uh, you know, like uh, who have come and actually gone in. Number one event. in the world at the moment, Molly Pickland. No, North Shelley, mate. They'll absolutely strangle you if they hear you say that. <laughs> I'm talking Central Coast in I know, general. Central Coast in, in general. Yes. What about yeah. Macy? Yes, mate, I know. Last year, yep. this, this event last year, the final was Macy versus Molly. And please don't forget one of our leading judges who will be in the tent judging away at the moment, Drew Courtney, from just around the corner. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, your minor. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Micro is from your minor as well. Right. as part there of the board riders. But, uh, yeah. It no, is a rich area. Oh, for surf. seriously. And, uh, and look right now at North Shelley. They've got the likes of Joel Vaughan, Huey Vaughan. There's so many talented surfers on this coastline. Uh, Byron Stapleton, I know that uh, as we see the surfer in red, Sir Rokita up and riding in this co-sanctioned event. And uh, yeah, so many talented surfers. Lennox Chell, uh, yeah, the list goes on and on. But what I love about this joint is, you know, it's, it's an hour and a half away from Sydney and it is gold. It is it such is. a beautiful, the landscape is just beautiful. Yeah. Uh, myself and you have been going there for a long time as part of this event and, uh, you know, it's it's a, it's a great, it's one of those ones you tick off and you go, you know what, can't uh, wait for yeah. this one. Good restaurants. Good restaurant. Beautiful. Public pools. Yep. <laughs> we've been there, we've been everywhere. Yes. And we've got some replays here. So this is our Japanese surfer, I believe. Just finishing off there. Nice on the backhand, but that wave not really linking up. Not sure if that was Elise Cooper. I'd say Elise Cooper, what a talent she is. She's from my hometown of Manly. She uh, serves for Queensland board riders. Uh, comes from a great family. Her dad supports her a lot at these events. He'd probably be down there right now. Coops and uh, as we see the surfer, Fryer Prum up and riding. And Elise Cooper's one of these surfers who have been there or abouts for the last couple of years. Uh, 
she's quite talented outside of uh, surfing. She does a bit of rugby and, and stuff like that. She's a, she's a powerhouse. When the waves get big and it's on and she, her performance is on, you know, she can match it with anyone in the world. So a good result here. She's up towards the top of the ratings, at least, so she doesn't need a lot to get through. And, uh, you know, it would be a great reward for her because she's toiled hard in yes. the last five or six years. She's always been thereabouts, and it's yep. just that, you know, Robbo, that flick of the switch to put her in that next level. Yep. It can change really quick. And the good news for Elise is she has the best wave of this heat so far. She's in second place, but she has a five-point ride. That's a decent score. To talk about our co-sanction events, Robbo, that yes. means that uh, these points for the Japanese contingent will actually apply towards their overall rating, uh, along with our surface next week, it will go towards their overall rating for their region. So this is really important. It is. A big yeah. result here could, you know, elevate you through the ratings and into a position to have a crack at the uh, Challenger Series. So even though, you know, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a concern for the Aussies in this event because the fact that they're, it strengthens up the field when it comes to the, the quality, but, you know, they've got to beat everyone anyway to get through. Well, let me tell you, the Aussies enjoy going to the Asian events, which Understand. we co-sanction in you some of the best waves in the world. I think one of my favourite events to watch last year was probably Nias, really. Nias is amazing. Krui and is incredible. The boys said, speaking to the service when they got back, some of our young guys, they said it was like, it was like being on a free surfing trip with it a rashi on. No, it is incredible. But what's happened in the Asia region over the past five years has been amazing. I've been very fortunate to be a part of it with a few colleagues, and uh, it has been incredible. And they are some of the best waves in the world. So happy to co-sanction and bring the Asians into Australia, and just as happy for the Australian surfers to get over there and surf some of the best waves in the world you, for serious points. You actually said points. that, like you said, it's such an untapped environment when it comes to the quality of wave, just not in Japan or, or oh. Bali or Indonesia, just everywhere, everywhere. in the region. You're talking about China and the Ch Philippines, Philippines and Taiwan. Taiwan, Korea. Wow. Sri Lanka, India. In there's India? Wave, there's waves in India. Watch this space. Watch this Watch space, this space very Steve shortly. Robert. But uh, no, it is. It's fantastic. And to co-sanction a few events, a few of the prime events like this one here with the Asians and, and um, return the love back for the Australians to go over there. It's a really good, uh, healthy series. So, yeah, I thought the, all the Asian surfers in this event might have been here just to warm up for the Challenger, but they're here chasing that spot in the Challenger. So, very serious a, events. Yeah, that makes it a lot more <laughs> tricky because there's a lot on the line as we see. Surfer in red. No, this is the surfer in green. Or, no, it's actually Elise, isn't it? Yes, it is Elise. Wow. Black. That is sick, That's powerful. that combo. Yeah, I said, like, she's... She's impressed everyone on our beach for years and years. So, and, and it's great to see her continuing to uh, have a crack at the QS because she's definitely got it to mix it. Look, look how good, good she is yeah. off the bottom here. Bang. Just that extension through the body in or another solid manoeuvre. And what I loved about that ride was the fluency of those turns. She lost nothing when it came to... Best uh, wave of the, the heat power. I'm calling, Adam. Yep. Great to see. She's already got a five, brother, and she's going to back that up. I'd say she's going to eclipse that, but we'll see. That's in the hands of the judges. Yeah, these 30-minute heats, again, I spoke to Britt a little bit earlier about just those subtle adjustments you have to make when it comes to utilising your priority. And it just, I feel like, you know, that extension of the heats allows, uh, you know, a little bit of breathing space. Can be a little more selective. Yeah, maybe. It's not that yep. frantic sort of. No. It's 20 minutes, a frantic <laughs> pace. <laughs> Too oh, fast for you or me. Oh, please. Yeah. <laughs> it takes us that long to get out. <laughs> well, me anyway, not you. <laughs> you got those long arms. I've got little mini arms. Here we go. Surfer up and right in. It's like white. Beautiful looking wave. Wow. Great start to the wave. Look at that top to bottom. And she's got to finish off here. Two, two strong, yeah, two strong um, sequences there, so that'll be a good score for White. I feel like it's definitely changed uh, since 
I was on for those first two heats. It seems like the it's banks cleaner. have sort of yep. sawed themselves out a bit more, Robbo. Yep. Heat's moving in, the waves are cleaning up. And yeah, we've got a fantastic day ahead, that's for I, certain. I, I don't know if you've spoken about this, but they're, they're saying 34 to 36 degrees today. 40 degrees in Western Sydney. <laughs> What's there? going on? La Nina is over. Yeah, I know. So I don't ever go out there. Uh, you've loved. You know what? But I will go. go out there when the uh, wave pool gets up and running. Look at that nice transition and good flighty manoeuvre. Is that Freya Plum? Yeah, certainly was. She's got such a nice connection with the ocean. I love the way she attacks. But you could just see, you know, she read that so well. Even that last turn was pretty critical, and she just sort of floated the boat. But yeah, 40 degrees out west, so. I do believe we've got the winner of last seat. Take it away, Robbo. Okay, Nixie, uh, that was a fantastic heat uh, that you just surfed. Yeah. And we saw you pull off a, a really cool aerial manoeuvre uh, towards the end of that heat. Uh, you executed it beautifully. Obviously, this is a part of your training. Can you talk us through that, please, Nixie? Um, yeah, it was kind of a shock to me. Like, I haven't really tried them in a couple of years, but I thought I might as well try. Um, but yeah, stoked to pull it off and get it or outscore for it. And um, do you do you in your free surfing? Do you um, focus on aerial manoeuvres much, or is it just something that just happened at the spur of the moment? Um, I used to go on the jet ski a lot at the HPC and like we'd practice that. But I don't know. I haven't really tried in a year or two. But um, yeah, sometimes I do that. But usually I'm just surfing the point and I don't want to mess up the waves. So. Don't really go for them out there. <laughs> Nixie, talk about the series as we stand right now. You're in a very strong position. How important is it to keep that momentum going, in, not only in this event, but next week at Surfest as well? How are you feeling mentally? Yeah, good. I'm just trying not to think about, like, results too much. Just, like, taking it heat by heat and just, like, um, surfing each heat the best I can. Because last year, when I thought about the results, it kind of, like came to haunt me in the end. So yeah, just taking it heat by heat and just surfing my best, yeah. Yeah, I was talking to Britt about it earlier. I feel like both you, the, the females and the males have sorted out sort of that fatigue factor from last year. Last year, I felt like a lot of guys towards the back end, they, they would come to me and say they felt a little bit cooked. I feel like you've made those subtle adjustments to keep yourself fresh as you've gone along these series because there's been a lot of events back to back. Yeah, definitely. Um, I went home after the Marubri comp for like a week, which is a good reset, just to get prepared for this comp and the next 5,000 coming up. And yeah, just to surf some fun boards at home and like switch my equipment up. And yeah, that was definitely a good reset. And now I feel fresh and ready for these comps. All right. Well, well done, Nixie. We enjoyed watching your heat, especially that aerial manoeuvre. And uh, we wish you all the best as you progress through to the round of 16. Thanks so much, guys. See ya. Yeah, solid performance. And talking about solid performance, Holly Williams locks in a 6.63, a lovely combination of manoeuvres. It was. And uh, Fry Prime got a 4.1 for that nice lip gliding turn. So right now it is Elise Cooper out there in the lead with first priority. As I said, very talented young surfer from the Queenscliff Board Riders Club. Fry Prime a little bit further down towards the north, towards the, uh, the point down at and down at uh, Avoca. But as I said to you before, it's definitely starting to sort itself out. The banks look really nice. If you can get yourself into that pocket source, there's so much opportunity for scoring potential. There is. And um, yeah, it, like uh, all these events in New South Wales, moving up and down the coast and just highlighting how much surf there is along this coastline. And the central coast is absolutely full of quality breaks from the northern end to the southern end and there we see Holly Williams just coming unstuck but she has the best wave of the heat so far 6.63 we saw that wave um, a while ago it was um, two beautiful well linked together top bottom to top turn moves but she's in second place and both Elise who's surfing now and Holly, well positioned in this heat. This is a smaller wave for Elise, and she's looking to try and get rid of a five-point ride. Don't know that she'll do it on that, even though she surfed it quite well, and she hasn't. she's not done with yet either. 
looking for the link up. Queenie Ripple. <laughs> she <laughs> keeps busy. Definitely I uh, love the fluency of her attack. And even though that was a smaller wave, Rob, I felt like that that first turn was nice and strong. But uh, yeah, I I don't know if it's going to lapse that five point, but no. what it's going to do is give her that momentum and, and keep those juices flowing as she heads towards the back end of this heat. She knows that she, she's probably going to need to offload that five to actually, you know, get through this heat. It's a lovely first turn. Yeah. But it was just about the quality of the wave more than the quality of the surface. She's got such a fluent and easy on the eye attack. The way she goes about it, Rob, I, I love it. She could, she could um, eclipse that five point, right? Judges will be discussing that. Yeah, it's, it's going to be thereabouts, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So with 14 to go, uh, we are into the final heat of the round of 32, these 30-minute heats, and then into the men's. It's going to be switching over from the Sister Evolution to the uh, Vista Pro Surf. Oh, look at that. Uh, Lovely. Is, uh, I was just looking at the score chart. That's Sarah Wakita. Now, she's not going to get a score on that. But we saw enough there, and I know enough about Sarah Wakita to tell you a 6.47 is what she's chasing. She can get that easily. Oh, she yeah, is she's a very quality surfer. Uh, so, yeah, while the requirements are 6.47, it might seem like a tough requirement. It's not for Sarah. She is a great surfer. Look the way she leans into that turn. Yeah, she's got she, a lot she, of power. You know, she nearly rode out of that. She, yep. It was just that... She lost my memory as she free fell through the lip, and, and it was more about once the uh, disengagement of the rail happened, it slowed her up a bit and she got caught. But, yeah, we've seen a lot of her at, at a high level, and she is world class. Absolutely. And there's a lot of Japanese um, women coming through the system at the moment as well. How good is it? It is. It is. It's such a global sport, oh. um, and it's on a trajectory. And we, we spoke about it at length with, uh, you know, the German surfer. Yes. You know, coming through uh, and, and, and trying to qualify for the Olympics. And what the Olympics has done, it, it's opened it up to the world uh, for, for people to use their heritage yep. to uh, get them through and, and try to qualify. And, uh, and I reckon it's brilliant. It is. No, it's absolutely, absolutely added uh, a whole new facet to the sport. And it's... Um, it's popularity, growth, mainstream acceptance, which you'd understand, Adam. You've tapped away in the mainstream for decades. Mate, trying, back in the day, trying <laughs> to get mainstream media to, you know, to... Embrace the sport. Embrace our sport was so difficult. It'd be only, they'd only be prepared to do that on the off chance that there was availability. Now I feel like, you know, globally, it's expanded to a point where it's not a niche sport. It no. is a world-class sport that people generally love and yep. understand. And love to watch. No, you're absolutely right. Okay, we have a takeoff. This is our Japanese surfer. Wow. Beautiful first turn. And that's what I was saying. She is a quality surfer. There are two sharp moves there. And while she might not get the 6.47, she may well better her 4.10 and put herself right in contention so this heat is not over same with freya plum let's not leave her out she's very experienced and capable of yeah. getting good scores a 4.30 is what the judges threw out this way but you just see the quality of her turn she looks so well connected with that surfboard and and that spells danger for both elise and holly because like you said she can drop sixes and sevens in a sleep so yep. Both those surfers are going to have to be on their game. And when you have someone like Friar Prum, who has had so much experience, such a good surfer in her own right, this is such a stacked up heat as they all are. They are. I had a look at, through the draws uh, earlier and, um, yeah, some of the heats raised my eyebrows. So I'm going, wow. How good is this it? This is going to be amazing. And what adds to that, mate, is the uh, the pressure that they're going to start to come under when it comes to, yeah, you can you can talk it up as much as you want about you know people not looking where they're positioned on the ratings, but deep down oh. you know where <laughs> yeah. you're at, and yeah, it's, there's do. nowhere to hide. No, uh, to hide. there isn't. Just under ten minutes remaining, so still plenty of time to play out in this heat. Surfer in. Green. 
What a beautiful Chasing. looking. Look at that. Oh, it is. The headland's beautiful. The headland. There's some of the houses up there. Wow. Is the point any good for surfing? Yeah, we, we actually sure? uh, we surfed the, uh, the final day there a couple of years ago. I've seen some great waves come through there. Okay. Yeah, I, point, I wandered up before and I, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't see a lot of deep Look, water. It's like, I think it's traditionally like a lot of the points, you know, it has its moments. Yes. But uh, I feel like the beaches are definitely world class. But yeah, I've seen some footage from there. Just amazing. Here we go. Fry Prime up and right in, trying to get across this section, floating that first corner and just waiting patiently for this thing to grow. That was impressive. This is her best wave, I'd say. So she's going to put herself right in the game as well. And with the 30-minute heat, still plenty of time for these women to get their waves and get through to that all-important round of 16. Hey, the locals just embrace this. They'd be up there watching it. They, they all love it. You, you, it has a certain vibe to it when you come to a vocal when, when this event's on. Uh, because they've got such a, a solid stable of surfers who are really competing at a higher level and the community gets right behind the event. You, you see the old retired dudes up on, at the coffee shops and they're just, uh, who's the next one coming through? It's, it's a great place to visit. It's a great place to come on holidays and uh, we encourage everyone to get on to the Central Coast Council websites, check it out, check out the accommodation, of course, the Avoca Beach Hotel. We've stayed there a number of times, great venue, great food, and yeah, it's, it's paradise, and you're only like an hour and a half away from Sydney. Yep. Beautiful restaurants throughout town. We've sampled quite a few of those. You know what else I'm excited about, Dimmy? Go for it. The AFL starts tonight. Oh, the <laughs> AFL. Please. You love it. Oh, I love you it. You do. Carlton versus Richmond. Mate, I'm an NRL dude. <laughs> yeah. Manly are playing tonight. I, That's know, I, no. I mentioned it in the street the other day in Avoca, and uh, yeah, People just you, laughed yeah, at they look at me like I'm some sort like of alien. Like, alien. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? What age? Anyway. I did go to, we were at Bells once and I went to an AFL game, the only game I've ever been to in my life and it was a pretty cool game because there's so much happening off the ball that you don't see on television, which was yes. pretty funny to watch. But yeah, it's NRL versus AFL and it's definitely uh, New South Wales isn't uh, yes. NRL based. Here we go. Look at this. Beautiful oh, first oh, turn, but no. Wow. Okay, so that's Holly Williams. She wants to get rid of that 3.93. Okay, we've got a recap here, Dimmy. So uh, let's have a look at some of these rides. Elise Cooper leads the heat. I'm sure she's going to feature here. And look at that. Bottom to top turn. Looks for a second one, but doesn't make it. That was her early five-point ride, I think. This is the one where she really extended through these turns. Nice flow, great rhythm in the ocean for Elise. It's and the best wave of the heat here. Holly Williams. This is the one where she just unloaded with a three-turn common or two-turn combination. And we talk about the class of Sarah Wakita, and you can just see it. That low center of gravity, such a, a really has. lovely way to go about a business. So there it is. And uh, right now, Elise Cooper leading the heat, 6.5 and a 5.0. Holly Williams in second, 6.63. 3.93 leaves her vulnerable. She would want to get rid of that because Sarah Wakita, right on her tail, needs a 6.27. It looks like Freya Plum while we're at the recap, but uh, I feel that like way she's been gonna... looking at the lefts, a lot yeah, of these well... lefts. She's sort of put herself in a position where most of them are looking at the right. You can see Mikey Madonna on screen there, getting ready for an important battle. He is currently leading the uh, New South Wales Vista Pro Surf Series, along with Nixie Ryan, I do believe. So he is in... Uh, that position to qualify for the Challenger Series. That's what's on his mind when you talk to Mikey. He wants a crack full time at the Challenger, but he's also leading the series, which is a great achievement in its own right. So with five to go, Robbo, uh, you said it, it is going to be nervous times for both Holly and Elise because Fry and Sarah Wakita have the ability to just drop massive numbers. Yep, they're in striking distance for sure, but they've got to get a decent wave. 
Les Cooper holds all the aces when it comes to priority, but that's that's an advantage in itself. And she'll so use it well. She'll probably wait for a bigger set, and if it's got if it's got one of those walls that sort of taper off from right to left, she'll definitely identify that to to basically shut down Sarah Wakita because she's in second priority. And as we speak right now, it looks like there is a set on the horizon and it looks like someone having a crack and this is the dangerous surfer from Japan. A little bit disconnected on that first turn. I felt like the rhythm wasn't there. That's a better turn. And look at the flow and Beautiful the engagement. Cutback. And oh, look, at, look at that wave out the back for Elise Cooper. Wow. Wow. Some big turns there, Dimmy. Unfortunately, comes unstuck on that but second that turn. But that first turn was big. Yeah, I reckon she's going to get rid of that five-point ride. And like I said, it was an important exchange because... Sarah Whittick is going to get a score. 100%. And look at Holly. Well, yep, pressure's on and she answers the call. So, yeah, three and a half minutes remaining. These are significant waves being ridden and we wait those scores and the situation. Love to get a replay of that wave of red and Elise as well. I'd love to see just how solid that rail work was from the surfing red. I felt like at the start of this wave, there was a little bit of downtime, a little bit of a bobble, but watch this rail work. Quality. Oh, yeah. oh, that is, <laughs> That's quality. That is so good. And out the back, you can see at least. Great first turn. Unfortunately, comes unstuck. The one really good turn by every one of the three competitors in that exchange. So will that change anything oh. only time will tell but right now with three to go yeah. the set's rolling through and this is going to be an issue today too to to conserve energy robo when it comes to you know how long it's going to take to get back in the lineup how long is it going to take you to you know to reset once you're in your lineup to get the you know to get air back in the lungs because it's going to be pretty ch testing out there today. It is. And Sarah Okita has scored a 4.9. I thought she might have got a little better than that, but it's still an improvement on her heat tally. It's her best scoring ride. Now she only needs a 5.67. So just over two minutes. Time could be the enemy for her, but uh, she's chipping away. At least she has to extended get there. a 5.60. Yes, well, yeah, and she's probably safe. That second position up Ooh, for grabs. You never want to say that. <laughs> that is the one no, no, word yeah, you want to well. say in this sport. Did you watch? I was speaking about it before. Maxine Houston, it would have been thinking. Yes, I know. Oh, I'm going to get through this. He had one of the best scores of the day. And all of a sudden, Kaelin Rodson just loads up with a perfect 10. It's just such a unique sport in that scenario where anything can happen. Anything can happen. And that's what we love about it. Yep. One and a half minutes remaining. Freya Prum chasing a 6.47. Wakita, the Japanese surfer, chasing 5.67. Very achievable. It's interesting, Robbo, that I feel like that wave of Holly Williams on that last exchange might have slightly bettered that 3.93. I think that is still the score she had prior to that. Yeah. So no. interesting, but definitely Elise Cooper on the strength of that one turn. Had she landed that second turn, that, yeah, that, that, that been, score was yeah. going to go right up in, into the excellent range. So surfing very strong indeed. And you can see him now, the uh, athletes now, Robbo, moving around the lineup, trying to put themselves in a good position if anything comes. And priority, importantly, with the surfer in green and second priority is with white. Yep. And Wakita's in fourth priority. That's going to make her job extremely hard with 40 seconds to go. Have a takeoff. That is Holly Williams using priority. Beautiful turn there. Snapped it in the pocket. Snaps it again. So goodbye to that 3.93, I say. And under pressure, clutch performance from Holly Williams, Dimmy. Yeah, see, this puts a little bit of pressure back onto Elise Cooper because I feel like that might actually be enough to take the lead. Yep. And right now, even though green has priority, the surfing red is still dangerous. So... I think time's going to be the enemy, but that was a lovely clutch performance there from the surfer in... White. White. Yep. Good surfing. I just, I just saw a 4.87 lock in, so that might have been the score. That might have been previous. So we're going to throw up to a break, pay some bills, be back very shortly. What an amazing day of action we have here at Avoca Beach.
See something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. And most of all, to feel new again. Welcome back everyone to a beautiful Avoca Beach. The sun's out, the guns are out, and we have some of the best surfers on the planet competing here today, Robbo. We are into the round of 32 of the Mans, and you said it before, what a matchup this is. Mikey Madonna, Q Butler, and who else we got, buddy, in this heat? Yeah, um, Takong from the Philippines. He's so a legend. Cool. Yeah, he's a legend of the sport over there, right? Absolute and legend. And talking about other legends, what about like, the great <laughs> Nathan Hedge, the hog? Uh, John Mark Takong, they call him Marama. And what does that stand for? I don't know, something like King of the Ocean or King, King of Cloud Nine, he's whatever. Been he rules, a long time. yeah, he rules Cloud Nine. Wow. And uh, spent more time in the tube than any man at that break. And there's our oh, man, oh, oh. Mikey, Mikey Madonna. Strong. Yeah. How good are these waves today? It's pumping. It is. And this could be a final. This kid has been on an absolute tear. And let me tell you, he's probably not a kid anymore. He's, he's a man. And, and he's got so much game as we see. Taku Butler up and right. And yeah, what about wow. the power, the flair, and the control of those turns? That board looks very spiced up. And like you said, uh, they're taking on two of the... Uh, the legends of our of sport. Their, of their regions, for sure. 100%. Uh, now, John Mark Tacong, amazing tube rider, incredible at Cloud9, but he has an all-round uh, performance act. He's done a lot of events uh, over the last few years, and he's also got a really good air game. So we've got to watch out for what he's going to be up to out here. I feel like he's been around a long time as we see Mikey just extending, and look at the line into this first turn, lovely, and, and just leans in this row. The Kiwi flowing, plenty of flair and spray off that combo. Judges have got a lot of work to do, Dimmy. Oh, they're gonna have to put a scale and set it high with that last wave of the surfer in black. And there it is, a 7.67, what a way to start. Yep, the Kiwi, he's been on a tear this whole series. He's focused, he looks fit, strong. He's surfing, in my mind, he's surfing better than he ever has. And um, I, yeah, I mean. You said that earlier. You said that in a, uh, event, yeah. a couple of events back. So it looks like Nathan Hedges has decided to uh, give himself a bit of space in the lineup. He knows these banks, he's surfed here a lot. But yeah, I feel like uh, there's always been such a great power base to the Kiwis game. But right now, Taku Butler, I honestly believe he's ready to take his servant to the next level, and that means trying to have a crack at that World Championship Tour for yep. sure. He would be a worth. Well, anyone who makes it would be worthy, but uh, it would be great to see. Oh, be dangerous. Another Kiwi like Tikahuku Butler. He's a magnificent surfer. When I analyse surfing, I, sometimes I'll break it down and think, you know, what would that athlete look like on those kind of waves? Imagine yeah. in a J-Bay or something. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like it, uh, it's got the strength, power, moves to capitalise on those sorts of conditions. Yeah, it's it. But, you know, they've got to get to that level. You can see what's happening right now. We've had the third event of the Championship Tour. Uh, some big results. Some, some of the surfers who are actually lower ranked have bounce back the Courtney yeah. Connor logs of the world and some others as well and uh, you know what I mean it's going to be intriguing when they hit Australia for it Bells is. and Margies yep because it's that mid-year cutoff do you like the mid-year cutoff I do and I don't I'm, yeah, I'm, like I'm sitting you. on the fence like no. everyone else that it adds intrigue to it I think it's a little bit brutal maybe yes um, but it I'll adds intrigue. I mean, you can act, things can go wrong. Or I mean, Sophie McCullough is a good example. 
if she misses the cut because she missed, she had an injury and she's had to surf a little bit with that injury, I think it would be uh, unfortunate. But, um, yep, it's a, it's a tough sport. Wow. To keep up laughing, riding once more. Nice two-turn combo. Yeah, look, to be honest, I wasn't a fan of it back in the day because of the structure of the other systems. Uh, I remember when Gabby came on uh, at New York and, and stuff like that. There was a lot of controversy. But I feel like now... I'm a big supporter of it because realistically, uh, if, if, they, if they have a bit of a shocker and, and they fall off, the opportunity to go straight back on through the Challenger yeah, true. Is, is, yep. is a great reset. And you look at the, the quality of wave on the Challenger series is world class. Yep. You've got the Snappers, you've got Hossiger, you've got so many, uh, the Bolito Pro, uh, you've got so many high quality performance waves. It allows the athletes to not go back to that traditional QE grind. So I'm a big firm believer in the cutoff now because of that. Yep, and don't it's, forget North Narrabeen. You forgot North Narrabeen, didn't you? Well, it used to be Manly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is northy this year. It is northy. But, yeah, yeah, but, I know, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm just, yeah, I do. I'm just thinking about 100%. back in the day, yep. uh, there was a lot of controversy about having to go straight back on the QS, QS. and grind well, now the they don't. They don't. They, they go, go to the a quality, yeah, quality and, tour. And, these athletes are so well refined and tuned that they can get it done in those scenarios. They can. Who, who doesn't want to surf snapper with four dudes out? Well, it's, <laughs> it's, a, break. it's a very rare very opportunity. Rare. Here we go. It looks like someone having a look at this wave, and it is the hog, Nathan Head. Finally. Power. Look at the way he's surfing. He's like a fizzed up grommet right now. Three he's strong turns. So good. So, look at him yep, look he's up, so. opened his account. And he'd know with 30 minutes on the clock, he'd, no hurry. Think about, you know, what he's achieved in his career. And you only got to look at the last couple of years where he's come back and, and basically been allowed to compete, you know, got some starts in some trials, Margaret River, uh, Chopes, and still performing at the highest level, you know, in the world, even at yeah. his age. So age is no barrier. He's one of the fittest surfers you'll ever see. What he did at Chopu last year was incredible. Was semis? Something like that, but he knocked out Philippe Toledo. He was knocking out everyone. He was. He got one. <laughs> yeah, you know, he, 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 he can't. He's not and, scared. And, and I remember back in the day, there was a real iconic moment where Hogg, uh, I think, dislocated his shoulder. He should have won that event. He, he would have he won. won. He would have uh, won. Uh, he was on he play. Should, he, Here we go. Mikey up and right in, into it. Lovely first turn, engaging the rail. To set it up for the inside line, the surfer from Lennox Head and really jams away, but it's a little bit caught. Here we go, Nathan Edge up and riding once more. So Mike would be disappointed in the finish of that wave, but still plenty of time. And you can see, I think that was our competitor from the Philippines up and riding. I think so. That's not the sort of wave he wants to catch. He's yeah. used to catching perfect lined up flawless peaks at cloud nine but he's yep. also very good he's dangerous in the beach breaks he'll get his act together all right we're going to throw down to our post-seed interview with elise cooper good morning coops and uh congratulations you looked on point out there legend how are you feeling um i'm stoked like i haven't made many heats back in oz this year so to get at least like one heat win um yeah can't complain. I'm really happy. You're out there in the ratings, Elise, and you know that a lot of people support you back in your hometown of Manly and at QBC. Uh, what would it mean to get a full-time crack at the Challenger in 2023? Um, yeah, it'd be amazing. I came super close last year, and I think I got pipped uh, in the last event. So hopefully I can do one better and get on the um, Challenger series and... Yeah, you get to travel and yeah, just enjoy it all, I guess. But yeah, fingers crossed. Now, talk about your boards. Your boards look really good today. What were you riding out there? Um, I was just on like a Roundtail CI Pro. Um, yeah, it's been my favourite board lately, and especially when it's clean, it just seems to go really good. And yeah, happy I chose that one. And yeah. And what about your support staff? Is the old boy out there with you? Yeah, Dad. Um, Dad's the <laughs> chauffeur. He drove up. <laughs> he was the one driving up at 5:30 this morning, and I was just sleeping in the passenger seat. So, yeah, grateful for him, and probably 
wouldn't have gotten up here in one piece without him. So, yeah. Congratulations, and uh, we wish you all the best. You're looking so solid. That was uh, a well sought out performance, Elise Cooper. Moving on to the next round. Thank you. Okay, so while that interview was going on, Dimmy, there were a series of very good waves ridden. I saw Takumi Butler <laughs> oh. just unload on one. I saw John Mark de Kong unload on one. He's back John in the Mark hunt. De Kong. And the, the thing I failed to mention about de Kong is he has the best head of hair in the game. Better than Carlos Munez? Yes. Oh, seriously? <laughs> yes, you wait till you see that, it. that is some game, yeah, let me tell you. It, it is. So Thanks and, uh, our follically, uh, uh, we can, uh, we're going to recap these waves while that interview is going on. So have a look at this. I like this. Wow. The Kiwi. Power. That board looks ultra sharp, and doesn't it? links it all together. And here he is. Oh, you, saw, you said about his, <laughs> about his ability in, in the barrel. tube. First tube of the day. This guy is absolutely blown look up. Look at that. <laughs> that is sick. Look at the combo. That has to go up there into the... Uh, into the good or excellent range. That is a sick, and look at Hog. This is just a series of explosive waves happening down here at Evoca. The waves are pumping. This ride is just offering up so much. And that was like watching someone surf Chacon, the Yeah. They call him Maramar, Dimmy. How do you find a barrel out there like that? And look at this one, Mikey. That thing just opened up, that that barrel opened up, and then he was able to just tag away. Look at that, Look at that. eight, seven, seven. <laughs> He's oh, our man. He's your man. The Philip Cloud9 now, they'd be banging the breakfast oh, the, tables. They'd be, they'd be jumping frothing. up and down. Their man has scored an eight, seven, seven. That is the best wave score today, Adam. You picked it too. You said, mate, this guy's got game. Don't worry about that. Yeah. He'll find something. The only thing he didn't show us there was his air game, and believe me, he's got that as well. Here we go. The Kiwi up and right in, flying down the line. Look at how dredgy this wave is. Taku Butler into the lip and into another turn. And what about the release? Well, he felt that. He did. Busted the fins out. This is a serious heat. Wow. I loved it. That was just such a drainer. Here we go again. <laughs> he's... <laughs> He'd be it wondering. might not be a vocal point, but it's close. <laughs> Let me tell you, this place is absolutely going off right now. And these guys in this first heat of the men's round of 32 have just put their level and turned the afterburners on. Here we go. Watch this thing drain up and how he just attacks that first what turn into the pocket. And again, and I love just that, that tweak, that release off the tail on that final manoeuvre and the server from the Philippines, the man who with the highest wave score of the day so far, he is uh, certainly opening everyone up when it comes to, uh, if you don't know him, you know yes, him now. you do. Yep. The world needs to know about Takong. Best head of hair as well. Yes, definitely. Well, there you go. <laughs> I mean, I've, I feel like both Hog and... And Mikey have been surfing good in this I have. And, and look where they're at. They I need know. a 6.61, Mikey McDonald with priority, and Nathan Head needs a 6.88. Yep. So and such has been the performance of both Kia Butler and the surfer in the blue. And he has a 3.33. Should be able to get rid of that easily. I want to see an air. Yeah, well, you, you will. That all round game. You will. The, the all round game's there. How good are these 30-minute heats? It's going to be such an intriguing battle, these round of 32s. I think that the uh, powers of B have pulled all the right strings when it comes to giving the opportunity for these surfers. It's pretty much been pumping all week, but I feel like today with this, you know, really the wind's backed off, the faces are clean, there's a four to five foot swell coming through, and uh, again, Avoca is on the map and it's producing. Yep. What a great heat. Big shout out to all our sponsors. Of course, Vistler. This is the Vistler Central Coast Pro. And here's a recap of this wave. Look how he's dragging the arm. He's just keeping himself in the, in the barrel. And I love this turn. Yep. Just tweaking it a bit. A little bit different. And then he gets the work. 
and this was the wave that just kept on giving. So that was the best wave of the heat. But yeah, big shout out to Vistler. Of course, Sister Evolution, the uh, naming rights of the women's division at the 3000, the Central Coast Pro, Mad Mex, the presenting partner. And of course, we've got the Mad Mex Minute in every heat. And then our supporting partners, the Central Coast Council, Avoca Beach Hotel, Destination New South Wales, the World Surf League and Surfing New South Wales Gate. Great to have so many partnerships involved in this event. And of course, we encourage everyone to come on down to the Central Coast. You're going to cop waves like this and why wouldn't you? Exactly. Have a day off. <laughs> Especially on a day like this. Here's a takeoff. Here we go, so far up and riding in the black, that is Ku Butler, and you could, I just felt like the timing was a little bit out of sync then. Look at, the, look at the score line for that last wave, an 8.33 the wave prior to that one for Butler, so he has really opened up his lead. 8.33 and a 7.67. Takong in second position has the 8.77, best wave of the day. Needs a 7.23 to go to first is only looking to get rid of a 3.33. That's critical. But this is that wave we were speaking about, Robo. Look how drainy that wave is and how he attacked that first turn with just the fluency of that turn and just how much speed he carried through that turn and uh, a great combination. You can just see the body language. You really felt that. And yep. I wanna, let's talk about that 3.33. If he can improve on that, the surfer in blue to Kong, that is going to put such a gap between himself and Mikey and Nathan Hedge. So it's, yep. it's critical that both red and white, their next opportunity has to be on a really good score. Because if not, and the server in blue actually gets even a five, that's going to make the uh, requirement such a struggle. Yep. But he's got to do that. So pressure all around because uh, red and white, they're uh, smart competitors and they'll know what they have to do and they can do it easy so um, while John Mark Takong has the best wave of the heat it's it's definitely uh, not over with a 3.33 sitting as your second ride yeah look at that a 16.2 wave combination out of 20 and that is putting yourself into the excellent range judges love you know to see Big, big turns on big waves, and the surfer from New Zealand has definitely brought that to the table this morning. Let me tell you something, Dimmy. I was thinking about this the other day when I was watching Portugal. These surfers here would see Callum Robson and think, if I can get into the Challenger Series, it's, it's a, the dream is that much closer. Callum Robson two years ago, wasn't even going to make the Challenger Series until he won the Tweed Coast Pro. And then all of a sudden he got on the uh, Challenger Series. I think he was the last qualifying surfer, excelled on the Challenger Series. All of a sudden he's a CT surfer. All of a sudden he's qualifying on the CT surfer for the CT the following year. And then he's scoring perfect tens. And he's in the top five in the world. These surfers would look at that and say, it can happen really, really quick. What do they say? A chip in a chair. That's all you need. <laughs> what Callum Robson's done has been unbelievable. Yeah. I remember interviewing him when he won the Tweed Coast Pro, and he says, yeah, I can't believe it. I've just qualified for the Challenger Series. Here we go. Mikey Madonna flying down the line, looking for a ramp. Goes to the air and rides out. Is that going to better the 5.07? I don't know, but yeah. I feel like at times here we see Hedgie up and right. Wow. Nice first hand. Oh, and second. This is going to be a good score. If he can finish this off, he's really driving hard off that back foot. Nathan Hedge, and he gives <laughs> it up. Look at him. Yep. Frothing. Tell us the judges. Yeah, take that. I think that's a lot to it. You know, he's, <laughs> he's he, he wants to put himself out there and go, mate, I felt that. Yep. And I want to score. Now throw it to me, boys. Wow. Yeah, I feel like at times, like, uh, when you talk to some young surfers coming through that uh, that at times it can be like it feels like it's miles away but, but talking about Colin, yeah, no. Colin Robson like yeah. he's a classic example of just having that opportunity yep you know the pathway's there the and he's set an example and, and it's Hawk's about setting an pathway. example here I can't believe this this heat is on 
There's two scoring wides from red and white. We said it prior to that. I love the passion from Hogg. I don't yeah. know what the judges will think of that, but he's yeah, I he's that was score. directed at the judging tower, Adam. Yeah, I reckon that's going to go into the six-point range. But uh, with eight and a half minutes to go, he, as I said, I, I felt like the next wave, next wave for Hogg was going to be really important. And, uh, and you identified it going back to what you said about Callum Robson, about just having, once you have that opportunity, it's about, you know, taking the opportunity and, and making every post to win. And I feel like he's, you know, he's done that. And that last wave for Nathan Hedge was a 6.33. So now, Robbo, he only needs a 5.78. It leads to Surfing Blue very vulnerable out there. It because does. He needs to get rid of that 3.33. Has first priority. Be nervous moments at Cloud Nine in the Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, they'll be all watching it. The whole town will be watching. They'll be going, come on, Takong, get rid of the 3.33. <laughs> going back to, like, I feel like in all sports, there's a famous story about uh, golf for Cameron Smith, right? Cameron Smith came through our Australian system, and uh, he, the, how he got into the uh, PGA Tour was he got an exemption from a sponsor to have one crack as an exemption, right? And look where he is now. Well, he actually got fifth, I think, in that event. Yep. He then got another crack at the US Open, got second. He then qualified for the PGA Tour, and now he's the richest golfer in the world. Yep. Like, it's just about taking that opportunity and running with it. Yep. And I feel like that, you know, that ins inspiration you get of someone like Alan Robson is the clear example, mate. It can happen so quick. And it can happen at a blink of an eye. And Yep, we're going to recap this, and oh, this, this has been be an incredible heat. Absolutely incredible. Let's talk us through some of these waves as we go to the recap. Here we go. It looks like the surfer in the Kiwi. New Zealand. What about how much water he dispersed there, and just that release of the tail. Board looking amazing. He's going to be up and again. This is another one of these drainers. Lovely connection with the lip. Comes around and just unloads this guy's been such on point and the rail work and the power robo here's my it man, man. Here's my man. yeah takong lives in the barrel that we'd be right at home there out on the face yep i'm more than just a barrel rider i've got the moves as well smooth precise and finishes off look at the hair he loves it in australia oh, takong I don't know, but he's been around he's been forever. Around a long time. <laughs> this is that second score of Ski Butler up into the lip. Again, solid release. You can just see him generating so much speed and so much control. Mikey Madonna goes to the air. This did improve his situation, but not by too much. He needs another good score. And right now, the Hog, he has actually laid down the foundation for a couple of nice scores himself. And look at that power, the flow of the goofy foot as he attacks each section with plenty of gusto and he stood up after that move and went yeah give it to me oh mikey rail work solid oh here's your man Tukong. oh this oh, is next oh, level. he's pulled it up <laughs> goodbye to the 3.3 adam that's <laughs> our man to kong live Wow, how good are these waves? These guys are absolutely excelling. Now, that's going, to imp that's going to increase his margin over Nathan Hedge. Yeah, this is going to be very interesting. This last wave of blue, this is wow. going to turn this heat on its head for sure. Here we go, Mikey up. This Lovely is a good wave movement. as well. Wow, what about how vertical that first whip was? Nice carving turn, a three-turn combo, and he likes it. And out the back, he would have looked back and gone, oh, not this way. <laughs> He's already so got the last wave. <laughs> Beautiful Where does he come first from, turn. he says? This and guy is amazing. snaps it out of the lip. So, goodbye to the 3.33, I say. And increase the margin under five minutes. Just he needed to work. do it. The pressure was on. He knew. This is like a finely tuned chess game, this, because I feel like all four surfers are totally in sync with the ocean. So, it's an indication of how good the waves are and the quality in this round of 32. I mean... There's no easy heats, but this is a clear example of everyone bringing their A game. And there we go, 6.9 for Maramar in blue. Still doesn't take the lead, but... No, but he significantly increases the gap between third yeah. and fourth. Hedge needs a 9.34, and Mike Madonna needs a perfect 10. So 
clutch performance from the surfer in blue to increase that margin significantly. And I want to shout out to all my friends at Cloud9 in the Philippines. I've got Back a lot a of... few extra waves out there. <laughs> <laughs> There's How a lot like of good wave? people. And, um, oh, yeah, it's, a, it, it's an amazing place. It's James an amazing place and, to visit, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So, um, yeah, they'll be loving what's going on in the water right here now. John, Mark, Takong. So the two internationals have put it to the Australians here, Dimmy. And what I love, but, you know, the, the Aussies have had a fair crack as well. This has just been one of my most favourite heats to watch in the whole series, just based on the quality and, and the difference of styles and, and how these surfers have formulated these scores. We've seen Tony De Kong out there with what was just an epic barrel. It like, was, yeah. He lives the in the barrel. The only barrel I've seen today that has really opened up and uh, lives in the barrel, but you said it. He's got more than that. He's yep. got game when it comes to his rail turns. He got a 6.9. And then you have the Kiwi, who's just been world-class performance, an 8.33 three, three, and a 7.67. Seven, seven. His rail game, just the aggressive approach and how spiced up and how visually uh, attractive his surfing is. He is in the lead. And then you've got Nathan Heg Hedge, who's so passionate, and Mikey Madonna, who's basically leading the series. Here he goes, the surfer in red from Lennox Head. Goes to the air, not right now that. He needs a perfect 10. ten. That is not going to get it done. He's going to have to get something big. And he's going to have to put multiple turns together and something, I think, in the innovation corner as well. Shout out to Jerry Deegan as well. Who um, had a lot to do with uh, the Cloud9 event over there in the Philippines. And uh, is now Why is that a uh, QS? What, what? Is that a QS event? Absolutely. What is it now? Five thousand? Something like that. Yeah. Because a lot of, for a lot of time it was a specialty event, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it did. It's it's um, been sanctioned and non-sanctioned and sanctioned, but it's very firmly on the on the, the charts Asian now. Tour. Yeah, that's it's great. Part of the whole tour, and it's one of the absolute elite wave locations on that tour. And when you think of it, the the Asian tour has formulated and given opportunities to athletes in some of the best surf spots in the world. When you think of yeah. Nias, Koori, yeah, like, you know. I'll give you an example of that. Liam O'Brien, basically, the Asia Tour launched his career. He Is went over incredible? to the Asia Tour and he won a series of events in high-quality waves. They might have been 1,000 or 3,000 QS events, but yeah. he kept winning, and all of a sudden they're going, well, wow, have a look at this, this guy. guy. Yeah. And uh, he took that confidence and everything out of that tour and now he's on the CT. So it's played a really important role in the, in the globalisation of uh, surfing in our region. And that's going to better the sport overall, isn't it? Because as Across you said, the Rio Aweda out there at the moment, who is just absolutely on a tear on the CT. I, I feel like it's, you're going to see more uh, surfers from that region, from Indonesia, starting to raise their oh, game and get coming. themselves on tour. They're coming to get everyone. Yep. Under a minute remaining, and um, yep. So, yeah, Mikey Madonna, this is an upset. This is an upset. I mean, I'm not upset because I know how good these guys surf, yeah. but it's an upset in that, you know, we've got our high-rated Mikey Madonna. He's not getting through this heat. He needs a perfect 10. But this guy is the Kiwi and the Philippine surfer. Yeah, it's been a strong performance. And, and from all four surfers, from Nathan Hedge, Mikey Madonna... And this Watch for man, the air. Watch for the air. He's going to go. He's, he's got as you said, I told you. Yeah, he's going to bring it all. I called it, Dimmy. Seriously, he's like a circus act. He's got all the little balls flying I just, around. We, he just picks yeah. it. How uh, good is he surfing? He's uh, strong. Uh, he is. And we're counting out it. of that heat. I wish we could have got him on the interview. I wish he had won the heat. You could have seen his hairstyle. We'll go to a break now. We'll get to that later. But well done to Butler and Marama. Mama, well done, buddy. You're a, what a legend he that was. We'll be back very shortly for another exciting battle in the round of 32 at the Central Coast Pro. It's a beautiful day. Huge thanks to Surfing New South Wales for getting out there. Not only 
um, communicating with people about why it's important to not use single-use plastic, but how easy it can be to transition and stop it and swap it. We're basically down here to showcase how we are reducing our plastic footprint through all things like keep cups and reusable water bottles and our beautiful toggles which we use instead of cable ties. We've invested in about 100 water bottles and keep cups. Um, we've distributed to the whole team. You know, everyone's so passionate about this program and so enthusiastic to be a part of it. We're doing our bit to give surfers a cleaner ocean and save the environment for a better future. pollution issue is a complex problem, but it can be solved. Take three for the sea! Earth a favour and take three for the sea. Welcome back to the beautiful Central Coast. We are at Avoca Beach for the FISLA Central Coast Pro Men's Division at the QS3000 event. And that first seat was just an amazing heat that unfolded. And uh, welcome back in the box, Britt Nickel. And wow, it's game on. The waves have cleaned up and the performance levels are world class. They are. What a beautiful day we have here at Avoca Beach. I stepped outside and look how sunny it is, Dimmy. I feel like the water clarity has become a lot clearer too now that the sun has come out to play. Definitely, and it's going to be 34 degrees in uh, Sydney today as we see the surf in red. Who have we got in this heat, Britt? Look at this. Wow. This is a co-sanctioned event with our Asia, so these points do apply for the Japanese. Continue. We saw in that last seat, Johnny. Getting on through as we see the surfer in white, that is Cooper Davies. But yeah, co-sanction of it, you'll see a lot of these surfers from our different regions and that is exactly why, because as a 3,000 event, it's worth a lot. So who have we got? We have Tenchi Awami from Japan in the red. Yep. We have Sean Gunning in the blue, Cooper Davies in the white and Joe Azuchi in the black. Joe you know, Sushi's been around a long time. He's very, uh, you know, he's got such a stable surfing base. He's a strong competitor. And this is another one of these pretty uh, intriguing. He's, for someone like Cooper Davies, who would not have had to surf against these three other athletes much in his career, it sort of throws out sort of the unknown. And Sean Gunning already opened up with a 5.50, but 30 minute heats gives everyone an opportunity. And these guys will be licking their lips after the performance of that last heat, they would have seen the peaks. And I know you weren't in the box, but we saw the uh, server from the Philippines get himself an absolute pipe, a drainer, and got the highest single wave score of the uh, day so far. So, wow, we're excited. We've got our uh, heats on standby for this afternoon. We're definitely running the round of 32 of the men's this WSL event. Very important when it comes to the qualification standings of both the men and the women. It is, it's crucial, you know, 3,000 points. That can be the make or break for these competitors. Looking to qualify for that Challenger Series as I just get so tongue twisted in here this morning. Oh, yeah, we way. originally thought that competitors from that Asian region were just here kind of warming up for the Challenger, but oh, with no. the co-sanctioned, it does mean that the points are crucial for them as well. 100%, and winning a 3,000, it's not only gonna, you know, give you a lot of prize money, but what it's going to do is put you right into the forefront of qualification for the Challenger Series, which basically kicks off in the, in the next month or so. So uh, it, it feels like over the course of this Australian leg, it's been far, you know, quite a distance away, but it's getting closer to that point where, you know, the surfaces have excelled at this level, about to step it up another level and go into the Challenger. And when you consider the two events in, in Australia, the one at Snapper, and then we've moved that Sydney Surf Pro over to Narrabeen. 
two quality world-class venues for these surfers to attack. And uh, if you go off last year, someone like Rio Iwata, who actually got himself onto the tour from the Challenger, it's game on as we see the surfer up and riding, just throwing buckets. And that is Cooper Davies, I do believe. So, yeah, a lot riding on these results. But what is great, Britt, is the uh, quality of the performances and the quality of the waves. Look at these waves. It is pumping. It is. I feel like competitors' eyes would have lit up this morning when they uh, turned up down the beach. And while these competitors have probably had the better of the conditions so far today, I feel like it just continues to improve. Yeah, I feel like this morning there was a bit of morning sickness on uh, when, the, uh, when the women went out. But uh, going off that first seat of the men's, I feel like the last seat of the women's, the Nixie Ryan heat as well, as we see the young surfer from Japan up and riding, just kicking the tail. But, yeah, I feel like as sort of that morning sickness has uh, sort of, yeah, gone away, I feel like the waves have definitely got better. It's definitely been improving as this tide has dropped as we see the surfer in white a little bit uh, out of rhythm on that first turn but gets it all together now and this guy is a strong performer. Uh, we have the surfer from New Zealand from the mount down in the uh, post-seat interview area and I've got to say it's good. congratulations mate that was on point, what a performance and what a heat. It was just so fun to watch that heat. Everyone was ripping. Uh, cheers, thank you. Yeah, no, waves are super fun and, you know, everyone was ripping. Um, cheer, just can't believe the waves right now. If you get an opportunity, like, you know, easy to make the most of them. So, nah, loving it. Mate, I feel like the level and the intensity has definitely grown at this event because there's so much on the line now. Everyone's sort of in that qualification bubble. How are you feeling? And, and how have you maintained your sort of freshness as we've gone through these series of events? Yeah, you know, surfing doesn't define me as a person. Like, it's just a small part of my life. So all I'm just doing is putting my best foot forward for the 30 minutes and um, hopefully come on top. And if not, then, you know, live on. It's all good. So. And uh, looking forward to conditions you might surf again today. They've got you guys on standby, is that right? Yeah, I think so. I wouldn't mind it. It's pretty fun out there. Um, yeah, take it as it comes, frothing. And what about Evoca itself? Do you like visiting the area? You've been there a number of times now, I do believe. So how do you like the Central Coast? Do you, do you like the waves? Oh, I love Evoca, eh? It's They got so much fun waves. Um, you know, you could go up north, get fun waves. Um, it's a cool little town. It's like, you know, close enough to the city you can go in. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just a cool vibe here. I like it here. It's super chill. And your board's feeling good under your feet. They look spectacular at the moment. Yeah, now I'm riding um, Philippe's model, the quad, that he rode at, the, um, at Trestles last year. Loving yep. the quad, eh? Just giving me that, just more speed, I guess, and drive so that I can get to the sections earlier and really perfect my timing. Oh, you got a lot of people out there supporting you. We wish you all the best moving forward and uh, congratulations. That was such a strong performance. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Have a great day, bud. And yeah, like I said, th this guy's got so much game. He is tailor-made for that next level. And what I love about his He's very humble, you know, he, he understands that, yeah, it's, you know, it's his profession, but it doesn't define him as a human. I, I, and I think that's such a great insight into his personality. We were talking about it before, going, what are we going to get? Because you just don't know what you're going to get in a post-heat interview. That's probably the tamest yeah. I've seen him in a post-heat interview. Well, uh, you, but that's his nature. Uh, you know, I spoke to Kurt James about it. I said he, he said he's, you know, he's unique. He... You know, he understands he's blessed to be in this, in this kind of scenario when it comes to his career. He's a determined athlete, but he also realises that, you know, he's got such an opportunity as a, as a human being and he loves what he does. But, yeah, that's about the tamers because I was like, you throwing off to a question or am I <laughs> not? But, no, nah, congratulations. That was, that was world class, that performance. I figured you had it under control. I remained with the consistency of the yeah. one voice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you did <right>. well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. No. He, um, he's just, I feel like with Kihu, like, 
like you just mentioned then, it, it just speaks volumes of his personality, but then also his approach, knowing that, you know, surfing doesn't define him as a person. I think it's so important for athletes in general to recognize that, not just with the sport of surfing, but just all sports. Um, and I think, you know, like, because it can be so easy to be over-consumed with the fact that, okay, I'm a surfer and that's kind of your identity. And I think there's so many things that can happen with heat losses and heat wins that uh, it, it is such a roller coaster and it can be so easy to kind of get into that mindset of being brought down as well in those tough moments and i just think that um the fact that he doesn't allow surfing to define him it's it's one of those things that he does recognize that he's got a life outside of surfing and as an athlete it it doesn't take much for something like that to be pulled away from you. It can take an injury or a health condition or there's so many other factors that can play into that. And I feel like there's a lot of athletes in across all different sports that sometimes they do get a bit a bit lost when they have to transition out of that. Yeah. And you know what? I feel like the pandemic uh, brought a lot of that to the forefront as well, where the, uh, people realised there was more to life than, than you know, the intensity of, of sport. And, and at, at the end of the day, when you start off as a surfer, as a grommet, you do it because you love the sport. So I think his attitude is paramount to uh, you know, a successful career because he understands that, no, it doesn't define him. It's about who he is as a person more than anything, but he enjoys what he does. And I think that's the, the key part. You've got to enjoy what you bring as we see a priority situation here. So Serpent in Black had priority and that is why Cooper Davies let him go. But yeah, I think it's important to, uh, to put it in you know, put it into where it lies in your actual life. So it's a, it's a great attitude to have. And as we see the surfing red now up and riding, look at this wave just exploding. That is Sean Gunning from Spain. Oh, it, just disconnected on that final manoeuvre. It is absolutely pumping out here, Dimmy. I feel like, you know, like Kihu, he was excited just to be surfing waves like this in an event. So we have been blessed with the conditions here at Avoca. Yeah, the sun's out. It's a brilliant day. The, the local community has really sort of engaged and they love this event. We saw it in the women's last year. We saw uh, Molly Pickland taking on Macy Callahan. We've seen amazing performances over the course of this event. And I feel like uh, the strength of these banks out here have provided so much opportunity at a cru crucial time of these qualifying events. And uh, again, I feel like you know, look at these waves. This is world class and offering up so many big numbers for these surfers to unload on. And look at this one. Had he landed this turn, wow, that was so well connected with the lip. And it was just, I feel like the bank turned on itself a little bit there and it sort of engulfed him. But yeah, they are so lucky to be having <laughs> such good waves. They are, well, we've got 16 minutes left in this heat. This is heat number two of the men's round of 32. Beautiful day here for the Vistla. Central Coast Pro QS 3000. This is, of course, our final stop of the Vistla New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2023. Great to have Vistla on board again. Partnering with Surfing New South Wales on the leg of events as they have done over the last four years. Yeah, so it's great to have them involved, of course, uh, part of the Vistla New South Wales Pro Surf Series. And just thinking back to uh, Cooper Davies at the moment, he's had, he's had some strong results in 2023. I do believe he got a quarter final at the Tweed Coast Pro. So that, you know, that's a, that's a big result in itself. So he'd be right up there. And of course, when you think of the likes of the Japanese surfers, Awami has already had a second in the La Union International Pro in the QS series. He's had multiple results, so he'd be really, really comfortable in this arena as he goes nice and square off the bottom on the back end. But yeah, very strong heats. Like all these heats, these round of 32 heats is going to be separating the men from the boys, as they say. I can't wait. Some of these heats, have you looked through the draw? I have it. I feel no like more can, coffee for me. You can look at any <laughs> heat and think that there could be a final, but it's just so good to see so many high-quality surfers in these events for the Vistler New South Wales Pro Surf Series and just in this region in Australia. I just feel like we've got such a hotbed of talent in this one country. Yep. There's only so many spots for surfers to, challenge, uh, to qualify for that Challenger Series. It and makes talk, it tricky. Talk us through that. How many in the men's? There's nine. Is that correct? 
think it's eight it's, and one wild card or hold up. And I Let's think have it's a proper six, look at this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's nine, but I could be wrong. But yeah, so you know, spots on that challenger series at, at you know, there's not that many, so you have to really make sure you don't want to leave yourself short, especially in that last event at Surface. So important event. If you can get a win here and jag 3,000 points, it's going to put you on the spot. And we are down towards the, probably about the halfway stage. We've sort of lost some of the, yeah, we've sort of lost a bit of the, uh, Connectability with the scores at the moment as we see the surfer out there looking towards the beach, asking the announcer for some of the information, and that is a really uh, critical role that I'm pretty sure Jess Grimwood's down there actually at the moment. So, and the scores are back live on your screen. Cooper Davies with that 5.83 and a 5.73 out there in the lead. The surfer in red, based on that last wave uh, was a 4.93 the Japanese surface so that was that one turn just got a little bit hooked up Sean Gunning needs to get himself a 3.43 and the surfer in black needs that 4.37 that is the state of play there's 13 minutes ago so the best wave so far has been a 5.83 and that's a little bit uh, off key to what we saw in the last heat so the ocean does has a tendency to do that. It does slow up at times as we see the surfer in black up and right in. Really low centre of gravity and nice extension through the body and really well executed that last turn there from the Japanese surfer, Luchi. A great finish. He's chasing a 4.37. Will he get the number required with 12 and a half minutes remaining? As we watch the destination New South Wales wave replay. He had a great read on this wave, just waited for that section, but the critical turn was there, Dimmy, and managed just to get the completion. Yeah, I would have loved to have seen that first, uh, that first manoeuvre a little bit more engaged, but yeah, he definitely completed that well. He's got a very springy foundation to his surfing, but yeah, at the moment he needs a 4.37. We'll see what the judges think. There are 12 minutes to go. The surfer from the North Shore club up there in our, on, the, on the sunny coast. Shane Bevan and all the crew up there. He's a part of a very strong club that also has Alistair Reginato, uh, just to name a few. I'm pretty sure Sophie McCulloch's from up there too, isn't she? It's, Great so, to see Soph oh, back in good. the Rashi after that an injury. Good. We were talking about the rankings before and according to the World Surf League website, for the o Australia Oceania is that region. The encyclopedia of the qualifying uh, series. Well, normally it's on our comms notes, but that one piece of information is missing. So oh, that's all right. I've reverted to the website. I like it. As everyone else can do if they're wanting to have a look at the stats. According to that, it says for the men's rankings, the top seven men and one wild card from this region will qualify for the Challenger Series. Okay. Best five results. And at the moment, uh, two of these surfers are well, actually. Three in the top eight are out. So you've got Xavier Huxpool. He's gone at six at the moment. He exited early. Martin Harrison, who we've spent a bit of time with up on the uh, far north coast, he's actually injured at the moment, which is a real shame for that young guy because he's an absolute weapon. And then you've got Mikey Madonna, who just went out in that last heat. So it's going to really tighten up the rankings after this event with 3,000 points for the winner. So, uh, you know... You got Cooper Davies right now in 17th position and dropping up 450. So if you add, a, you know, a win here, it's going to put him in a strong position. So, you know, it's nothing is over till it's over, and it's this event and the final event on the qualifying series of 5,000 at the, one of the most on, iconic locations, Newcastle, Warren Smith, and he's, you know, and his staff do a great job there. It's been, you know, a staple on the calendar for generations. And uh, it's a great way to finish the series. So there's a lot of pressure that's building with 10 minutes to go. And right now, it is the surfer in white from Australia out there in the lead. He has first priority. It's been a little bit slow as we go in heat number two of the round of 32. But yeah, a lot riding on these results, definitely. And that, that makes the intrigue a little bit more uh, interesting for the viewer at home, but probably not for the athletes in the water. 
Yeah, it does make it entertaining, that's for sure. All these competitors, they have got a lot riding on this event and that final QS 5000 event for this year. Challenger Series, well, it starts in just under two months. Pretty quick turnaround, Dimmy. Actually, yeah, the CTs have got to come through Australia first, too, don't they? You've got Bells and you've got Margies, and then you'll have that... Uh, challenges so there will be a little bit of a gap when you think about it i think may uh late april early may will be the start up at snapper and then you've got the event in sydney in uh in may as well so it's going to be great to have the world's best athletes in australia and um yeah if you can get yourself out there get yourself one of the cts maybe fly over to perth and head over to marg's always a, a great place to uh you go to one of the finest regions for wines in the world, and then you've got, you know, the, uh, the Bells Beach. That in itself is such, you know, an amazing place to go. It's definitely, if you're a surf fan, it's, you know, bucket list stuff. Some, if you look at some of the guys and who have won it generation to generation, the men's and women's. It's, it's an amazing event, the Ripcord Pro. We've got a recap of this event. It's been a little bit slow, but right now it is Cooper Davies, and let's see what has transpired. Brit Nickel and up and riding, it is the surfer in green. That one turn, Flurry. That was Sean Gunning, and then Cooper Davies. Nice attack. A little bit of froth and bubble on this wave, but we got to work. Clean conditions. And what about this one from Red? The surfer from Red, he was absolutely flying down the line to get to that first section. Bit of a check turn through the middle. He got the end connection, making the most of it, but answering straight back was the surfer in white. Takes off behind the section, put it up over the lip, and he was looking for this completion, carved into the pocket, straight up into another turn. Great combo there. Great exchange between all four competitors. That is the money turn of the heat, I reckon. But had he landed this, the Japanese surfer, I feel like he would have really sort of had a bit of separation in the uh, scores. But yeah, it's still very tight. There's only yeah, two or three points separating second, third and fourth. So not a lot in this. Cooper Davies definitely holds all the aces with that 5.83 and a 5.73. But Guaranteed by the end of this heat, I'm thinking there's going to be a score up towards the good to excellent range because the waves are pumping. Here we go, surfing red, up and riding. Trying to work out the line. Oh, that, that can be dangerous. That looked like it wanted to Looks be an tricky. ankle breaker. Yeah. Oh, the surfing red, that's Tenchi Awami from Japan. He's chasing a 4.68, or a 6.5 now because there was a couple of scores dropped in as we watch the Destination New South Wales wave replay. Here we go. Oh, Sean Gunning up and riding. It's got a lovely fluent style and uh, aggressive 12 o'clock to finish that wave off. So that's going to def definitely better his situation. And in fact, that's going to put him into second, a uh, 5.93. So the judges deem that to be the best wave of the heat so far with six minutes to go. 5.93, Sean Gunning in second. Well, the surfer in black and red, they're now chasing mid-range sixes to move on through into the next round. This is, of course, the men's round of 32, heat number two in the water. There are eight heats in this round. We started with the women's, moved into the men's, and a round of 16 is on standby for a potential start later today. But we'll what do you reckon? Wait and see. I reckon it actually it will improve once that tide turns. I think high, uh, low tide was around 10 o'clock today. Here we go, and it is a surfer in blue. And this is the thing with it, when you're thinking about scenarios with priority Brit, where you have to that little bit more freedom if you don't have first and second priority. So Sean Gunning, his whole experience out there right now would be trying to improve that 5.55. He only needs a 5.63 to go to the lead. So if he can jag something out of priority, and we've seen it so many times, we saw it with Dimity Store this morning. And you see it day in, day out, that without priority, sometimes you can get your best wave in the heat. So his objective is just to put himself in a good position to get anything and uh, that no one wants, basically pick up the scraps and turn, you know, an average wave into a good score. 
And it can happen out here, Dimmy. The conditions, they seem to be pulsing throughout the morning. They are consistent. The swell seems to have picked up a little bit. I feel like the wave and the wave face has become a lot cleaner. And there is that opportunity just to sit off the end of the bank as we watch live action in the water. This is the surfer in green, blue. No green oh, out there. Is. That is blue. That's Sean Gunning. Uh, that's what we're speaking about. It sort of frees you up a little bit. And uh, how many times on the CT do you see the likes of Gabriel Medina? He's the king of it, where he won't have priority. And he'll just basically go out there and find his two best waves. So right now for Cooper Davies, he's uh, he's trying to just better that 5-7-3 to extend his lead because Sean Gunning is, is coming for him. And right now it is up to the two Japanese servers. They need a 6.4 and a 6.5 for the surfer in black and the surfer in red. And I've been impressed by the way these two surfers go about their business. But right now it is starting to get a little bit tricky out there because of the timing. It is. There is three and a half minutes remaining in this heat. At the moment, Cooper Davies in the lead. Sean Gunning in second place. Joe Azuchi in third. And Tenchi Awami in fourth but still only mid-range sixes are required to move on through into the round of 16 and this is where we normally see a little tactics becoming evident so whether or not cooper davies in the white will go and sit close to another competitor or maybe just search for better than a 5.73 knowing that he is in first place and looking to extend that lead it's a hard one for sean gunning he's sitting in second place dimmy but holding fourth priority it's, in, it's interesting that Cooper Davies has allowed both black and red to sort of move away from him. If, uh, from a coaching point of view, you'd probably be telling him to get in their grill and to sort of make them visually aware that he's right there with priority. But yeah, like he's in a strong position, but you can all, it's a flip of the coin there because realistically the big, big scores have come from the southern end. So both... Japanese surfers have given themselves a bit of space, but also they're putting themselves in a bad position when it comes to where the scoring potential has been coming in this heat. Great to have Vissa involved in this event. Of course, Vissa was voted runner-up in the brand of the year in the annual Surf and Board Sport Industry Awards announced in November 2021, of course. Get online to Vissa.com or SisterEvolution.com or you'll find their products in an independent surf shops all around Australia, and uh, they've decked us out again, as usual. Looking oh, as good as you can look <laughs> when you're me, anyway. But great to have John Mossop and all the crew involved. They are the naming rights, not only of this event, but the series, the uh, Pro Surf series. And interestingly enough, I reckon the guy who was leading the series was just bundled out, and that was Mikey Madonna. So what is that going to do to the ratings when it comes to the men? We are down to one and a half minutes to go. QS 3000 WSL event, and the, uh, the punches just keep flowing. It's going to be an epic day. If you are on the beach or, and, or you're going to go down to Avocas today and sample some of the best surfers on the planet, make sure you slap on that sunscreen. It is so hot for March. It is, eh? Feels like a hot summer's day, Dimmy. What's happened? <laughs> Someone flipped the switch. Someone Got the is, seasons wrong. It's going to be 40 degrees. The Mad Max Minute uh, pops up on the screen. It's going to be 40 degrees out west today. That's incredible. Grab your two-for-one burritos. Scan that QR code on screen. Thanks I'll to Mad Max. Lunch. Oh, that's a cheap lunch, isn't yeah, it, Dimmy? Yeah. That, that'd be right. I thought you'd eat two to yourself. No, I'm on a diet. I'm a finely tuned non-athlete no such thing as a diet it's just healthy nutrition right i know mad max so i mean we've been sort of they've been involved in this tour for a couple of years now and the food is next level fresh it's so good healthy uh and and what i love about mad max is that they've been supplying all the athletes at the beach when it's lunchtime the boys are the boys are there ready to roll <laughs> Like seagulls to a chip. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> but yeah, this heat is about to wrap up. It is going to, at this stage, it looks like Sean Gunning and Cooper Davies going to get on through a little bit slow in that last couple of minutes. We're going to throw off to a break. We're enjoying this day. And uh, it's the Central Coast Pro QS3000 and part of the Bisla New South Wales Pro Surf Series. 
What an amazing day. Welcome back to the live action here at Avoca for the Central Coast Pro QS 3000. Our last and final stop of the Vistla New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2023. My name is Britt Nickel, joined back in the booth with Steve Robbo. And well, who do we have in the water now, Robbo? Okay, Jacob Bartholomew, he's off to a quick start, but nothing serious on the board. Elliot Parada Reed from New Zealand, Jarvis Earl. And Lennox Smith, I believe, what a heat. These heats are stacked. It just uh, highlights the talent that is surfing on this circuit. Every heat stacked, and it's amazing to watch. It's been a fantastic morning up to date, and there's plenty more action to come. The waves are pumping. The sun is shining. The winds are creating clean conditions, and it's just a fantastic day of competitive surfing. It is, and on screen, that is Jarvis Earl. Carves into the pocket, maintaining a heap of speed throughout this wave. Surfer in blue, that is your WSL World Junior Men's Champ on screen. And he is showing us why. Yep, he's a world champ, and that's what we expect in these events. Um, the talent is amazing. Jarvis is an exciting prospect coming through the system, and he's coming fast with a world title at the pro junior level on the World Surf League under his belt already. He's got an exciting future. He's also the Taiwan Opener surfing champion. He's That's also the, the leader. A leader on the series. Wow. Well, won't be long before we see Jarvis really stepping up the ranks. He's, that's what he's doing with Challenger Series and Championship Tour firmly in his focus. We do have our last heat winner, heat number two, Cooper Davies down there ready for a post here interview. Cooper, it's Brett Nickel and Steve Robbo in the booth. How are you feeling here at Evoke? You look really comfortable. Kind of nice. We've had some pretty fun waves on offer down here. So um, just trying to capitalise while there's still a bit of swell and before it kind of peters out. So. Yeah, having lots of fun. Now, I'm just looking at where you're sitting on the rankings. A couple of the, the guys in front of you have bowed out of this event already. What would it mean to you to take home 3,000 points towards your Challenger campaign? Oh, it'd be unreal. I'd be so happy if that was the case. That's the, definitely the goal. So um, doing everything I can possible to try and get there. So um, yeah, just trying to be in the right headspace and. Um, been traveling with a couple of good blokes or one of my best mates from home so um we travel well together so it's um yeah just about doing the right things and um yeah i'm gonna do everything i can to get there so yeah cooper um it looks like every heat is stacked i mean um how do you feel as a surfer coming you know at this at, it's the semi pointy end of the event is it you know high pressure all the way yeah 100 percent. it's like Every, every every surfer in here is just like world class in these events. It's um, 
Yeah, there's no easy heats and um, it's um, anyone's, especially when there's a bit of swell and everyone's happy to surf and excited, it just, it's anyone's really. So um, yeah, I'm just sticking to my game plan and uh, yeah, go from there, hopefully get a few more heats under the belt. Well, the game plan's working, Cooper, and uh, we'll let you go now and prepare for your next round and keep up the good work. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Cheers. And he's right. Every heat is stacked. We've got a stacked heat here. We've got a world champ. We've got Jagger Bartholomew, who's uh, experienced on this tour. Elliot parada reed from New Zealand is a veteran now of uh, these events. He's travelled the world and uh, very experienced competitor. And Elliot parada reed currently goes to the lead with a 4.5. That's the best wave of the heat so far, but plenty of time in this heat. They're 30-minute heats, and we can see the scores there on the scoreboard. I would expect uh, before too long all those scores will be erased and they will have uh, higher scores. Yeah, I feel like at this stage of an event, you, you can't have fours in your scoreline and expect no. to get through, and I feel like all of these competitors would know that, and even just looking at the score lines from previous heats, they're going to need, you know, sixes and sevens if they're wanting to move through into the round of 16 because you mentioned it before, stacked heats throughout this entire draw. This is a big event. There's a lot riding on this event here at the Central Coast. We watch live action in the water. That is Jarvis Earl from Canala. Great first turn. Can he get another connection? Unfortunately not. Just a quick one there for the surfer in blue. He's already locked in a four. Only chasing a 1-1-1 one, one, one to take first. I feel like he's done that job, but he's going to be looking for something better with just over 23 minutes on the clock. Still plenty of time remaining. The 30-minute heats, it's allowing the competitors that extra time in the water. And Rob, I just feel like for some surfers, it just allows them to get into rhythm with the ocean. Um, you know, there's been a few heats where competitors have been slow to start, but then finish well, and they might get their heat started with 18 minutes on the clock, and they just treat it like a normal heat that would be 20 minutes. 30 minutes is definitely a, um, a luxury at uh, this stage. And yeah, it does, it takes a lot of pressure off them. They, they, they know they're going to get their opportunities to get their two scoring rides. And that's probably why we're seeing a lot, a, a lot more excellent waves being ridden as well. Because they can be a little more choosy. It's not as um, hectic out there. Here's a nice looking wave. That looks like our surfer in black. That black. is Elliot Parada Reed. The Kiwi. Powerful Kiwi. And behind him, the surfer in white, Jacob Bartholomew, goes vertical on that one. Rides out of it, importantly. So that'll be Jagger's best wave as well. And we also have Lennox Smith in the water as well. Another great. Young surfer, recently turned 18. He won the Gold Coast Open QS 1000, so he's already had a win on the QS. But, uh, currently sitting 48th on the rankings. He's got a fair bit of work to do if he's looking for that Challenger Series qualification, but at his age, I feel like he's also probably more focused on the Pro Junior. We watch the destination New South Wales Wave replay of Jarvis. Beautiful surfer, but that wave didn't offer up too much for him. This was a better wave, and this is uh, our Kiwi surfer, Parada Reed. Strong, powerful backhand surfing. There's three strong manoeuvres and finishes off, so Parada Reed was in the lead, will probably increase his lead. Jaga Bartholomew behind him gets that final move, went vertical on that one. You just see then, he, kick, he just kicked out that little bit early because the competitor in Elliot parada Ray was just paddling out right in front of him. Yeah, I wonder if the judges uh, call that completion. <laughs> I feel like he, he had did to get complete out. it, but yeah. he had to get out he of that He had to scenario. get out early, so yeah, give him the benefit of the doubt, maybe. Okay, parada Reed, 6.5. We saw that wave, a series of backhand uh, manoeuvres from parada Reed. He's a strong surfer on his backhand and a 6.5 is a good score that's the first decent score of this heat so the kiwi looking to emulate um t kahuku butler's performance earlier on my break i had multiple messages from the philippines watching their surfer john mark takong and they also informed me marama means cheeky <laughs> So I always wondered what it meant, but uh, 
Yeah. So Kong put on a great performance. I'm pretty sure he has his own surf school named that as Marama. well. <laughs> over there. It's great to see those competitors making their way here to Australia. For the Visla Central Coast Pro QS3000, it is co-sanctioned to regions. But a lot of those competitors here from Japan, Indonesia, Philippines. Yeah, as a dual sanctioned event, their points for all the Asian surfers really important uh, as well. They'll be desperately trying to qualify for the Challenger Series. And as I mentioned to Adam earlier, Britt, Callum Robson is setting the example of how things can change so fast. Two years ago at the Tweed Coast Pro, he wasn't qualified for the Challenger Series. He won it. He qualified. Now he's a top 10 in the world surfer, scoring perfect 10s on the big dance stage. It's amazing. Yeah, it really is a feel-good story with Callum Robson. I, I think, you know, those close to him and around him knew what he was capable of, but to put himself in that position, he's soon shown the world what he's capable of. And... You know, he doesn't have big sponsors and things no. like that either. And it just kind of highlights to a lot of surfers that it is achievable it's and it still can be done at a high level too. Absolutely. You watch Jarvis Earl on screen flying down the line. Couple of nice turns there, smaller wave, but he linked those two turns together. There was absolutely no downtime. So the surfer in blue, Jarvis, he is currently in third place. Is Jagger Bartholomew in the white in second and Elliot Parada Reed in the black in first as we watch live action here for Lennox Smith? He waited patiently for this one, Robbo. He did and goes to the air and rides out of it. So, yep, he's waited close to half the heat for his opening ride. So, that is a lot of patience, but I think he'll get a decent score on that one given the scores that are there uh, on the scoreboard. Let's look at the replay of this. Nice opening turn, and you can see what he's thinking here. He's going to the air and rides out of it smoothly. So, yep, I think a good move. Score's not there yet, but uh, looking at the score chart, I think he's going to probably get the second best wave of the heat. Yeah, it'll be interested to see where the judges slot that one in yeah. on the scoreboard. And there it is, a 6.93, so highest single wave of this heat so far. They did reward Lennox Smith in the red. He waited patiently, and it paid off. And he executed that air perfectly, so I can understand the judges' thinking there. It was, uh, there was a strong first move, and he executed the final aerial manoeuvre perfectly, rode out of it it's with style, and gets a 6.93. So can't argue with him using half the heat for his first opening ride. It's put him in a great position and puts a lot of pressure on all the other surfers really so good work from the surfer in red we watch the current head leader up and riding that's elliot parada reed just a quick up and out as the wave just runs away so wave selection is crucial here at evoca well it's crucial in any competitive surfing event when you've got conditions like this you really want to pick the good one so lennox smith he picked a good one here he read this section put it up there and just even the rotation and the landing, I don't think there's much more that he could have done with that last section. No, he did it perfectly and got well rewarded with a 6.93. And he's got 16 minutes to back up his score. And I'm sure he'll probably get a little more active now that he's got a good score on the board. It'll be interesting now as well with 16 minutes on the clock, whether or not any of those competitors saw what Lennox did on that last section because all four surfers are more than capable of getting in the air and Absolutely. landing big big turns and big manoeuvres like that. So I feel like it's just going to push the level of the other surfers in the water. Jarvis Earl, well, he's normally in the air. He is. We watch the Destination New South Wales Wave replay of our Kiwi competitor. Great first turn, straight into a second. Got a little caught on the bottom turn and wasn't able to get the completion. Surfer in black, still in first place. He's looking to replace a 4.5 from his scoreline if he's wanting to extend his lead. At the moment, Jarvis Earl in the blue from Cronulla. He's sitting in second place, 
looking for a 6.6. .6. However, Lennox Smith in the red in third is only looking for a 1.47 to move into second. So Jarvis Earl in second place. He's going to be looking for something decent because this man here is the man in third and he doesn't need much Robbo. And he's doing it again, taking it to the air. So he's uh, going to elevate his position. Interested again to see how the judges score that. Um, bigger section, bigger air. Yep. I'd say he's probably going to go to the lead. I feel like he got a little more inverted as well. Yep. Probably wasn't as clean as the last one. But like you said, bigger wave. So we await that score to come in. And yep, I, every chance that we'll have a situation change here as Lennox Smith gets a 7.5. So you called it well. It was a bigger wave, a bigger move, more inverted. We look at it again. Well, this is his first one, so we're going to compare them. So it's his first one. Smaller wave, nicely executed, rides out of it well. But this one, bigger section, more inverted, rides out of it perfectly, 7.5. So in the space of no time at all, Lennox Smith has caught his two rides, a 7.5 and a 6.93. He is superbly positioned in the lead with a heat tally of 14.43. Pressure's on the other three surfers. And we know they've got the tricks to manage that pressure with Elliot Parada Reed in second position. Jarvis Earl in third, only requiring a 6.6, .6, and for him that is not a big requirement. Jagger Bartholomew only requiring a 6.18, also not a big requirement. Interesting to note that Lennox Smith, I think he caught that. 6.93 with 17 or 18 minutes on the clock and then he managed to lock that other one in with about 14 minutes so within a space of four to five minutes he went from having no waves and sitting in fourth to two waves and taking the lead and not just taking the lead he's well out in front he has the two top scoring rides of the heat and he did it all in the space of like you said three minutes here we go surfer in white jagger bartholomew powerful opening move looking for something strong on the inside and he pulls it off. So Jagger Bartholomew, two powerful moves there. And here we go, watch this guy, Jarvis Earl. Beautiful snap, but that wave didn't deliver. So interested to see what Jagger Bartholomew uh, scores. Absolute potential for a situation change here. Huge two turns from the yep. surfer in white. As we watch the Destination New South Wales Wave replay, this is Jagger Bartholomew. Drives hard off the bottom, hits the lip, and straight into that last section, drifted as he landed, and threw a heap of spray as well. Yep, Jagger's got the power game, that's for sure. And he's called on those power turns, and let's see what the judges deliver on that. An 8.5, so they loved the power, Britt. They loved it. They did, and well, we could see why in that replay. He just linked those two turns together. It was a bigger wave. He drove hard off the bottom, cracked the lip. I just was so impressed with how much water he pushed throughout these turns as we watch the Destination New South Wales wave replay. Critical all the way. You can see the fans of spray, and that one right on edge, timed perfectly. 8.5. It's not all about going to the air. Jagger Bartholomew, well, he knows that. He's showing us that, an 8.5. So excellent score, highest single wave of this heat so far. Puts him into second place. He kept the board in the water. He got rewarded for that surfing. And I just like the flair, the flair in that last turn particularly. He put it up there, but you could just see that he pushed with that back foot. His arms and rotation just added that little bit of extra uh, to, I guess, the visual when we're yep. watching it, which, you know, judges, they're, they're observing everything. And um, he got the completion. A great read there from Jagger Bartholomew. And here we go, Jarvis Earl. Pressure's on him now. I love the fact that an 8.5 is uh, handed out by the judges for two powerful on-the-face turns. I think they are managing their aerial manoeuvres that, yes, they'll reward them, and they'll reward them really well, but um, it takes nothing away from the pure side of surfing, which is on-face manoeuvres. As we watch the Mad Max recap, it has been a flurry of waves being caught out the front here at Avoca. This was Elliot Parada-Reed, opened up with a great 
left-hander on his backhand. He linked it all the way through. Lennox Smith, this is the 6.93. He got this last section. Rotation was perfect, landing was perfect, and then he caught this on his way back out. Under priority, 7.5. Got inverted, put it up there, got the completion, and he was confident. But this way, is the best of the heat. Jagger Bartholomew, keeping the board in the water, throwing everything at it, and he got rewarded. As you mentioned, Robbo, he's gone back to the staples, the foundations of surfing, and yep. it's been rewarded. Yep, and that is the beauty of the entire sport. It's... Uh it's got multiple, multiple manoeuvres and uh, you've got to be good at everything and you just can't get away with being an aerial surfer. You need that power game as well and Jagger Bartholomew pulled it out there superbly. He'll be looking to get rid of that 4.83 because, yep, he's gone to second but Parada Reed only needs a 6.84 to get into second. He has priority and with these 30 minute heats there's plenty of time. Nine minutes, and while we were in that Mad Max recap, we had a wave here from Java Searle. One turn there, not going to be the score that he is chasing. He hasn't had the best of waves, Java Searle. I mean, yeah, we high expectations because he's a world champion, a world junior champion, so we look to see outstanding surfing from him, but he hasn't been able to deliver in this heat, and it's mainly because he's... Uh, the, the wave choice just hasn't delivered to him. And it is. You can be, you know, the most talented surfer in the world, but if you're not putting yourself in the position and allowing yourself the opportunity to be on the best waves and dominate that peak when they come through, you, you're making the job harder for yourself. He is. But I feel like on paper this is just one of the matchups of this round. Every heat is stacked. You could look at the draw and just think every single one could be a final. Yep, that's for sure. Eight minutes on the clock. It is currently Lennox Smith in first place from that South Coast, Illawarra kind of region. The 6.93 and a 7.5. Closely followed by Jagger Bartholomew, the man from the Gold Coast. He locked in an 8.5. He's now chasing a 5.93 for the lead. Lip Parada Reed from New Zealand in third place looking for a 684 and Jarvis Searle in the blue. The current world junior men's champ, he is on the back foot chasing an 8.44. And we know Jarvis can pull an 8.44 easily. He has those dynamic, powerful, both on face and into the air moves. So still a lot to play out in this heat. Jagger will be trying to get rid of that 4.83. We watched the Kiwi competitor. Just a quick up and out there. That's not going to be the 684 that he's chasing. Beautiful conditions here at Avoca Beach. The waves are absolutely pumping. We've had competitors mention it in their post-heat interviews. Their eyes are just lighting up when they walk down the beach for their heats. And you can see why. Yep. 30-minute heats today. Contest directors making the decision to give surfers the extra time in the water. And, well, why wouldn't you when you've got waves like this? Jagger Bartholomew sitting in second place, only chasing a 5.93 for first. Wow. Three strong moves there. So good wave choice. Pretty sure he's gotten rid of the 4.83. I feel confident about that. Whether he scored a 5.93, I'm not sure. Watch we'll look at it again. Destination New South Wales wave replay. I don't know if it's going to be the 593. No. I feel like we will just leave that in the hands of the judges. <laughs> yeah, but like you do. said, I think it will improve on, on his second score. Yeah, which is what he needed to do. Can he improve on the 483 and make things harder for surfers in third and fourth? There it is, a 5.27. So it was borderline. He fell just short of the requirement for first. He needed a 5.93. He got a 5.27. But in doing that, he has increased the job for Elliot Parada Reed and Java Searle. Surfer in black, Elliot now chasing a 7.28. That is that surfer up and riding. Great first turn into a second. Can he get the section? And not able to get the completion. I don't think he's going to get no, that 728. He needed to ride out of that for sure, out the back. 
beautiful looking wave here for Lennox Smith, our heat leader. Some strong turns. Rides out of it. Will be interesting to see how that plays out. This is, of course, the men's round of 32, heat number three in the water. We have eight heats in this round. We had the women's this morning. We actually started the women's round of 32 yesterday afternoon and carried on this morning with what they had left of that round. We watched this replay. He threw buckets of water straight into the second turn, but just here, he just went a little too hard for the section and couldn't get the completion. But answering back, this is the current heat leader, Lennox Smith, linking two turns together. That was the first wave where he's kept the board in the water. <laughs> he's, and I'm interested to see how that plays out. He needed to improve on a 6.93. I don't think he's done that, but it was a strong scoring ride regardless. And he still holds down the lead. Bartholomew in second position. And yep, nervous moments for these surfers because every heat critical as they try to qualify for that Challenger series. At the moment, the man leading the rankings for the 2022-2023 QS series here on the Australasian Oceanic region is the man in blue, Jarvis Searle. And the, I, I don't think he needs to um, qualify through the QS. I think world by winning, juniors. yeah, by winning the World Juniors, I think he automatically gets a position into the Challenger Series. But he's doing these uh, QSs to gain that experience because he is moving very quickly through the ranks. Well, he's certainly gained a lot of experience just in doing so. Like, he won the World Juniors, but he's currently sitting first on yeah, that Yeah, on the rankings as well. Yeah, Things are happening fast for Jarvis Earl. I think as well, when this, when this regional leg started, it was late last year, like mid to late last year, and at that point in time, the World Juniors hadn't surfed. They didn't surf until January this year. Yep. So at the time, Jarvis would have been thinking, I have to do this to qualify for that challenger leg. Yep. No, you're correct. And that's why he was in Taiwan and he won that event. And that's why he's um, on top of the rankings. So it's moving quickly for the Cronulla Goofy Footer. Winning that World Juniors, it just took the pressure off. <laughs> yes. A great to see Jarvis still here doing these events. And like you said, just the experience, I think just staying relevant Yep. Time in the Rashi. I think one thing that you'd have to be careful of is managing that fatigue in and out of the water, the mental True. and physical fatigue, because you'd really want to be hitting that Challenger Series ready to go. Nice and fresh as we watch Elliot Parada read on his backhand. He's pulling into the barrel, but not able to get out of there. I feel like there's a few barrels out there to be had, just picking the right ones. Did you see our Philippine guy catch his barrel earlier? I heard all about it, but <laughs> I missed it. We go back and watch the replay, I guess. Yes. Uh, Scroll on back through. Here Split we go. Peak. That is a surfer in white and red. Huge air there from Lennox Smith. Just not able to quite stick it. He certainly launched. Conditions really starting to improve throughout the day here at Avoca. Dimmy didn't believe me, but I called to Kong has the best hairdo on tour. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it, to be okay. honest. I, I missed the heat, for one. But uh, I, heard, I did hear you he talking in the booth at one point. He has a head of hair, let and me I tell you. And I think Dimmy was a bit jealous. <laughs> <laughs> One minute remaining. Parada Reed looking for a 728. Jarvis Earl looking for an 8.87, calling an 8.9. We're down to the Mad Mex minute. Thanks to Mad Mex. Grab life by the burrito as well. He's looking for the barrel, the man in the black. That's Elliot Parada Reed. He can't get on out of there. So he won't get the 728 that he is chasing with 30 seconds on the clock. And you'd have to say it's looking good for Lennox Smith and Jager Bartholomew as that clock ticks down. The requirement for Jarvis Earl, 8.87. He'd need something very special to get that. 
and without priority. Is a huge ask. I feel like he took off on the end of this wave with five seconds on the clock. Well, will he get an 887? He's going to have to do something special. I don't think that's going to be enough there for Jarvis Earl as he looks to call it a day here at Evoca. That will conclude the men's round of 32, heat number three. It looks like Lennox Smith and Jagger Bartholomew will move on through to the men's round of 16. Unfortunately, bowing out Elliot parada Reed and Jarvis Searle. We will cut to a short commercial break and join you back here with all the live action for heat number four. Avoca Beach for the Visla Central Coast Pro QS3000 presented by Mad Mex. This is our final stop of the Visla New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2023. We are straight into the men's round of 32, heat number four. My name is Britt Nickel, joined in the booth with Steve Robertson. And what, an, what another exciting matchup we have here between these four competitors. We do. And we've got a replay to recap on. That looks like it's Axel from North Stain. Okay, so that's the opening ride. Kalani Ball. I can recognise that um, powerful precision style of Kalani Ball. And Oni Anwar from Indonesia. So I'm going to shout out to a lot of my Indonesian friends, particularly Tippy and Tim over there. Thinking of you guys, I'm sure you'll be watching Oni, one of your great products out of Indonesia, Bali. Oni's been around for a long time. Spent a lot of time, I think, on the Gold Coast. Yeah, he went to, I'm pretty sure he yeah. went to school for a while he on did. the Gold Coast. came over and went to school. Definitely Learned how to in. surf. <laughs> Learned how to surf really well. And um, he has carved out a fantastic career. He's the actual Asian surfing champion. And uh, that has that comes with a lot of prestige in Indonesia as well. So Oni is a fantastic um, surfer and a fantastic product of Indonesia and just a lovely guy. I think for some of the Australian Oceanic competitors, they might have looked at the heat draw and saw a lot of the competitors, say from Japan, Philippines, and a couple from Indonesia, maybe not had a full idea of who they were, but I feel like Oni, Oni's one of the ones yep. they looked at and went, oh, we know who, <laughs> we definitely know who Oni is. We know Oni. We know what to expect. Surfer in white, great competitor. He uh, had a fifth place at the NIAS event. Yep. Third place in Taiwan. And if you're looking for a win here at the Central Coast, 3,000 points will go into the winner's Rankings points as we watch live action. That's Axel Kuroda. Huge manoeuvre there from the man in the red. Well, we've seen that one move can definitely score decent. Kalani Ball open with a 6.67. We do have our previous seat winner down there ready for a post-seat interview. Lennox Smith, it's Britt Nickel and Steve Robbo. Congratulations on moving on through to the round of 16. 
Thank you. Trotten. Lennox, Lennox, um, it took you about 14 minutes to catch your first ride out there. You were really patient. Was that part of your strategy? You really want to pick your first ride and get a decent score on the board? Oh, not really. I kind of wanted to get a quick start, but I swear the banks changed that much when we first got out there. The rips were going everywhere, so I was kind of like, oh, I'll just wait. But, yeah, I was, I was crapping it a bit. Okay, and then, you know, within three minutes, you had your two scoring rides on the board. So you must have been going from anxious to feeling really comfortable. Is that how you felt? Yeah, I was pretty happy when I got them too, for sure. Hey, Lennox, you locked in that 693. You did a first turn and then took to the air for the second. Paddling back out after that, you caught your 7.5 under priority. It was one huge air. You got the completion. You got nice and inverted. But paddling back out before that, was that something that you took note of, that you got rewarded for the air previous? Yeah, for sure. Definitely when I made that first air on the first one, I was like, oh, may as well try another one. <laughs> Now, moving on into the round of 16, talk about strategy. Is there anything that you're going to mix up? Obviously, it's dependent on the conditions, but is there anything particular that you might change? Yeah, I'll just see what the waves are doing, I guess. I think quick start's always good, so try to get that done. All right, Lennox. Well, we were impressed with your performance there. You're into the round of 16. You may be surfing later today. We'll let you go away and uh, recharge your batteries and prepare for a great next round. Well done. Thank you. Cheers. All right, Lennox Smith from the south coast of New South Wales. Exciting emerging surfer. He's still on the pro junior circuit. Is that correct, Britt? Yeah, he recently turned 18, so wow. still a pro junior, I think. You know, at the moment, before this event, he's sitting, I think, around 48th on the QS series. So I feel like the Pro Juniors is probably still more of a priority for Lennox. Uh, but, I mean, should he get a massive yeah, result exactly. here, it could change, change things. Quick. Here we have a replay. That is our surfer in blue on his backhand. Great couple of turns there. Thanks to Destination New South Wales for the replay. That was... Jiro Nishi from Japan. We'll wait for that number to drop on in. But at the moment, we've got a couple of scores on the board. Axel you called Kuroda. it, Britt. Yep, Axel Kuroda, you called it a big move, and it was a 6.57 for that one move. He backs it up with a 3.5. And uh, Kalani Ball, we saw his uh, opening ride, 6.67. That was a powerful, smooth, well-executed ride. Oni Anwar has the five-point ride. So, and uh, Nishi with a 4.57. So, reasonable start. This looks like Oni. Vertical, powerful move. Beautiful looking wave. Oni couldn't hang on to it. I just feel like there was maybe a bit of indecision there on that last section. It looked yeah. like he wanted to go for the lip line <laughs> and then halfway through thought, oh, no, I'm going to go under the lip. And it didn't work. I feel like... The first move was great. How do you've got the finish on that wave? It would have been a big number as we watched the replay. Beautiful. Opening move, and yeah, just couldn't ride out of that one. Do have the uh, update for our schedule, and it looks like the women are a go-ahead. So women's round of 16 will run today following the men's round of 32. So we have eight heats in this men's round of 32. Then we'll be moving into the women's round of 16. Four heats of them to round out the action here at Avoca. So it'll be a big day, 30 minute heats. As we await um, a decent second score, the surfer in red. Beautiful opening turn, swings there into another one and just rides out of that. Had a low scoring second ride, so I'm pretty sure he'll get rid of that with a 5.57 for Corotta in the red. Oni Anwar scored a 3.57 just for that one move on that last ride. Pity he couldn't ride out of that. It would have been a much bigger score if he had of. I feel like for Axel with that 657, like he got rewarded obviously, but it could have been something that, you know, watching the heats before yours, he would have identified that yep. although Jagger got a highest wave of an 8.5 with 
keeping his board in the water and sticking to the power surfing. I feel like Axel would have identified the fact that Lennox caught two waves in a matter of four or five minutes. And with the air game, yep. the judges can, rewarded it. You can get some uh, fast scores by going to the air Cause I on feel like one manoeuvre. I feel like with going to the air with, say, like one manoeuvre, for example, it's something that the wave selection and the wave quality can maybe be that little bit less of quality, but you can still get a high number. Yep, take off on a closeout. But just make sure you're in the air as it closes <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, not under it. <laughs> we watched some live action in the water. Who have we got? This is Oniyama up and riding, flying down the line, looking for the barrel. And just hops that one to the head. Not going to be the 7.14 that he is chasing for first place. Really no. not much separating second, third, and fourth right now, Robbo. Nothing at all. Oni Anwar is no stranger to barrels. I think he comes from Lakey, Sumbawa, Lakey, yeah, Lakey Peak. Peak. Left and right barrels, 300 days of the year. Barrels for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yes. What a beautiful part of the world to live in. We watch our Japanese competitor. Drifts a tail on the first turn. Can he get up over the second? Guess the lip line finish. Hey, two strong turns there from Nishi in the blue. Our Japanese surfer. We need to see a replay of that because the opening turn was crisp and he's finished off powerfully as well. It's going to be his best wave. And watch this. Whack. Fins out over the lip and timed that perfectly to finish it. I'm really interested in how the judges score this. It's a smaller wave, but precision, powerful, smooth, fast surfing from Nishi in the blue. The critical finish to that wave as well is only looking for a 4.01 at the moment, yeah. but this is the current heat leader, Axel. Our surfer from Northstain gets the completion again. He's wanting to run away with this heat and move on into the round of 16. Well, this is going to tighten up. Nishi is 6.7. 6, 6 Best wave of the heat so far and puts him into second position. So I'm not surprised at that score at all. And that's our heat leader trying to extend his lead. I'm not sure if he will or not. I don't know. 5.57, maybe. But Nishi with a 6.77. So, yeah, there's nothing in this heat at all. The surfer in fourth position holding priority has a 6.67, the second highest scoring ride of the heat. So we know how classy a surfer Kalani Ball is and only requires a 4.68. Oni Anwar, 6.35 is nothing for Oni as well. So plenty of time remaining and it's a tight heat. It is only small scores still required at the moment. Every surfer has one wave under their belt, basically. Yeah, well, Kalani Ball on the black, he's only looking for a 4.68. He does have that 6.67 in his scoreline. He's playing the patient game with just under 17 and a half minutes on the clock. Still plenty of time remaining. remaining. We do have 30 minute heats. So contest directors deciding to give athletes that extra time in the water. Which has really been helping them find that rhythm in the ocean. They might just not get a quick start like Lennox Smith did earlier. It was a bit slow to get moving, but once he got moving, he just started to find that momentum and find that rhythm with the ocean. I feel like it can take a little bit of extra pressure off as well, knowing that at some point in the heat, you will get an opportunity. Exactly. And Kalani Ball sitting with priority right now. He's going to try and use that priority to his best advantage because he's got that one score under his belt has priority, he'll want to choose a good wave. Here he is, that's the man we speak of, Kalani Ball. Huge couple of turns there for the man in the black, the 25 year old from Stanwell Park. He was on the Challenger Series last year. He wants to be there again this year. Yep, there'll be a change of situation here for sure. He is also the defending champ of this event. You watch the replay, Robbo. Sat on priority, beautiful opening turn, and yep, strong, powerful finish rides out of it. I think he'll go to the lead. 
Definitely get rid of that one in your score. And there it is, the highest single wave of this heat so far, a 7-3-3. So judges rewarding that surfing there from Kalani Ball in the black. Goes from fourth straight to first. 15 and a half minutes, he'd be feeling a lot better now, Robbo. Yep, and as we alluded to, he used his priority really smartly. He waited for the right wave and delivered the right score. He's an experienced competitor, almost qualified for the championship tour a few years ago. And um, yeah, he's a great surfer on the Challenger Series last year and wants to be back there. Well, his experience is showing here at the moment at Avoca. I know he's done a lot of work with Mac Riggs over the years. Great person to have in his corner. With who? Mac Riggs. Okay, yep. So, Absolutely. Uh, I know that he has had him in the corner over time. Not sure if he's still working with Matt. But uh, he's certainly an experienced competitor. He knows what it takes to win. Like I said, he is the defending champ of this event. Came close to qualification a couple of years ago. He was on the Challenger last year. Finished 26 on the Challenger Series last year, so I feel like it wasn't the year that he was searching for. But he's got another opportunity here this year, but he's going to have to work his way back. He's sitting 31st on the WSL so he needs some US big results. leg at the moment. So this is a really important event for Kalani. This one and next week in Newcastle. Got some work to do. Well, we've, we have, I guess, witnessed it over the years. Competitors have pulled a rabbit out of the hat in the last event and uh you know someone might come back from the mid 30s and work their way to qualification with one big result to finish off their campaign and that was on Anwar stalling in the barrel <laughs> hoping for something <laughs> incredible to happen but uh it hit the inside sandbank and just shut down on him but uh Oni was looking for a deep barrel ride there and it did not deliver if it had, have, he would have made it. Yeah, it would have been a good score. I feel like there's there's been a few barrels here this morning, but just really tricky to come out of as we watched a replay. He had a great read on it, but just clamped him towards the middle section. Yeah. It's like it, it started a bit bigger and then slowly just faded <laughs> as, as time went on. And then as it hit that inside sandbank, there was never going to be an exit for Oni there, but... He optimistically pulled in, and you could see his tube style. He's no uh, stranger to getting barreled, that's for sure. And Oni's also a great aerial surfer. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him switch tactics from trying to get barreled to trying to get air very shortly. Yeah, and I feel like that is something that he's probably going to have to shift gears with. Um, pretty soon you know there's 12 and a half minutes on the clock i know that we've we've seen the biggest number come from keeping that board in the water with power surfing it was jagger bartholomew locked in that 8.5 but i just feel like oni he's gonna have to recognize that the completion of those barrels isn't that high at the moment and i no. feel like he's probably going to have more of a success rate with his airs well he'll be thinking about it. he's in fourth priority but fortunately he's got plenty of time 12 minutes it's got a five. It's the worst of the uh, single wave scores at the moment, but it can be a reasonable backup score if he gets a good score. The waves are absolutely pumping here at Avoca. But pristine conditions. Look at the water clarity. So blue, so clear. The sun is shining. The waves are pumping. I don't think there's much more we could ask for right now. Oni, what's he going to do? <laughs> Huge turn as he jumps off. I feel like there might have been a water photographer right there. Yep. A tricky one when you've got an obstacle in the water, just not necessarily in the way, but just the distraction. It takes a lot uh. as a surfer to be able to block out distractions like that, even with having a fellow competitor even in front of you or a free surfer. Really got to manage those distractions. Especially if you're going to go to the air. So just watching. Mm. No doubt the beach commentator will be probably having a word to the water photographer. 
One thing to uh, have approval and be out there, but just got to uh, make sure you're not in the way. You got to hit the bottom. Moment just under 11 minutes on the clock. Situation remains the same. Surfer in white, Oni still chasing a 714 to advance. Surfer in blue, Jiro Nishi from Japan chasing a 537. Axel Kuroda in the red in second place from North Stain. He's chasing a 743 for first, and it is Kalani Ball from Stanwell Park sitting in first place with the 667 and 733. This is, of course, the fourth heat of the men's round of 32. We are halfway through this round, eight heats in total, and we've received the word that we will be moving into the women's round of 16 following this men's round. How excited would the Central Coast community be right now with Molly Picklam, number one in the world? It is huge, <laughs> Robbo. I'm sure North Shelley board riders would be cheering about that one, but the whole of the Central, Central Coast, Coast would be going crazy. It wasn't long ago that we had Molly in these events, yep. in this Vista New South Wales Pro Surf Series Two on the Two years QS. ago, she won this event. She won the Pro Junior in, I yep. think, this one as well and you know there was one of the years where she was just qualified for the world tour but was still a junior and now she's wearing the yellow leader jersey as the number one surfer in the world coming back to australia for the two big championship tours events it's just another amazing story and surfing on the central coast of new south wales it's huge it is and i, I feel like a lot of the time the New South Wales crew and, you know, the Central Coast crew and probably all the Australians have known what Molly's capable of. But just to see her on a world stage and not only on that world stage, but really step up to the challenge. And, it's amazing. you know, she's sitting pretty. She's sitting in that in that uh, first place yellow jersey. And what a special feeling. She's not only had it for one event, but she's had it for a couple now. And She you know, survived the Hawaiian <laughs> tour and Portugal and she comes back and her home turf in Australia to... Yeah, she's a world title contender all the way, and she's number one in the world at the moment. So, yep, it's another incredible story. We have a quick Mad Max recap of this heat so far. This is the men's round of 32, heat number four. Thanks to Mad Max, fresh fuel for life. This was Kalani Ball, beautiful first turn, straight up into a second, drifts the tail. Strong, solid surfing there from the man in the black, but answering straight back was Axel Corota. One huge manoeuvre got him a decent number. There's our Japanese surfer, Nishi, and two very slick manoeuvres puts him right in the game. But then Kalani Ball, using priority really smartly, gets a 7.5, takes the lead, and that's why he's in the lead. He's only had two waves, but they've been both really well surfed and uh, great wave selection. Kalani Ball leading, Axel Karada in second. Nishi in third and Oni Anwar in fourth, but well and truly within striking distance. Plenty of time to play out. It shows the maturity in Kalani's approach as well, knowing that he has only had the two waves. It's a half yep. hour heat. Like you could be, you'd be catching everything if you were really in that mindset, but he's playing that patient game. He's being selective. He's using priority well, and you know, it's paying off. Yep, absolutely. You like that experience for Kalani is paramount in this heat because he is up against some pretty heavy hitters when it comes to names in the draw. So Nishi needs a 5.37, and importantly, Nishi has priority. So 5.37 for a surfer like Nishi is nothing. So you've got to think that Axel Karada is going to want to get rid of that 5.57. Oni Anwar chasing a 7.14, well and truly within his game plan. And that could well be an aerial manoeuvre that he'll be looking at. Six and a half minutes remaining. Nishi holding priority. He knows he's going to get that opportunity. Waves are absolutely pumping. This is, of course, our last stop of the Vistla New South Wales Pro Series for 2023. It has been great to have Vistla on board again this year. They have partnered with Surfing New South Wales on the QS events for the past four years. They are an amazing company, doing amazing things. 
around 80% of the Visla product range made of environmentally better materials. They've actually pioneered the use of coconuts into the construction of their board shorts. Using the husk of the coconut, they turn it into a thread, which is then blended with cotton and recycled plastics and turned into board shorts. So you could be walking around with some boardies made out of environmentally friendly materials. If you want to grab a pair of them or any other accessories, clothing items, wetsuits, you name it, they've got it. Be sure to check out Vistla.com or Sister Evolution if you're a female or maybe you're a male wanting to buy something for one of your daughters, friends, family, partner. Check out SisterEvolution.com. They have a full range as well. To Vistla and Sister, these events would, of course, not be possible, nor would this entire Pro Surf series. Yeah, the Vistal brand's been a great uh, story over the last um, half a dozen years in a time of um, huge change in the industry, the surf industry. vistler has been a success story. Yeah, I feel like where a lot of companies potentially buckled over that pandemic mm. period, Vistla, that, you know, they somehow adapted to the situation in the market and, you know, like... It was tough times for everyone and they, they found ways through it. And yep. uh, just to be able to still be supporting events like this... Is incredible. ...is such a massive effort and massive yep. achievement as well. Just under four and a half minutes remaining in this heat. It is still Kalani Ball in first place, thanks to a 7-3-3 and a 6-6-7. It's a great wave selection. And the perfect read on the waves that he's caught as well. Yep, Kalani's in a good position. The rest of them are all in the hunt. Super close between second and third. It is. Moment, Axel Kuroda, the upper hand in the red. He is in second place over the surfer in blue, Kajiro Nishi from Japan. However, the surfer in blue sitting in third place, he is holding first priority meaning that he does have right away to the waves in the lineup. So should he spot something that he wants, he can take off. He's searching for a 5.37. So just under four minutes, three and a half minutes, he'd be starting to get a little bit anxious now. So at some stage, Nishi's going to have to throw the dice. Here we go. Oni Anwar, what's he got for us? frothy wave he's going to want to try and do something big he's looking for speed we know what he's thinking <laughs> and uh, he took to the air but he said nah this is not going to work for me so he's out of there he still has time Oni Anwar has a very good aerial game he'll go out there and chase this 7.17 with one big move that wave too frothy couldn't get the right amount of speed when he did go to the air he knew that he didn't have the power speed or landing to execute it, so he's out of there, but he'll go out there and chase another one. He does have time. He doesn't have to be too selective, because as you pointed out earlier, he can take our, take off on a close out and just go for the one move. So that's a little bit in his favor. But Nishi's the one I'm really interested in, because um, he's such a talented surfer, has priority, has held on to priority for around 10 minutes and now we'll be getting anxious he has to throw the dice on something 5.37 is a reasonable score to get in these conditions we know he's easily capable of doing it but he's going to have to throw that dice very very shortly gonna just he's, he's gonna have to be in rhythm i feel like with oni he's taken off on a couple that probably not going to be, ever be the number that he was searching for but he still had that optimistic view and yes. even on that last one I feel like he recognized early yeah. almost on takeoff that it Should wasn't going to be the, the score that he needed yeah he could have probably saved himself some energy and pulled out of that one early to get himself back in a better position here he goes on the Anwar what's he got for us he's got a great backhand smacks that in the pocket and another one and it's not going to be the 7.14, and Oni will know that. It was nice surfing, but um, it's not a 7.14. Here we go. Okay, this is the one I'm interested in. Nishi in the blue. 
but only the one turn. He threw the dice on a bad wave. One turn's not going to get him the 5.37. We hit our Mad Max minute. Thanks to Mad Max. Fresh fuel for life. Scan that QR code on screen. Grab your two for one burritos. Thanks to Mad Max, partnering with Surfing New South Wales across the New South Wales Pro Surf Series to help share their passion for healthy Mexican food. It is 12 o'clock here in New South Wales. It is lunchtime, so grab your burritos. Thanks to Mad Max tuning in. Simply download the app today and enter the code SURFING, capital S, to redeem that great offer. 15. Hungry, just thinking about it. <laughs> I'll have two today for sure. 15 seconds, so not enough on those last two rides. They were reasonable scores, 4.8 and 4.57, but not enough to get through. Five seconds to go, so I'm confident in saying Kalani Ball and Axel Carotta have advanced through to the final 16. That concludes a men's round of 32, heat number four. We will cut to a short commercial break and join you back here for all the live action of heat number five. Okay, welcome back to Avoca Beach on the beautiful central coast of uh, New South Wales. This is the Central Coast Pro presented by Mad Max. Men's and women's QS 3000 and what a fantastic day, fellow commentator, Adam Hennessy. What's your thoughts on how we're progressing through this? Well, I actually think the waves are pumping. The uh, performance have been world class and uh, this is what it's all about. We are into the into the meat of the sandwich when it comes to uh, this event. And this is where it's like moving day in the golf, you know, it's such an important round, this round of 32. Once you start to establish, you know, those next couple of rounds, you're getting into points, some serious points. And there's so much riding on these performances because they've basically only got this event, which is a 3000, and then you've got Surf Edge, which is a 5000. They're their two opportunities. And I've looked at the rankings, Adam, and I can't, you know, I, I can't predict anything. It's just I, I reckon get down. someone from t as low as 20 could get themselves in, as we see Surfer Arp and right in fluent backhand, crispy attack. So, Powerful yeah. surfing. And on the backhand going left. So they're the opening two rides of the heat, and we'll have scores for those. Oh, look at this thing. Nice ride, just opening up, kicking on out. That was Reef Hazelwood. Okay, so Ryan Slattery, just a 2.67 for his opening ride. Reef, I'm sure, will get a better uh, opening ride and will back it up straight away as well. So he's busy very early. Take off here. Sheldon Simpkis in the red. Oh. And two nice, well-connected moves there from Sheldon. So all these surfers are off to a good start. Surfer in... Rapid fire early, that was Ryan Slattery. So that is a, a good looking series of waves. And these heats, I was just looking through the draw. These heats are so stacked. As we see the destination, New South Wales wave replay up and right in. Reed just exploding, just really unleashing 
a fierce rail game and out the back surfer in red lovely jam into the lip and then into another turn and that was Sheldon Sinkers and then we had Ryan Slattery big turn big turn good I finish I heard you uh, talking with Brett in that last seat where you saw some big numbers for just one turn so interested to see Jay Ocalupo just coming unstuck there so I think it was Axel Crotter in that last seat getting a really good score for just one manoeuvre as we see Reed flight across this way did he just run over his fellow competitor? He said, get out of the way, Sheldon. <laughs> yes. No love lost out there. You're in my road. I'm getting the score. But Reef is very busy. He has a number of wave scores to drop. A 5.33. That was for his opening ride. I think he's going to probably get two better scores than that. And here we go. The Serpent White up and riding. You see just that relax. Oki. Oki way to start this guy is starting to really sort of formulate a solid foundation in the competitive arena and then you have that nice arm maneuver for reef as well so great to see the development of young jay okalupo he's definitely his own man he's uh you know it's sometimes it can be heavy having such a famous name in the sport but i i feel like as a junior he sort of came through the ranks and people are looking at him very much like jagabar following you but yep. he's definitely established himself as a solid you know, surfer and one to watch in the future. And I mean, you're not making around a 32 in big QS as if uh, you haven't got the talent. So, kid's got game, he's got a good rail game, but he's also got that sort of new age kind of flair as well. And that's what I love about Jay surfing. Yep, we've seen him pull some uh, great aerials. And I'll guarantee you, Oki's either at the beach or Oki's watching this online. Someone told me, a little birdie told me one day that Ock is probably the biggest surf fan you'll he, ever see. He, he watches more he watches everything than he watches anyone. It all. And that is it. He loves it. He would have been up all night watching, uh, you know, Portugal the other day. And, but, uh, yeah, he's a surf fanatic. And how good is that when you've got a former world champ yep. who just loves the sport so much? Uh, uh, it's incredible. And I think we've got Kleine Ball down in the post-seat interview area. Barney, congratulations, solid performance, mate. Well done. How are you feeling? Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah, stoked to kind of, I kind of, it was a weird heat, but yeah, stoked to get those two kind of pretty early on. And then, um, yeah, I never really even got back into first prior. So I was just, yeah, pretty lucky to get those first two at the start. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm lucky for me. No one else really got anything after that. Uh, Kalani, you look like you, pl you played a smart heat there. You used your priority really well. Is that, is that part of your strategy, to be very selective and, and get the right waves? Um, yeah, I think with the conditions, the way they are at the moment, it's pretty slow and there's kind of a lot of um, closeouts at the moment with the tide, how it is. So, um, yeah, just anything that can kind of give you two turns, that's what I was looking for. And, yeah, I found those ones pretty early on, which is good. How's the pressure at the moment, Kalani? I mean, everyone everyone at this pointy end of the event, uh, they're, they're dreaming of the Challenger Series. Uh, you've experienced it, you understand it, but there's a lot of pressure. Uh, how, how are you coping with that? Um, yeah, I'm not really feeling any pressure myself at the moment. Um, yeah, so I'm feeling good. Um, there's a lot of guys really close to the, to the bubble of making it. Um, so, yeah, I'm just kind of pretty keen to see how this event and Newcastle goes down and yeah it's going to be an exciting finish either way. Well you're through to the final 16 and uh, we're liking what we see Kalani. Good luck as we progress through this event and uh, we hope we see you in the finals. Yeah cheers mate hopefully I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> Kalani Ball. Well done what a performance yeah he said it was a little bit slow out there a little bit tricky with that changing of the tide and uh, that can happen we spoke about it this morning I I reckon the mid tide is the best tide for the banks out here, and uh, but we did see that that amazing heat with Taku Butler and your man <laughs> Johnny Marama. And they, what, I actually heard you when I was yes. uh, having a break. So what does it stand for? Cheeky. Oh, cheeky. Cheeky. Yes, I had I, I had texts coming in from the Philippines, hand over fist, loving their man, and uh, yep, cheeky. And loving the uh, situation right now is the surfer in black, Reef Hazel, one of the most dynamic athletes in the world, a favourite of so many people. This guy's got so much game. 
And uh, Reef right now with that 5, 3, 3 and a 4.9. He's in the lead. Ryan Slattery in second. Needs a 6, 1, 6 to move up. And for Sheldon, he only needs a 0.57, so he's got the best way of the heat, the 617. Jay Ocalupo locked in a 2.90. You at the Vistler event. You can see the boys a little bit separated on the peak right there. We saw someone getting barrel. I think that was Seldom Sim Simkus getting barreled, and uh, we'll have to have a little look at that one. And there's Jay Ocalupo. Nice cutback. What's he going to do here? Take it to the air, oh. but that uh, wave didn't have the finish that he wanted. The tarmac was not cleared. No, a little bit out of sync, but he's still got plenty of time, and that's the, uh, the positive thing about these 30-minute heats allows yeah, plenty every of time. athlete to have a real crack. So, uh, you know, that frantic nature, we spoke about those 20-minute heats, they can be a little bit frantic. This is more of a strategy game, trying to pick the eyes out of it. I felt like in that last heat, Kalani did exactly like that. Lenny, Lennox Smith did the same thing where they sort of just play the patient game and it paid off. But right now, we're looking at that last score for the surfer in red was a 3.33 Robbo, a nice little backup. And that sort of has consolidated his position, put him up in the second position. And uh, yeah, now it's building a platform, building yep. house, as they say. Massive shout out to Vistler, of course. Around 80% of Vistler's products are environmentally better, made by environmentally better materials. Great to have them involved. They've put us in some really good apparel. You should get onto their website, have a look at it, Vistler.com or SestaEvolution.com and uh, check it out because they are doing amazing things, as we see. This is this aerial move that just did just not. Just came unstuck, yep. Did not happen for Ryung Ryan, as we see Jay. There's so, mu so much time left on these heats that, you know, they're going to get other opportunities. And uh, as I said, having Vistler involved in this series as the major event partner of the New South Wales Pro Surf Series. And intriguingly enough, we were talking about it earlier, Mikey Madonna has bowed out of the event. I know. So that is going to open it up for someone to take that title. Nixie Ryan's still in the event. I think she was leading the women's side of it. I hope that guy down there with the camera has uh, put on a bit of sunscreen because it's yeah. damn hot outside right now. He's got the umbrella for the camera, but what about what for about himself? himself? I know. <laughs> this is not the he's, day to he's be... He's got the uh, TV on his head. It's not the day to be sunning yourself, I tell you. It's a, how beautiful has March been? It's, it's been one hot day after another. It's like... Summer's come a little bit late this year, but yeah, great waves, good conditions. I'm loving the fact that the wind has actually stayed away. I'm hearing tomorrow there could be a little bit of a change up in the wind direction, and and that's why we are going into the round of 16 of the women's. Here we go, surf up and right in, trying to get tube, funneling through and just popping out the doggy door there. So a little bit unclean that end exit, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see like how they it. score it. it he got in there. Well, the weight those scores, Ryan Slattery, it's a 5.44. Beautiful looking wide. Fully barreled. Yeah. But doesn't exit as clean I as you would have liked. The cleanliness of that exit will like, improve yeah. the scoring potential, I think. But it's definitely going to improve his position and uh, get him in a position now where. You know, surfing red is going to be a little bit vulnerable with, with these, you know, 30-minute heats. There's yeah. so much time. It allows everyone to use their priority to their own advantage. And, uh, you know, Kleine Ball said it in He said he felt like he was out of sync when it came to priority the whole heat. So, at times, uh, you know, that allows everyone to free up that little bit more and, and really attack whatever comes their way, so you're not overthinking it. Adam, the end of La Nina, what's it mean for the east coast of Australia, which has enjoyed magnificent surf over the past two years? But is that official? Is that it is, what it's saying? official. Okay. I read it. Okay. Oh. La Nina's finished. Victoria had the worst three years ever. We had the best. That's what I'm saying to you. Maybe it'll be a flip. It's Maybe flip. it might go. It but is flipping. Look, 
To be honest, I... Oh, the last few weeks in Victoria, they've had some magnificent days. I feel like the last 10 years have been strong overall on the East Coast, to be honest. Like, I, don't, I don't remember a period in the early 2000s that I remember it being pretty bad at times, but I feel like we've been pretty blessed with good waves for a long period of time, especially our winter swells in Sydney has been amazing. Oh, I know. The last, the, the last 12 months or even the last 24 months has been incredible, but yet La Nina's finished. And there's a lot of people down on the south coast of Australia celebrating the finish. Wow, <laughs> there you go. What will that provide? And what will that will change for the different, you know, settings around Australia? But yes. yeah, you're right. So you're saying that Vico has had the worst three years. Yep. And we've been blessed with absolutely epic conditions. Okay, that last wave of blue. Yeah, a 4.77. Yeah, well, it's a reasonable score, but it didn't do anything to his actual position on the in the placings. He's still in third position, but now only requires a 4.74 to get up there. That's Sheldon Simpkis in second. Only needs to get rid of a 3.33, so it's close at the moment, and there's work to be done, and here we go. Reef up and right in nice first turn, but yeah, nothing you on the end. See, uh, he looked down the line on that, on that left, and went nah, not like. Here we go, Jay. You can see him setting up. He was looking at that barrel, and again, yeah, it that, wasn't uh, there. Is that photographer in his eye line? <laughs> Have to wait and see, but yeah, not a lot on offer there. So he pulls the eject button, and I think today, you know, with these conditions. There's so many waves coming through that everyone is going to get, you know, allotted and the opportunity to really, un, you know, basically unleash out there. But the thing is, like Clarny said, it was a little bit tricky between the tides. Yeah. It felt like it was a little bit slower compared to some of those early heats where the boys were able to free up. But uh, it's about fighting through the different elements and the different scenarios. And that's what makes a good competitive surfer. You've got to, you know, adjust with the times. Yep. Absolutely. Seems like the paddle out is sort of a, a lot easier than it was this morning. When we first start this morning there with were the close outs. Yeah. You know, there were some big, solid, chunky sets coming through. Now I feel like as that sort of tide has sorted itself out and the morning sickness has gone away, I feel like the uh, the quality of the banks have definitely got better and you can see that just in the in the scores that have been unraveled in the last couple of hours and the westerly wind has picked up and cleaned conditions up it's super clean out there now go. that might open the door for some airs and i still love the fact that uh our philip served from the philippines you know jagged himself that epic barrel that was just Seriously, one from the vault. Up to date, that's the highlight of the day. Yeah, 100%. I'm pretty sure that's the best wave, that single wave so. score of the day. No, 8.77. Just the way that thing opened up. And you, you'd actually spoke about it earlier, about it, uh, what a brilliant surfer he was when it came to reading tubes. Yep. And how comfortable he was yep. in the tube. And... If you go back to a replay, if you're online and you've just joined us, go back and check out that heat with Ski Butler. Yeah, because that, that's uh, that worth was some, watching. That was probably a highlight for me of the whole series, that heat. Along with that heat at Maruba with uh, Dakota Waters and Joel Vaughan. But yeah, yeah, that was a... That was a... I watched that online. That, a heat of consequence. That was... Yeah, that Goodness was a heat me. for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. 12 minutes ago. To speak of um, our surfer from the Philippines, so much on the line for him this year. He's actually looking for Olympic qualification as well to represent the Philippines. Wow. Every chance he'll be representing the Philippines at the Olympics. And talk about tube time. Well, he'll get that at Chopu. Here we have a takeoff. Our surfer in red, Sheldon Simpkis, looking to get rid of that 3.33. Now... Ryan Slattery, a 5.7, has gone to the lead. Yep. So significant changes on the leaderboard at the moment. Slattery in the blue, a 5.7 and a 4.77.
Second now, Reef Hazelwood, only requiring a 5.15 to go back to first. And Sheldon Simpkis has dropped into third position. Has the highest scoring ride of the heat so far, 6.17. Only needs a 4.06 to go to second. Wouldn't need much more than that to go to first. And Jay Ocalupo in fourth. So this is a super close heat. First, second and third is nothing separating them at all with just under 11 minutes remaining. Yeah, this is an important event for a number of reasons for Sheldon Simkus. He needs to get himself out of that situation. He sits at 30th. And uh, to be honest, for someone of his... I uh, oh, know, we, we you know, he should be on the challenger. He, uh, you know, it's surprising he's not at the top of the actual ratings. Oh. But he's got two opportunities still uh, in this heat and he's got Ten and a half minutes to get himself back into that transfer position, but yeah, I, I am pretty shocked that the yeah. fact that he hasn't hasn't really had a breakout performance so far. But there's still opportunity. He's right up there, and uh, he's got two bites at the cherry. He's got this event, then Surface, then you got Reef Hazelwood out there right now. He currently sits in number in position number two. He's had such a solid run. He had a second place in the in Taiwan Open of Surf, and he also had a fifth at the Tweed Coast Pro and a fifth at the Koori Pro. So consistency yep. has been the name of the game when it comes to Reef Hazelwood, and you'd expect nothing less. The guy is a complete machine. <laughs> so easy. He's surfing is so easy in the eye. I, yeah. I love his free surfing. You could sit there and watch it all, all day. Nine and a half to go. This is where it starts to tighten up a bit, Robbo, where they've got to really start to analyse and work out, especially if you're with the priority, you need to make that next jump, you need to make yeah. the next right move. Yep, well, Reef would know. Yep, I've dropped to second position. I only need to get rid of a 4.9. I've got Sheldon Simpka sitting in third right behind me, and he only requires a 4.06. I want to get myself back into the lead. So Hazelwood will look to use that priority smartly. Here we go, Ocalupo in the white. Goes to the air oh. and pulls it off cleanly. Adam, talk to me. Wow. <laughs> that was landed Jay Ocalupo. That was a big air. And what was impressive was the speed he carried through the air maneuver. Look at the speed line. And watch how he just lands this thing so clean. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I reckon that's going to go up into the excellent range. Well, it's game on here. That's for oh, sure. It's just out of nowhere. He had a 2.9 and a 2.43. Languishing in fourth spot, and he's uh, with eight minutes remaining, he's pulled out a wave like that. Jay Ocalupo, something to get excited about. There I'm you go. I said the excellent range, and 8.33. And do you know what I love? He's now giving himself a little bit of space between himself and the three other servers. So Jay's knows what he wants. He wants something to back that eight three out. But look at the speed line. But just look how clean that rotation was. That was the next level. And we spoke about it earlier that as a junior, you know, coming through, he had such a, a solid air game. But he's now got the rail game to go with it. Now he's picked off a nice looking left, digs in and unfortunately comes unstuck. But he only needs to offload a 2.9 Robo to, to extend his position and Ryan Slattery up and right in. That is a nice combo, wow. Wow, so the, the two top seated, sur well the two surfers that we thought oh, no. were going, they're, they're not looking good at the moment. Reef Hazelwood and Sheldon Simpkis have now fallen into third and fourth position. Our white and blue surfers, and I'm pretty sure Ryan Slatter is going to improve on his score as well, potentially go back into the lead, and Ocalupo only has to get rid of a 2.9 with just under seven minutes remaining. Pressure is on Hazelwood and Simpkis in a big way. Watch this wave. I'm impressed with this surfing from Ryan Slatter. He's kept busy the whole time, goes vertical on the last turn, and rides out of it smoothly. Yeah, I bet you uh, I could have... Uh... There you go, back into the lead. 6.43 and a 5.7 for Ryan Slattery in the blue. He leads the heat. 
Jay Ocalupo second, wants to get rid of the 2.9, definitely wants to get rid of that. Anything better than a 3.8 puts him into the lead. Hazelwood and Simpkus, work to be done. 100%, but when you look at the situation, the scenario right now, Reef only needs a 5.91 and, and Sheldon only needs a 5.07. And here we go. Oh, Reef, that was a nasty dismount. But yeah, right now it is up to the surfer in oh. white. He needs to get rid of that 2.9 because that puts him in a very precarious position in the heat. He knows it. But the good thing about it, he's still got five and a half minutes to go and look at the power game of this guy. It's Just a good word. Rapping. Sheldon looking solid. I love that first turn, how much water he dispersed and out the back. Oh, oh, Jay. He's getting excited. Oh, that's what happens when you're uh, on. Yeah. He knows he's got the best wave of the heat by far, and he understands that he cannot allow these other guys to, and he can't leave the door open. No, that's the well, whole 2.9 point. leaves that door open. Simpkis is going to go to second, I say. Lovely first turn, a yeah. little bit of downtime, but then he connected the dots on this final manoeuvre. I think he's going to second. It's in the lap of the judges. Yeah, he only needs a 5.07, so courtesy of that 6.17. Uh, it's going to be right there. And here we go. It looks like this is that replay yeah. of Reef. Unfortunately, can't land that. So a little bit slow on that rotation, but intriguing battle towards the back end of this heat with five minutes or just under five to go. And no. like you said, when you looked at this on paper and you looked at the, the guys who, with the the establishment of their names and what they've done in their careers so far, you'd be thinking that Sheldon and Reef would be hard to beat, but such has been the, uh, the attack of both Ryan and Jay. They've been so impressive. Not enough for Simpkes, a 4.6. He's fallen just short, just short of the mark. So Hazelwood needs a 5.91. Simpkes needs a 5.07. Wow. Hazelwood holds priority now, so here we go. The goofy footer tucking in. There's no escape out of that one. So use priority on that with just under four minutes. That's plenty of time. Yep. But and Jay uh, has first priority now. He's so is he going to play defense or offense? At this stage, I would be suggesting he plays offense and yeah. tries to just Get rid of that 2.9, yep. If he can get like a 4 or even, you know, a 3.9, he's going to go into the lead. So two surfers would then have to jump him. But yep. he doesn't want to leave himself in a position where he opens the door. We've said it before. And uh, he'll be working on making sure that next movement in that rotation on the waves is going to be a positive one for his, you know, his workload when it comes to getting through this heat. So three to go. It is priority out there with the surfer in white. Second priority is with Sheldon Sinkers, who only needs a 5.07. Reef Hazelwood in fourth. He needs a 5.91. And this has been a belter, these heats. And Ryan Slattery, I've got to say, he's ultra impressive. He's just sort of that tradesman-like performance so far in this heat with a 6.43 and a 5.70. He's kept busy the whole heat and built found the waves and built the scores so but yeah it's not over it's no, not definitely. over for any of these four surfers and you see jay right now he's following the surfer in red so for you novice out there watching it just means that the surfer in white has first priority he's identified the fact that he doesn't want to leave the door open for sheldon sinkers in the red so even though you know, he has first priority. He also understands he's got to keep him in his sights to put a little bit more pressure on. Two minutes on the clock. That's enough time. Simpkis chasing a 5.07. Ocalupo defending his second position with a 2.9 in his scoreline. And that can be risky, Robbo, because he might leave, you know, the opportunity for the surfer in black. Who, oh, we, absolutely. You know, Reef, we know... The, the calibre of surfer he is, you do not want to leave that option. Who do you follow? Who do you uh, try and block? I don't know. <laughs> Here we go. Hazelwood, powerful turns. 
Needs a 5.91. He thinks he's got to sell it. Oh, he's trying to sell it. He's a good salesman, but <laughs> I don't know on the not on the uh, surfing because the surfing was pretty dynamic. But yeah, the I just wave, on I know. The, the yep. quality of that wave, I don't know if that's if he did something prior to those couple of turns, maybe. But I don't know about that. I just feel like the size that wave. Here we go. Analyze it. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Yeah, well. He's got a barrel before. This is where we came in. And a beautiful turn there. Oh. I, I actually reckon he's going to get the score. I think he's going to get the score as well. He thinks he's got it. Yeah, we only saw when he exited uh, the barrel. So I'm thinking Reef Hazelwood. Needs a 5 9 Oh, my goodness. Robo. Could this be devastation for the Now, there's um, more waves to come as well. There's only priority with Slattery. Okay. Here we go, Jay. Important ride. Yep, he took priority off him. Used priority. Oh, That's you... incomplete. <laughs> that is. Oh. That is incomplete. That's 20 turn. seconds. We are waiting on an important score to be locked in. What an exciting heat. Reef Hazelwood, the Mad Amazing. Max minute. A Mad Max mad last minute. So you were saying, what do you do? Do you roll the dice yeah. and go at Sheldon or do you go at Reef? He had to make a decision. And unfortunately, but he might get another crack at this. No, that's Ryan Slattery. Yeah. As we count it out, well, it's in the lap of the judges, Demi. Wow, and that was before the buzzer. We'll see what that went into the two-wave rotation for that man. But we are really interested to find out exactly what happened with Reef Hazelwood and that last wave. So we're going to stay and wait for this score because this is an important ride. We know that Jay Okalubo has not improved his situation. You could see Reef like the feel of that wave. We only saw it when it came into that turn, but he definitely got barreled. And, and the it, first turn was really strong. Yeah. But the last two turns, it tapered off. But I, he had a tube as well. So I'm, Yeah, yeah we, I'm, we think he's got it. Yeah, I'm calling he's got the score. Uh, it's the judges that will decide the fate. That's why we're up here and they're <laughs> down in the tent. Working on now, they're probably thinking back to the best way of the heat. They have replays going, everything. Yeah. No, nah, but I'm I'm confident that um, that he's got and the score. There it is again. Yep. He didn't get ultra deep, he but did. he got a clean and watch exit. This. And this turn right there. Yeah. Money turn. Nah. Yeah, he's. I'm he's calling got the he's score. got that. Yep. And still waiting on this score to lock in. So the judges are thinking about it. Yep. And guess oh, what? Here we go. Oh. He did not get it. Wow. Wow. 5.57. Fell short. Well, there's always controversy at these events. <laughs> I'm surprised. But. That's why we're up here. I exactly. And, I and agree with you. And the pros are in the tent. So we'll try to break me back very shortly. You see the disappointment from Reef. Back. Welcome back to the Visla Central Coast Pro 
QS 3000 event down here at beautiful Avoca Beach. The waves are on tap, it's pumping. I'm joined in the booth by my, the, one of the legends of New South Wales surfing in the women's department. What a freak she is. Britt Nicol, welcome back in. And uh, we've seen some amazing action this morning. And this is another heat not to go anywhere. We have four excitement machines in the lineup. I've got the froth meter going at full tilt right now. Okay, we've got Ryan Slattery out there in the uh, post-seat interview area, and Ryan, He's going. congratulations, and uh, that was a stellar Thanks, performance. Mate. You just try to tap into those good waves, and uh, big heat when you consider the other three guys who you had in that heat, so congratulations, mate. How do you feel? Uh, thanks, mate. Yeah, stoked to get through. Um, yeah, it's just luck myself onto the better waves of the heat, and yeah, try not to fall. And yeah, it's not through, so happy. How are the conditions? Did it change much in that half an hour when you're out there? It felt like it slowed up a little bit. It definitely slowed up. I think that tide's pushing in now, so it's going to be a bit slower, I think. But it's like half an hour heats is like at least two solid sets will come through in that time, I feel. But apart from that, sea life out there is terrible. It's crazy. I heard <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. No, you probably see me fidgety here. I'm trying, <laughs> trying not to itch my whole body. But, um, right, yeah, mate, no, it's safe to get through. <laughs> Good ways, but... Mate, round of 16, that's a great performance. You're starting to really build that platform in your career. You're starting to put together solid results. How, what was your yeah. mindset going into 2023? How were you? Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to do the comps, but I've um, seen those swell coming for this one. I tried to enter Cabo late, but it's too far up the alternate list. I wouldn't get in, so... I know, kind of just cruising, just having a week off work, really, and getting through is a bonus, so... Yeah, pretty stoked. Mate, your surfing's been on point, mate. We're going to let you go because you look like you want to get some yeah, water cool. on that body. Get oh, real those sea lights. Man, Congratulations. I'm straight to the chemist. Thanks, mate. See you, mate. <laughs> wow. I've been wondering, why like, he's not the first surfer that's come in and done the post heat interview and look like they've got ants in their pants. Yeah, like, right, I yeah. feel like they've all been fidgety when Ooh. they've come in and now we know why. 100%. Here we go. That is the man from... Byron Bay, Sully Bailey, just lighting that thing up. How good does this guy surf? It's hard to talk when he's surfing because he, you just watch him. He's just got such a great way he attacks each and every wave. You, you probably missed that last heat, but dramatic finish. And the judges are on that last ride for Reef Hazelwood just fell short. I mean, I, I'm not a judge, so that's why... I'm a commentator and they're judging, but I'm sure that he would have been disappointed. And I'm stoked for Jay Ocalupo because he was absolutely ripping in that heat. He just needed to back it up. And talking about ripping, here we go. Solly up and riding. Ward looking nice and spiced up and just connecting the dots as he rides through that first couple of turns. But yeah, some intense battles and so much on the line. Even for Reef, he sits in second position at the moment. And he's still not, you know, no one's safe out there as we see that score lock in. Sully Bailey locks in a 6.33. George Pitter from my hometown in Manly locked in a 4.5. And uh, by the looks of it, that looks like George actually. Hard to tell out there. Yeah, that was Georgie Pitter on the uh, CI. And. Nice connection here too for the surfer in white. So yeah, what a way to uh, kick off moving day here at the Vistler Central Coast Pro. And we've seen some big scores and I mean, it's not funny for Ryan, but for us, we're like, what's he doing in the boat? <laughs> but yeah, he said he's just been gobbled up by the sea lice and to be honest, all on the east coast in the last couple of weeks there's been sea lice everywhere i think it's just that transition through our different like seasons really but yeah i'm sure these guys are focused in you probably see a couple of people out there wearing steamers and wrapping themselves up in glad wrap <laughs> maybe i would <laughs> I mean, interesting tactic, that's for sure. But yeah, like I said before, I, I was wondering why some of them just look so agitated. I thought, because a few of them have come in where they're pulling at their rashies, and I thought, oh, maybe the rashies are too small. And then 
Yeah, sea lice. Mm. They are nasty. They're so itchy. Yeah, that's heavy. So the surfer in white with a 3.9, 3.67. A big shout out to our, our partners as we see the surfer up. This is George Pitter lining this first turn up. Lovely connection with the lip and kicks on out. So it is the Vistler side of the proceedings at the New South Wales Pro Surf Series, the last event of four events on the calendar, presented by Mad Max. And a massive shout out to the Central Coast Council of Oka Beach Hotel, Destination New South Wales, and George Pitter looking very electrified as he went along that way. And of course, without the support of the New South Wales government through its major events, agency Destination New South Wales, we would not be here on this beautiful day. 34 degrees, it is hot outside. And the action in the water is being even hotter. So George Pitter is looking to, uh, you know, for a 1.84, which is nothing, but at the end of the game, I'm thinking that both those scores are gonna probably go south. Or you'd hope so anyway. Oh, for sure. You'd think at this stage in the event, you know, we're into the round of 32. You, you don't want those threes and fours in your scoreline if you're looking to move on through into the round of 16, uh, even just looking at scorelines throughout the event. You know, you, you want sixes and sevens minimum to move yeah. on through, whether that's your high or low scores. I just feel like fours and threes are not going to be there at the end of those surfers who actually progress on through to the next round. You definitely don't want to leave yourself short. We saw Jay Ocalupo in that last heat with a 2.9, and uh, that leave it left him vulnerable as we see the surfer up and right in. Wow. That was a great looking wave. See how I sort of pulled it back a bit? I didn't get <laughs> overexcited. I was gonna I'm, say something. I'm neutral, like I'm neutral, as we see that surfer in white exploding on this left, and that was next level as well. So yeah, crazy surfing. No yeah. bias, but you know, no, like yeah. George. I love Lord the way Stain you look at me, but when George, when I watch, <laughs> I've just got to slow it down. It's okay. You're not a judge, so it doesn't That's right. really matter as much. I do know? get, I do get excited when our guys are surfing, and yeah, it's just all about the passion. You know, you want to see everyone go good, and talking about passion and talking about you know fluency in surfing. That last wave for the surfing white was next level. Here we go, soul. Solly Bailey up and right in. Look at the way he, this guy attacks the waves. He's just absolutely blown up out there right now. I just love how Solly, you know, like he, he just goes straight up into the lip, but he's, he's upside down with those turns. He gets critical, he surfs in the pocket, and well, you know, Solly, he was on, world to, on the world tour. Yep. So he's no stranger to, I feel like, you know, that high level of performance. I there's a, there's a big step up, you know, going onto that world stage from, say, your QS to your challenger to then on the world tour. And, uh, you know, he had a result at the Surfers Rescue, the Port Stevens Pro. Yep. He had a fifth in Krui and Nias. He's sitting 11th at the moment, so he's still got a bit of work to do on the QS series if he's wanting to qualify for that challenger series. I feel like at times that he could go in different directions in his career, like he, he's had a bit of time off, a bit of free surfing, a bit of this, a bit of that. But once he found a result, I feel like the competitive juices were flying. That was, talking about flying, George Pitter's two-turn combo there was pretty amazing to watch. But yeah, I feel like uh, from the standpoint of his competitive uh, act, I felt like those couple of events over sees really relit the fire in Solly and then he was like you know what maybe I'll go down this avenue again it's a long road but to be honest the guy's got so much game here we go surfer up and right in again now going left just exploding through the lip that was George Pitter in the black well he is from North Stain and Dimmy you're also from that area you do a lot of work with the crew in North Stain board riders yeah, let me tell you, this guy has got uh, his development in the last couple of years has been pretty incredible. He had to sort of learn to sort of reset himself. He went through a real growth period. He, his mum and dad are very tall uh, people. And there was always going to be that stage where George went from that little grom to, the, to really having to 
to understand his body and rework his body and, and basically make these adjustments because he grew so quick. And you've got to remember, he had a pretty uh, amazing childhood. He spent most of his childhood uh, surfing at a place called Eritap Resort in Vanuatu. They own a resort over there. It's the most amazing joint. And uh, yeah, so he spent a lot of time in the barrel, learning his craft, surfing with his dad. In fact, he'd say sometimes he'd surf for five hours and then get sort of half bored because he didn't have mates around, so he'd just come in. But, like, he's definitely uh, sharpened up his attack as he's, as he's learnt to develop his skill set when his body grew. And, and that's the thing, you know, that's the thing that's made him the athlete he is now. And he's just now working on more strength and... Uh, working on the sort of that resistance and, and learning to adapt as he grows through his career. Well, and he's going to have to adapt to this situation because he's just been bumped in the third place, Timmy. Look at these scores coming in for everyone. Oh, my God. Wow. How do you have stuck that? I just feel like he got so much rotation, so much whip. So there you go. The wave previous to that one for George Pitter, he got the score required. He got bumped into third place momentarily because the surfer in white locked in a 7.57. But George Pitter, he just locked in another six to move back into second place. Now looking for a 6.84 for the lead because Solly Bailey in the blue managed to lock in a 7.23. This is an extremely close heat with 16 and a half minutes remaining. Kobe Clements in the red yet to take off. And I was going to say, this is the thing. Kobe Clements is such... A gifted athlete as well. He is just plain ice cool out there. And with 30 minute heats, it, it allows those surfers the opportunity to do that. Had this have been a 20 minute heat, different story. <coughs> but with a 30 minute heat, I feel like Kobe, although he's in a combination situation where he does need two scores to progress, there's still plenty of time on the clock. Oh, here we go. To the air. Oh, nearly lands it, but yeah. This heat is so far from not being over, it's incredible because all these surfers are locking in big scores and we saw the surfer in white from Japan, Katasaro, unloading with that 7.57. That is the best wave of the heat so far. Solly Bailey with that 7.23. And when you think of the change up in the banks in the last hour, I feel like all the scores have come on the rights, but the big scores in this heat, the bulk of them, have actually transpired on those lefts. So changing conditions. We've seen some slow heats. We've seen some heats that have just been action-packed. And I feel like this is one of those heats that has offered up a lot. And if you look at it already, we've got three or uh, five scores in the six-plus range. So, yeah, we've got some strong competitors out there, but I feel like the waves are definitely on the improve as that tide starts to filter on in. For sure, do you mean that's one of the reasons why the contest director decided that they, you know, they had the round of 16 on standby for the men's and the women's, and they've they've decided to pull the trigger and go ahead with the women's round of 16, knowing that these conditions are too hard to kind of give up. Oh. And you never know what tomorrow is going to bring. Apparently, there might be a slight wind directional change. Could be a completely different story. So they're going to make the most of the opportunity that they have here this afternoon. As an old salty contest director myself. <laughs> There is an old, there's a saying, never walk away from waves. No matter what you're doing, stay with it. Because you never know what tomorrow brings. And, and when you look at, you know, what we've got on tap here, we've got no wind, the waves are pumping, the surfers are going crazy. Why wouldn't you run into the women's? As we see the boys out there right now, trying to put themselves in position. And look, here we go, the surfer in white only needs a 5.26, that wave running down the uh, the bank there and not offering a lot for Zara from Japan with the 11.472 wave combo. He's looking to offload that 3.9. Solly Bailey out in the lead with a 7.23 and a 6.33. George Pitter needs a 6.84 to go from second to first. Kobe Clements, a little bit of a slow start, but we know what game this guy has from the... Uh, a strong club on the northern beaches. He's from Long Reef Border Riders Club. He has plenty of support. And this is the one for Solly Bailey. Look at how vertical this turn was. Loving it. Judges lapped it up. And this was that incomplete aerial manoeuvre. Had he landed that air, we saw Jay Ocalupo lock in an eight-point plus ride with an air, but 
a clean rotation onto the flats. That would have been a good score for Kobe. So still plenty of time, 13 minutes on the clock. We are in the heat six of the round of 32 at the Visla Central Coast Pro. One of our favourite events on the calendar. Big shout out to Mad Mex, who are the presenting rights sponsor, providing the athletes, the staff, everyone with fresh food, just keeping everyone fueled up. And of course, the Mad Mex Fuel for Life program supports some of Australia's best up and coming athletes, both across the surfing, skateboarding, and motocross genres. So great to have their partnerships with this event. 12 and a half to go, Britt. This is where, at the start of this heat, we were talking how there wouldn't really be threes and fours in the scoreline by the <laughs> end of the heat. And you just look at those totals. We're just over halfway through. And the top two surfers, even almost the top three, if the surfer in white can replace that 3.9... He'll improve on his situation, but he's looking for a 5.26, so not much at this stage. He's got the highest single wave of this heat so far, the surfer in white, but sitting in third place, that is Roy Kanazawa from Japan. Yeah, it's good to see the Japanese contingent in this, and the reason they're here is it's a co-sanctioned event, so these points apply for not only the Aussies, but the international guests as well. A massive shout-out to all our... Uh, Surfing New South Wales staff have done a wonderful job, of course, Rowan and the crew at the events, bringing these world-class events to the fray. And uh, we've had such a, a great run, and it's due to the, uh, you know, the passion and the love that the Surfing New South Wales staff has for this sport, that they've been able to put a team together that produces world-class events. So massive shout-out to those crew. And like I said, we've tapped into some great waves over the course of the last month or so in the Visla New South Wales Pro Surf Series. And we are down to the final event. So one more crack. Who is going to be the, uh, the champion in the men's and women's? It's only time will tell, but we're excited about how good the wave quality has been for all surfers at all these different venues. A, th a big thanks to Visla partnering with Surfing New South Wales on the QS events, as they have done for the last four years. And Visla was voted runner-up in Brand of the Year in the annual Surf and Board Sport Industry Annual Awards announced in November 2021. They are doing amazing things in and out of the water with around 80% of Visla's product range made of environmentally better materials. But in the water, that is Kobe Clements not getting the completion he is going to have to paddle back out and reset because with just over 10 minutes on the clock, he's chasing a combination of 12.83. If you don't quite understand how it works, the highest single wave a surfer can get is a 10-point ride. So you need two waves in your scoreline at the end of the heat. You can only score a maximum of 10 for one wave. So the highest possible two-wave total would be a 20. That's happened a number of times over the course of our, the history of our sport and we actually saw an incredible thing in uh, Portugal the other day where the surfer needed a near point, near perfect right and he actually got a you perfect 10. You Alan switched Robinson. off and went to sleep and it woke came up? up on my phone to be honest. <laughs> I was like, am I dreaming this? <laughs> but I mean, that was definitely opportunity but that thing was an absolute drainer. It was. It was that, Unbelievable. That was watch. like not a wave of like uh, the best wave of the event. That was the best wave of his life. <laughs> yeah, in or out of a competition, had he have taken off on oh, that wave, he would have been happy. 100%. But right now, nine minutes to go, it is starting to get towards the uh, back end of this heat. So surfers are going to have to start thinking about it, trying to generate scores if they're going to get on through. Kobe Clements is in a combo. So he needs to basically start again. He's got a nine-minute heat. He has fourth priority. That is the uh, negative standpoint of Kobe's position in the heat. Solly Bailey out in the lead with first priority. George Pitter in second priority. You can see waves coming through the lineup. And who will be in position for this one? It looks like Solly Bailey's going to roll the dice down the line and a little bit deep on the peak on that one. So. It is going to be priority switching over to the surfer in black, George Pitter from down at Manly and uh, part of the North Stone Board Riders Club. 
People say his name. Everyone has a different sort of way of saying Peter. How is it meant to be pronounced? I call him Peter. So Peter, a, like Peter bread. Yeah, like it's so Australian. It. I've heard some announcers call it, when they announce his voice, it's like, mate, he's not French. <laughs> Maybe they think Peter. he is. <laughs> Here we go, we'll boys getting busy. Team. Looks like someone trying to get Deebies. Oh, he was in that for a long way. And on the other side of it, this could be dangerous because someone went left. Was it the surfer in white? It was. So this is going to be a, a little tricky scenario for the judges to analyse because we had two surfers. George Pitter went a long way in that barrel. And... Canazaro only needs a 5.26. That is right up there. His wave, that 7570 is such a strong score. And I reckon this could be dangerous. It could be, and I tell you what, I'm glad that we're in the booth and not in the judges' booth. 100%. That's a hard job they've got down there, just trying to, you know, separate surfers' scores we as we watch the replay. Split peak here. Look, oh. Lovely first turn. From, oh, wow, he's going to get this score for sure. So I was interested to watch that replay then because I saw the surfer in White's second turn, but I wasn't sure if it was his first or second turn previously. So just off the back of that replay, the surfer in White needs a 5.26. I'm calling that he's got it as well, Dimmy. He couldn't quite get to the last section, but I feel like he got the job done on the first two. They were really solid on a bigger set too. And nice and tight in the power source the judges will lap that up but as i said we're not judges but yeah on when you look at what we've seen in this heat so far a 5.26 on a on a nice set with some flair and unfortunately for george pitter he was absolutely motoring through that tube and you saw the end of his board nearly pop out but unfortunately not to be right there he just couldn't quite get it but well surfer who did just quite get it a 5.67 so surfer in white he got the requirement moves into second place george pitter now in third chasing a 6.52 and this man here kobe clements chasing a combination of two scores just looking to get himself out of combo land now sick the conditions really starting to change i feel like there's more opportunity for those barrels, but they're running off really quick, Dimmy. They are, and that's the risk you take. You know, we've seen a couple of barrels earlier today net some big scores, but I love this. Kobe Clements, nice and patient, comes around, nice carving setup turn, goes to his uh, air game and nice rotation. So that's definitely going to be his best wave, and it's going to break that combination with a couple of minutes to go, with five minutes to go. And that last wave of white was a throwaway. So right now it is game on and no one is safe. And look at those, it's draining out there. But, the, you know, force of habit, when you see a barrel like that, you, you have to have a crack. Because if George Pitter came out of that barrel, that was seriously going to be up there in, you know, in, in the high rotation when it comes to scoring potential. So like that was going to be right up there in the excellent range just under four and a half minutes on the clock at the moment it is solly bailey from byron bay in first place with a 723 and a 633 we have the surfer in white roy kanazawa from japan sitting in second place he's got the highest single wave of this heat so far a 757 and a backup of a 567 george pitter in the black now chasing a 6.52 if he wants to move on through to the round of 16 and Kobe Clements, well, he's back in the game here, Dimmy. Surfer in red, a 6.47 for his last wave. He's now chasing a 6.78 with just under four minutes on the clock. We've watched it go down here a couple of times today where surfers have gone from fourth straight up to first in a matter of five minutes. Exactly. That's what we said with eight to go. He basically had to restart his heat, rethink his strategy. And he's back in the game at 6.47. That's how good he is. He, he just basically went to that, you know, that carving on air and manoeuvre, we've seen it so many times from Kobe. That's why he's so strong on the QS and uh, he's put himself back in the game. So all four surfers aren't safe. Like anything can happen. It's going to really 
be more about what waves they take in the next couple of minutes and what opportunities they have. George Pitter needs a 6.52 and Cody Clements needs a 6.78. When you consider their skill set and their ability to lock in big numbers, that is easily obtainable for someone of, the, of their kind of standard. So it's going to be a great last three minutes. Intriguing how it's going to play out. It is George Pitter, the advantage for the server in black. Even though he's in third, he has the next crack at it. That's important. It is. This is not necessarily the position on the leaderboard that George would have, would have wanted to be sitting in, but he's in the perfect rotation for priority. So he does hold first priority, has right away to anything that comes on through in the next two and a half minutes. So we watch Kobe Clements. Here you go. He's looking for a score, Dimmy. Wow. Great attack. But that wave, he stands up tall. Two turns. I don't know if the... Uh, Judges will throw what he needs, but he's given it a fair crack. And here we go. It looks like Surfer in black up and right in. Point and wave. George Pitter digs in and falls on that final manoeuvre. Is that going to be the difference of getting the score or not? But I love how much he attacked the first two, two turns on that ride. But I feel like he had to finish that. I agree with you, Jimmy. I just feel like he really needed that completion. I'm just trying to think back to the surfer in whites, five, six, seven, two backhand turns, couldn't get a third. George Pitter, as we watch the Destination New South Wales Wave replay, this was the one here from Kobe Clemens. Bit of a check turn to start with, but got a critical finish. But this, massive turns here from George in the black. Love the extension through the body, but I'm not a judge. I'd love to see, uh, you know, a replay of... Solly Bailey 633 because you can compare it and there it is. I don't think it's enough. Or has it come in yet? No, it hasn't come in. But yeah, there it is. A uh, 7.07. So the judges loved it. See, that was my unbiased opinion. <laughs> he got two big, solid, powerful turns in and judges rewarded it. He didn't need the finish. Could only imagine where it would have went. How do you have completed that last turn? What about the body extension through that first manoeuvre? It was just poetry in motion. So this is a great heat. Kobe going for an air, not riding out. So right now, George Pitter goes into uh, first position. Solly Bailey in second. And the surfer from Japan, incredibly, is in third after this performance. Needs a 599 to offset the situation with 30 to go. And we were talking about, you know, that incompletion on that last turn of George Pitter didn't even come into play. The judges lapped up the, the power and the precise nature of those first two turns. Two big, solid turns. Just linked straight one into another as well. There's no downtime between the two turns there from George. He had a great read on the wave and just he held his nerve. He had priority. He knew he had to use it accordingly. And he went straight into first place. I think we all had to hold our nerve. And what a heat that was. Another heat run and one. We're going to be back shortly. Exciting times down here at Avoca Beach for the Vistla Central Coast Pro QS3000 event. We're going to throw up to a break, pay some bills, and we'll be back very shortly.
Welcome back to the Central Coast Pro, the Vistler Central Coast Pro QS3000 event. We are into move-in day at Avoca Beach and the waves are pumping and the performance levels have been turned up a notch in the box with Rit Nickel right now and that was the exciting finish for everyone down at North St. Borders because their boy, George Pitter, got the job done, came from uh, the clouds in what was a, a pretty frantic heat when it came to quality of waves. It wasn't only George Pitter in the water holding his nerve, but you were holding your nerve here in the commentary booth, Dimmy. You were on the edge of your seat. I was losing it. But, uh, yeah, George Pitter getting the score required in the last minute or two. Went straight from third to first, 7.07 .07 off the back of two really solid, powerful turns on his back end. Talking of George Pitter and holding his nerve, he certainly did that down in the uh, post interview area. Welcome in, Georgie. Uh, I'll, I need to have a break after that one, but congratulations, buddy. Job done. Oh, far out. That was a full heart attack. I thought I thought I was done for sure, but um, no, I got that. I saw the left coming. I was like, oh, I saw Roy had got one beforehand. He'd just gone bird on it. I was like, oh, if I can just get two in, maybe I could get the score. Because I was like, maybe it's better than my second six. But yeah, so happy to get through that. I was so nervous. Were you, were you worried when you fell on that last one? Were you like, oh, I've sort of left the door open? Yeah, well, I was like, I mean, the strength I'm, of the uh, first two turns were good. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't really know what they looked like. But I was like, oh, my God, I just fell on that. And I've just got knocked. And I was just spewing. But no, I managed to. I was, I, I was just splashing the water out the back when I got it because I was just felt like I really needed that one. Talk me through the uh, the barrel mate. You were very close to exiting that barrel. How did that that tube feel? Yeah well I was actually when I was paddling to it Roy was going to the left and I was like oh I should block him which and I didn't but I probably should have but then I was like oh this ride's a full keg and I was like I want to pull in so I pulled in and I probably should have doggy doored, but I got a little bit greedy and kept going. But yeah, I, uh, it would have been nice to come out, but I didn't. Mate, it's, it's moments like these that make careers. In events like this, when you need points, you need to sort of, you know, certify exactly where you are. How much confidence will you take into the next round, knowing that, you know, you had a strong heat and you had to fight back? Yeah, definitely like trying. There's, these two last comps are pretty big for me. Like I'm. I've got some all right results, but I haven't really got anything great yet. And um, so, but I'm trying not to really think about that. I'm just trying to get good surfing done and surf competitively. But definitely those heats where you're behind the eight ball at the end, there's like a few minutes left and needing like a pretty solid score. To, to get that score, it's like a massive confidence booster. So yeah, hopefully just carry that sort of momentum and just through the next round. But yeah, we'll see how we go. Okay. Well, congratulations, buddy. I'm going to have to have a Bex and a lie down after that. But, yeah, stoked for you and uh, all the best moving forward in this event. Cheers, Dim. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, buddy. Yeah, no, yeah, like he said, you know, he felt like he was gone. And he didn't know if that score was the score. Like, he, he, he said he was splashing water. He didn't know if he left the door open. But, uh, but you know, on the strength, he deserved the score. When you look at the, the you know, the... The nature of those two turns, the extension I felt on that first turn was just absolutely next level. So even though, you know, I'm in his corner, I, I you didn't also... You did think he got the score, though. No, I know. <laughs> I was worried. <laughs> I was hoping he got the score, but I was worried because of the fact that, you know, you never want to leave the door open when it comes to judging. He said that. Yeah. You know, if he'd nailed that last turn, he knew he'd got the score. But good on him, and, and I just don't think it's going to take much for him to break through like he said as we see the surfer in green just unloading on his back end but yeah to break through that mold of getting some results and and then claiming the victory and look at this thing surfer in white that's saxon reba up and right in <laughs> no bias lovely, there either is there jimmy lovely uh barrel saxon reba what a day Another surfer Great from day to be at work. North Stain Board Riders. This is what happened during that post heat interview. Look at this. Heaps of action out the front here at Avoca. And it was all happening while we were listening to that interview. I, I saw this one out of the corner of my eye. Two strong turns here from the man in the white. Well, he's, I, I will say it, his backhand is starting to uh, 
really be one of the stronger points of his attack when it comes to, you know, putting together a solid heat. But look at this heat. We have Glenn Micro Hall, just that veteran, one of the, one of the best, not only competitive surfers to come out of Australia, but now probably the number one uh, coach in the world. And when you look at the stable of surfers he's put together and the success he's had over a period of time with the likes of the Wrights and, uh, and Matty Wilco, Molly Picklin, it's just an endless line of surfers who have uh, gone under his tutelage and come out the better for it and that's a you know a great indication of what he brings the knowledge of his surfing and every year he seems to roll himself in this <laughs> event and everyone's like oh god a micro again yeah it's always micro isn't it he's uh even just watching that wave that he caught then he's still so crisp and fresh he surfs so well as we watch the destination new south wales wave replay this is the man we're talking of here beautiful first turn just throwing everything into it, gets a second connection and can't quite get the third. I remember Micro, one of the first times I laid eyes on him on the QS was when he just came out of juniors and he it was at Surfest and he literally surfed through about eight or nine heats. And you just knew how, how solid his base was as we see the surfer in black up and riding. But yeah, he had just had a unique ability to just Find the best waves, and it was like he, his strategy, strategies were so clicked in and so locked in that he was he was always on the good ones. And I think that's transferred over to his uh, ability when it comes to motivational stuff and and working through you know with the best surfers in the world. Because technically the surfers are are on point. It's more about what's between the ears when it comes to our. Uh, that level of surfing and I think that micro has really as I said laid the platform and here we go heat leader Saxon Reba up and riding nice first turn releasing the tail on that second turn he has a solid base to work with right now he has a 6.83 and a 5.83 and talking about someone who has utilized the momentum of of his performances to his advantage I feel like he's had a breakout season. He's won a pro junior, where last year he had multiple finals, but he couldn't break through that barrier. Now he's taken that into his uh, QS campaign. He's coming away with some nice results. And look, here we go, Micro up and right in, just flaring up, just showing everyone that age is no barrier. Yeah, Glenn Micro Hall is 41. He's showing us that he's still got it here, Dimmy. He, uh... 100%. You are talking before about all the coaching that he does and, you know, at that level, like you said, they, they can all surf. They're all professional surfers and the talent's there, but like, the, what's between the he ears is such a massive thing. And I think for Micro as well, having someone like him in their corner is such a benefit. Like he's someone that's been on the world tour, knows what that experience is like, but then he's also fought his way back as well. You know, he qualified at you know, a relatively older age compared to most. He's one of the but then he fell dudes. off to he fell off tour. He you know, he had a back injury and then an ankle injury and he didn't get a wild card spot for the year after and he had to fight his way back and he managed to get himself back on tour before retiring. And I just think having that resilience through injury and also the resilience to actually go, you know what, I still want this. Here we go, Saxon Reva, vertical first turn in on another one. Oh and looking very switched on in this heat. And you were saying about Micro, that was the thing about his career, the longevity of his career and his ability to fight back from these things that would sometimes mentally break someone down. He, he always had that positive attitude and he believed in his talent. And I felt like there was a point where he could have just gone, you know what, I'm done. And talking about good looking waves, this way, that first turn underneath the lip just connected again with a second maneuver but yeah i love the fact that he fought back and i feel like his surfers like the molly picklins of the world feed off that energy with micro and i've said it before like biomechanically you know those elite athletes are at the top of the tree because of what they have their skill set so sometimes just having that extra set of eyes that come in influence when you might be under a little bit of a uh, you know, physical and mental stress, and Micro's the king of that. But the great thing about Micro too, he works a lot with juniors, 
and, and he's bringing a lot of people through that micro academy. So it's great to see him, you know, showcase his skill set. And right now he's in second. Here we go. The Crow. Up and riding. Like a fine wine. Gets better with age. <laughs> that he does well. Saxon Reba in the white, a 7.5. Last of Saxon. He is in first place and he's extended that lead to solid, critical backhand turns. Great first turn straight into a vertical second and got rewarded with a 7.5. So Surfering White now in first place. Red in second. Glenn Hall now chasing an almost perfect number. A 9.16 will take him to first. The surfer in black. Array chasing a 4.75 and Tash Stokes in the blue chasing a 4.78. So at this stage in the heat with 17 and a half minutes remaining, it's really a battle for second place, Dimmy. At this stage, but these guys are so well equipped. Uh, Hiroto and, and you've got to remember, Taj Stokes has been the man when it came the, to these series of events in Australia. He's impressed so many people, as has this young guy from Manly. And uh, as, I've, as I said, he's, uh, knowing Saxon the way I do, I feel like the confidence he's uh, generated from his progression through the juniors has done a lot, I think. And I also think, you know, the fact that he got a crack at the World Junior Championships and got a ninth, and along the way beat Joel Vaughan, I think it proved to himself that he's, you know, without doubt, his ability level. So right now he's in the lead with a 7.5 and a 6.83, and he is now just out there without priorities, <laughs> having a bit of fun, but yeah, both St Taj and Hiroto have still got so much to offer. Here we go. Look at that first turn, dynamic. In on another turn, just pushing a lot of water, the Japanese surfer. And again, that is nice fluency in his surfing. Was that a mini sort of <laughs> claim on that one? But yeah. Okay, so that will be interesting. So we had Micro coming from the left side of the peak and the Japanese surfer Hiroto on the right. A scenario with uh, an interference in that situation, you have to impede the scoring potential of your uh, fellow competitor. So we'll have to see how that unfolded. But yeah, I love the connection with the lip, the fluency of that wave, and I feel like that's easily going to get the score required. He needs a 4.75. And Taj Stokes, who has been the most incredibly uh, gifted wave magnet <laughs> of this series. I've felt like in the, the three events prior, as we see Micro getting barreled. Yeah, and here we go, the surfer up. Roto, nice first jam. Comes around again, just connecting the dots. And uh, different kind of scope when it comes to wave and what they did on their wave. Micro in the tube and the Japanese surfer just unloading. So, and talking about unloading, this guy. So impressed by what he's brought to the game during the course of this New South Wales Bisla Pro Surf Series. And I felt like every heat he's been in he's nearly been on the best two waves look at this thing you have to make that decision and do i have a crack at that first turn or will i ride the tube he went for the tube and he executed nicely so it's going to put him back in the game so it's as i said saxon river is not safe in this heat the caliber of surfer he's up against they know they can drop big numbers and look at that that last wave of the surfer in black was a 7.10 so the Japanese server fighting hard to get himself back into second position. Michael Hall locked in a 5.17. And Taj Stokes, I think Britt is waiting for a score. Yes, yeah, so the surfer in blue, Taj Stokes, he's chasing a 7-1-3. Whether or not that last wave will be enough. He had a great read on that barrel. I feel like he, it kind of just allowed him to do that. Like the wave kind of set himself up for it. Like he, I, what am I trying to say? I'm like, he almost didn't have to work that hard to get no. barreled just then. There was no stalling. Was lot, it just kind of yeah. was there. It, it was positioned 
perfectly in front of him. He Here gets a 5.2. Stephen White, current heat leader up again. Flying down the line, into it, and that wave, you can see there was a lot of speed down the line on that wave, and it didn't allow him to really attack. But yeah, I felt like there was a lot of risk if Taj tried to do that turn at the start of that wave. So he elected to go to the tube. We'll see what the judges think as we see Saxon up and right in once more. And nothing ventured, nothing game for the Serpent White there. He's trying to offload a 6.83. He has a 7.5 and a 6.83. That is his position in the heat. And right now, still the Serpent Black still needs a 7.24. So he's established a really solid lead. Has Saxon Mariba, and right now it is up to Glenn Hall and Taj Stokes to get a score locked in. They need a score in that six-point range, and when you consider the quality of the waves on offer, that's right in their, uh, in the ballpark for it those two guys. It is highly achievable for both of those surfers. The last and blue, Taj Stokes, a 5.2. Great surfing. I just feel like there's potential to kind of get a bit deeper in that barrel before going into those two turns. I liked how he actually placed the second turn. He laid right. into it, but didn't didn't carve down too much to where he would have lost speed and then lost kind of the wave in front of him. He, yeah. he read that perfectly. Here we go. Looks like someone having a look at his Saxon Reaver. Tucks under the lip of this wave, gets in the tube, gets a nice clean entrance out of there. And you can see Micro also on that wave too. So the guys separated by quite a bit of difference. What about the last heat of this round? Billy Stem and the Kiwi taking on Kai Martin. Alistair Reginato and Joel Vaughan. That could easily be a final. All these heats could be finals. So we'll see what the judges think of that last ride of Saxon and Micro. Is it going to be enough to turn the tide for the Crow? Here we go. Saxon just lines up this tube. Nice little e exit out of there and leans into a drop wallet. Probably mean watching Dayan Neve do that over the course of his life, and Micro, nice attack. Wow, that was some good turns from the Crow. Judges have their work cut out. We are down to the final 11 minutes. And we're gonna roll through to the uh, round of 16 for the women. As we said before, why there's waves on offer, you do not go anywhere because that is the nature of our sport. Things can change dramatically and uh, I feel like the scoring potential is up there in the excellent range for these surfers. So why not just hang around? Don't go anywhere. We're going to be here. We're if excited. anything, I feel like the conditions have actually improved throughout the day and it's actually getting better as the afternoon goes on. So good call there from the contest directors to continue running. They are, of course, 30-minute heats. Yep. Allowing Plenty surfers of opportunity. the extra opportunity, extra time. It's... A good thing if you're on the right side of that time. It can, it can be a <laughs> it can negative. It can work against you sometimes. It can work against you. But I feel like, uh, you know, the quality of the surfing has come to the fore today. And, and allowing that little bit extra time, that extra 10 minutes, I feel like has opened it up to uh, surfing at the highest level. And we've seen it through the course of the day in the men's and the women's. And we're going to roll into the round of 16. We are flying through this event but there is such an important element to the event as well when it comes to qualification. These men and women have trained so hard in the off season to get to a point to put themselves in a position to qualify for the challenger and why it's fun and games in the commentary box, there's so much riding on results and you feel for the surface as, as, as such, it can be such an amazing sport, but it can also be such an isolated sport for an athlete and uh, mentally you just got to keep yourself in tune and that's what I love about the sport it's you're at the element of the ocean nature so many things have to go your way to succeed in professional surfing and that's what makes it such a unique landscape it is. There's so many factors that come into it. You know, you're not only competing against yourself and another competitor, but you're competing against the ocean. And look at that thing there for Tash Stokes, oh. not able to get out of it. That was a cabin. It is starting to pump here at Avoca for the Vistler Central Coast Pro QS 3000 presented by Mad Max. Anything I haven't seen today is a broken board. Have you? 
No, not yet, which is surprising. This is unusual. I feel like in these <laughs> conditions, it's definitely something that would normally be happening. Yeah, eight minutes to go. Saxon Reba in the lead, 14.332 wave combination. I'm sure that all the Reba's will be out there watching. Uh, comes from a very uh, solid foundation. His dad was actually a really good rugby player, played sevens. And, uh, and his uncle actually was a NRL player, so played for the Bears. So a big shout out to the Reba family. I know the old man probably won't be online. He gets a little bit too nervous watching his son, as a lot of the uh, fathers do, because they're so invested in their careers. As we see Saxon flying down the line, kicking out. But yeah, uh, massive shout out to everyone online as we see the crow coming through that little frothy monster, leans in to a nice forehand turn, the goofy footer. And you can just see Saxon just keeping nice and busy. So, yeah, it's a cracker day, moving day out of Oka Beach, the WSL event. We're going to be rounding out the series. Incredible how quick this year has gone. But, yeah, rounding out next week at Surf Fest. I spoke to Warren Smith the other day and Wazza was saying that, you know, he's so excited to see what happens in that event. Traditionally, they'll get surfers who normally don't do QSs come up and be a part of it because it's such a unique, iconic event. And when you look at the honours roll that have won that event in itself, in its own right, it's uh, a great way to finish. But right now, this Vistler New South Wales Pro Surf Series, it has been on fire. The surfing's been world class. And we have got a couple of days of competition Big shout out to all the staff at Visla and Sister Evolution for bringing this event and this series together over a long period of time. They've been real supporters of Surfing New South Wales. And it goes back to our, our great mate, John Shamuka, and uh, forever will be missed. And, and uh, great to uh, you know, have a legacy that, that Shmu left. Just an icon of the sport and uh, a mentor to myself and you. And, uh, you know, I remember some of the best times we had with Shmoo were at, was at this event at Avoca, funny times. And uh, yeah, it's great, as I said, to have John Mossop and the crew as a part of this event. And traditionally, I feel like we've always sort of scored good waves here. We have, it's just one of those, I feel like one of those events where consistently it's always good like obviously it's not like this all year round i'm sure the Can't central be. coast probably tell us that it is but uh or maybe it isn't Who knows? But, uh, it is absolutely pumping right now we have scored again here this year big turn there from the surfer in black that's her road to arrive from japan lays into the last section gets the completion looks back at the beach sort of looking around going was that the number I remember seeing him in the uh, World Juniors. This guy's got such a s solid base. I feel like the Japanese, they, when, when they come to Australia, they're, they're, every year you see a new one pop from the pack. We saw Oroto Ohara back in the day. He's still right there. And, but this guy as well, he, uh, he was one of the ones that, that you sort of identified from a young age as we see Saxon in a good-looking oh. wave. What about that jam? unloading on that second manoeuvre and kicking out. So another two-turn combo. But yeah, the Japanese contingent, this means a lot to them as well. We're, we're talking about the qualification for the Aussies. Well, they are looking to qualify through their region. And look at this lovely surfing. He's got such a great low centre of, you know, his stance is so solid. I feel like that's a commonality between a lot of the Japanese competitors and Japanese surfers in general um, is that they do seem to have that low center 100%. and they've got so much stability through their legs yep. and they're so they're, they're pretty calculated with their technique I feel I think they're just so disciplined I think technically that might come from the quality of waves in Japan it's a little bit different to our landscape uh, so having that low center of gravity that base Gives them a good foundation as we see someone having a crack at this. Here we go. Targe totes in a drainer. Still going. Oh, 
He was so close to riding out then. And here we go. It looks like Glenn Michael Hall up and riding, exploding through the lip, releasing the tail. That is new age surfing from the crow, but only one turn. And then Saxon Reaver flying down the line. He looks like he wants to go to the air, but pulls out. So that last wave, slowly but surely, the surfer from Japan is starting to like squeeze the life out of third and fourth in this heat. So he has now put it to a situation where Taj needs an 8.97 and Micro needs an 8.20. So slowly and surely he's built house to put more pressure on third and fourth. But I feel like this was going to be a big score if he actually came out clean. He just got clipped at the end there, which was unfortunate for Taj Stokes. He had a great read on it. it just, I wanted to see him come out of that, Dimmy. That would have made it a little bit interesting and got the, uh, the juices flowing for both Hiroto and Saxon when it came to uh, where they stood because we've spoke about it. His uh, run through the QS in 2023 has been nothing but extraordinary. He's just been... It's just the way he's gone about it for me. I've watched Taj and just gone, wow, he is just in such great rhythm with the ocean. And, and to be honest, like, it's a tough ass to beat him in any conditions, especially this year with what he's brought to the table. Right now, it is the surfer in black with first priority. Saxon Reba with second priority. You can see him just out on the far right-hand side of your screen there. He's identified he wants one of these rides. And right now, Hiroto is playing defense. And, and with priority, it's sometimes what you don't do more than what you do. So you can actually use it as a blocking mechanism. He doesn't have to get a score. It's the other two surfers who need another opportunity. But it can be a little bit tricky at times to try and identify what you should be, you know, working with. And they'll try to sell you. Glenn Micro, oh, what, mate. <laughs> He's old school. He, he could sell ice to the Eskimos. <laughs> he could bluff you into anything. Crow. <laughs> well, at the moment, he's searching for an 8.2 if he's wanting to move on through to the round of 16. As we hit the Mad Max minute, it is well and truly lunchtime here. So be sure to scan the QR code on screen. Grab your two-for-one burritos thanks to Mad Max partnering with Surfing New South Wales across the entire Pro Surf Series to help share their passion for healthy Mexican food. If you're tuning into the broadcast, be sure to scan the QR code, download the app, and enter the code SURFING, the capital S, to redeem the offer. Live action in the water. Here's Taj Stokes, last opportunity, chasing an 897. Little cover-up to start with, but that's not going to be the number that he's searching for. Moment. Will there be another opportunity for Glenn Hall? I feel like that was the last one there for Taj Stokes. So we look to conclude the men's round of 32, heat number seven. Saxon Reba moving on through with Hiroto Arai. Unfortunately bowing out Glenn Hall and Taj Stokes. We'll cut to a short commercial break and join you back here for all the live action of heat number eight. motivation.
To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. And most of all, to feel new again. Welcome back to Avoca Beach for all the live action of the Visla Central Coast Pro QS3000 presented by Mad Mex. This is our final stop of the Visla New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2023. We are into the final heat of the men's round of 32, heat number eight. Water, we have Billy Stammen, Cal Martin. Alistair Reginato and Joel Vaughan. So another exciting matchup between these four competitors. Have a stunning day here at Avoca. Conditions have just continued to improve throughout the day. Had a bit of lump and bump on the face, on the face this morning, but it's really started to smooth out as the day has continued. The sun is shining, the water is blue, the clarity's there, and well, the waves are pumping. It is just getting better and we've decided that we're going to go ahead and move into the women's round of 16 to finish off today we watch live action in the water my name is Britt Nicol joined back in the booth with Steve Robertson and Robbo what a match up we've got on our hands and what a day it's been up to date it's just been fantastic and super clean conditions no sea breeze it's as good as it gets I honestly don't think we could ask for much more right now it is pumping yep Look at these waves and look at this heat. Um, another stacked heat. Kian Martin comes from Bali and um, he's over here for this dual sanctioned event as well. So, and here's our man Alistair Reginato who's had such a good season to date, has really stepped up, uh, stepped up his performance levels and excited to see how he performs here and into the next event and if he can qualify for the challenger like all these surfers joel vaughan the last time i saw him was at uh maruba in that semi-final which was amazing yeah vaughan he's been around for a while he's still quite young he's only 19 but he's just wow. a competitor that is so good at what he does so we watch the destination new south wales wave replay this is the heat so far while we're in that short commercial break on screen, that is Billy Stammen from New Zealand. A good opening wave here for the surfer in red. Just a quick start there. We had an answer back from the surfer in the blue. Belts that second section straight into a third. That's Kian Martin. Yep, this is going to be close. Wow. I feel like this is the best wave of the exchange so far. Alistair Reginato from the Sunshine Coast. Powerful, critical, vertical moves from Reginato. And Joel Vaughan, oh, well, wow. he answered straight back. <laughs> You'd call in the local here. He's from the Central Coast. Oh. Surfs for North Shelley board riders just up the road. Alistair Reginato, talk about a quick start to put some numbers on the board, Robbo. Yeah, well, look at the waves. Can't pass up on taking off on any of these. And with 30 minute beats, yeah. there's so much time on the clock. And the judges have their work cut out with all those waves being ridden. They haven't posted their scores. They've got to compare all those waves, discuss them, get them in the right order. Okay, they've opened a score up for Billy Stammen to 5.17. Scores are dropping fast. Um, Keon Martin scored a 4.5 and Wow. This is what happened during our other replay. Just a quick one there for the surfer in blue, Kian Martin. Born in Sweden, raised in Indonesia. That's correct. And he's done a lot of surfing in Indi Lives in Bali. Has done a lot of surfing on the Asian circuit over the past few years and uh, consistently makes the semi-finals and finals. And yeah, he's a real talent and another very young surfer as well. He's sitting fifth on the Asian regional series at the okay, moment. Okay, right. Looking for a good result here. As with this surfer here, Alistair Reginato from Alexander Headland on the Sunshine Coast. He's sitting seventh on the Australia Oceanic regional series. Billy Stammen sitting fourth and well, Joel Vaughan. 
such a savvy competitor, but he's sitting 24th at the moment on the QS leg. That's interesting. Yep. So he, he'd be keen not just to get through this for his own rankings, but he'd be keen to knock out either Billy Stammen or Reginato so that uh, it, it uh, narrows the gap for him to try and qualify. And nice surfing off the tail. A lot of scores to come in, but as you pointed out, you felt that Reginato had the best of it, a 7.67. Talking about getting the best of it, a surfer that was in form in that last heat, Saxon Reba, you absolutely smashed it. How are you feeling? Good, thank you. Hey, Saxon, you've had a fair right, bit of experience the boys leading... behind you. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, um, you've had a fair bit of experience leading into this event. I know that you're still a pro junior. You're doing well on that rankings. You've had a couple of wins. Is that something that you've been able to tap into and build your confidence levels moving into the QS? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Definitely gives you a bit of confidence and hopefully a bit of momentum. But um, there are a lot of different people and... Uh, I don't know. It's like, yeah, it's like going for high school. So you kind of got to change... Saxton, you've had a few good good results. All right, we'll come back to that shortly. Yeah, we've just experienced some technical difficulties. I'm sure we'll fix that post heat interviewed area shortly. But live action in the water. That's Joel Vaughan goes up and can't stick the landing. But I tell you what, Joel Vaughan in the black. He's locked in an 8.17, backed it up with a 6.43, and has shot him straight on into first place. Alistair Reginato in the white, now in second place, closely following with a 7.67 and a 6.63. He's now chasing a 6.94 for first. But Kian Martin in the blue, Billy Stammen in the red. Well, they're put in a tricky situation, Robbo, chasing an excellent numbers, almost perfect. Wow, what a start from Vaughan and Reginato. Um, big scores, and they've got backup scores as well. But um, that's indicative of the quality of waves that are out there. So I guess uh, for Billy and Kian Martin, it may seem like a big ask, but there's good waves out there and there's plenty of time. So they can get rid of the, two, the scores they've got on the scoreboard and chase down 14.6 and 14.3 tallies for sure. We watched Joel Vaughan. Huge, yeah, massive. I just felt the rotation. He was so quick. He And his success rate is sensational. I um, mean, that semi-final, he surfed, um, I think it was at Maroubra. Uh, he pulled off everything. And that was a spectacular heat that we watched in Maroubra with Joel Vaughan. But, well, we've been informed that we have Saxon back down there ready to go. Saxon, can you pick up where we left off? Yeah, yeah, got you guys good. Uh, I forgot the question there, sorry. <laughs> no, that's fair enough. Saxon, you've been doing quite well these last uh, yeah, last few events and into this event. Um, how are you feeling about your surfing and um, where you're at and what you want to achieve over the next few weeks? Yeah, feeling good. Just feeling a, feeling a bit of confidence, you know. Just when you make heats, it grows your confidence, momentum, so... That's the goal, just to make heats, just surf, and hopefully that, that does the rest for me. Hey, Saxon, I know, like I mentioned before, I know you're a pro junior. You're obviously in the QS right now. What, where's your focus for 2023? Are you looking to qualify for the Challenger Series, or is this more of an experience play for you? A uh, bit of both, definitely, but I guess uh, I try not to focus on the rankings and the, and the numbers too much. Then I get caught up in that. I'd rather just try and try and surf and do my own thing and then hopefully that just all pays off. And Saxon, it looks to us uh, commentating that all these heats seem really stacked. Um, what's it like as a surfer, you know, at this pointy end? Is it just uh, high pressure all the way? Oh, 100%. There's never easy heats, so you always kind of go be on your game and it's pretty hard, so you just try and, try and surf your own heat. You can't control what they do. Okay, well, um, you're surfing a good game at the moment and uh, we'll let you get ready for your next round. Well done and good luck Thank as you. you go forward in this event. <laughs> we'll let Thank you Saxon very much. eat that Thank Mad you. Max burrito. Mad Max, that's uh, 
way better than talking to us, get stuck into that. And look at this surfer, Joel Vaughan. He is on fire in this heat. 8.93 and 8.17. And it's a lot to do with how successful he is with his aerial moves. On screen there, scan that QR code, grab your two-for-one burritos. We just saw the burrito come on screen a minute ago for Saxon Reba, but you can grab one yourself or grab two. Live action in the water, Kiar Martin. He goes to the air. Can he stick it? He's got wow. the landing there, Robbo. That was and good. Still got another section ahead. <laughs> yep, I, I've seen Kian a lot in Asia, and I've seen his air game over there, and, yep, he's brought it to the table now. He realises he's got to get busy and go for the critical moves to get himself back into this heat. He's not out of it by any means because the waves are good and he does have that air game and he's bringing it into play. Let's look at this. You could see strategy. This is the replay of Billy Stammen, the competitor from New Zealand. He is an Olympian. Cracks the last section. Here Martin in the blue answered straight back. He saw the section and well, he didn't hold back. Wow. Okay, so scores will come in and put him back in the game. What a heat we have on our hands here, Robbo. There's still 17 minutes on the clock, and look at the numbers already locked in. Yep. Billy Stammons posted a 6.93, so he's up the ante, and he's getting himself back into the game. He needs a 7.38 to try and get to second. You would imagine Joel Vaughan's feeling pretty good about himself with an 8.93 and an 8.17, but that can change. Reginato, 7.67 and a 6.63. He'll want to get rid of that 6.63. And Kian Martin, an 8.23 for that last ride. So it's well rewarded. It's the second best wave of the heat so far. So Kian Martin's put himself right back in contention. Only needs a 6.07. So just when you thought these two were running away, uh, Stammen and Martin have come right back into it. Things are heating up, not just on the beach, but in the water. Look at the scoreline between these four competitors. Fourth place, a total of 12.1. Now, that would be normally pretty close to enough. You It'd get be a respectable at least score. second place in most <laughs> yeah. heats. But, well, in this heat, it sees Billy Stammen in fourth place, chasing a 7.38 to advance into the men's round of 16. And what an absolute stacked draw we have here at the Central Coast. We've watched the Destination New South Wales Wave replay of Joel Vaughan. Beautiful surfing. It's a, such complete surfing. Now, he didn't go to the air on that one, but he showed us some really good, powerful surfing. Goes to the air. He's got a flawless air attack. His success rate has staggered me. So, yep, that was our heat leader mainly, Joel Vaughan, 8.93 and an 8.17. He's a very complete, impressive surfer. Just over 15 minutes on the clock. We are just about halfway through this heat. This is, of course, the Visla Central Coast Pro presented by Mad Max. It is a WSL QS 3000. A lot of points on offer here with winners taking away that 3,000 points. Our final stop of the Vistler New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2023. Kia Martin up and riding, floats the section. The wave starts to flatten out and Alistair Reginato answers straight back, just bogs a rail on the way down there, Robbo. Yep, and you could see Kian Martin on that left. He was looking for a backhand aerial move. He got the speed up, but the wave just didn't deliver him the launching pad on that. So you can see his strategy is firmly uh, fixed. 14 and a half minutes. We have the Destination New South Wales wave replay of a wave that was caught by Joel Vaughan. Huge air attempt there, but just not quite able to get down off the lip. Well, I'm surprised he didn't make it because he makes just about everything he goes for in the air, Joel Vaughan. So much height. I could only imagine where that number would yeah. have went had he have been able to uh, stick that landing properly. Joel Vaughan in the black, well and truly in first place right now with an 8.93 and an 8.17. Surfer in second place, Alistair Reginato. From the Sunshine Coast, chasing a 9.43 to take the lead. Kian Martin, 
In third place, chasing a 607, and Billy Stammen in the red, a 738, will take him into the next round. And I'm pretty sure Reginardo will have in his head, I've got a 6.63 that I've got to get rid of because Martin is right on my tail. He only needs a 6.07, and Billy Stammen, 7.38 in clean, peaky beach breaks. He's very capable of that, so it's going to be interesting. That is Billy Stammen on screen there, using his priority, not able to find the exit there. They're not going to be the 738 that he is chasing, make his way back into the lineup and reset. Plenty of time for the Kiwi. Kiwi competitor, eight times New Zealand champion. George Kian Martin on screen and just separating himself from the board. Yep, you can see his strategy though. He's going to stick with it and he's got plenty of time to do it. Posted that 8.23, just needs another good to excellent wave score and he'll be through. And that's the thing, I feel like with 30 minute heats, there, there really is so much time. You know, we were only probably 10 minutes into the heat and a fair few numbers yeah. have been locked in. And in a normal situation with a 20 minute heat, you'd feel like, oh, the heat might have just run away on me. But no, it allows competitors to reset and just chip away at their requirements. Yep. It almost gets harder for the competitors with scores, say, like Joel Vaughan's. He's going to have to get something better than 817 if he wants to improve his situation. Whereas yeah, the other surfers, they can take off. They can. They can go. Joel Vaughan well and truly in first place right now. And well, he's also got first priority as well. The local competitor showing us the local knowledge here on the Central Coast. Does surf for North Shelley board riders. We are, of course, at Avoca Beach. Beautiful part of the world. It is a magnificent beach. The backdrop, the nature, the restaurants, the people. Everything about it is um, the great Australian coastal lifestyle, especially on days like this when the wind's offshore, the sun's out and there's pumping waves up and down the beach. Massive thank you to a couple of our supporting rights partners who are central here to the Central Coast. They are, of course, the Avoca Beach Hotel, offering great surfing accommodation with fully self-contained rooms and plenty of parking. Be sure to visit the avocabeachhotel.com.au. Looking for a great place to stay and also a nice place to eat as well. Got their own bistro. Also have a cafe there as well, but we also have to thank the Central Coast Council. It's been speaking of this destination in a beautiful part of New South Wales. Wouldn't be here without the local council, Central Coast Council. Headlander Hinterland. South Wales Central Coast is making waves. You can discover the region's charming seaside villages, dine on a paddock to plate menus and explore coast to country. You've got the best of both worlds here, Robbo. You've got it all. And if you need some city action, you're not far away from Sydney. You can get in there in an hour comfortably. Certainly no city person, but <laughs> good to know it's close by. Yes. Live action in the water on screen. Our competitors, just, I feel like there's a little bit more urgency in the paddle there from white and red, just kind of white hunting the line up a little bit, maybe looking to drop that 6-3 six, six, from his scoreline. He's yep. opting to paddle away from red and black. Blue further down the beach, it's interesting whether or not he's actually making his way towards that competitor. I wonder, it's a very early stage to be uh, considering blocking, but um, yeah, he's keeping him in his sights, that's for sure. Maybe so. His thinking pattern might be if I just go sit at least on the same bank as him, I'm having the same opportunity. Not sure. Well, he's got he's got priority over him, so I guess it's a two yeah, it's a it's a two way street. He can get the best wave if it comes, and um, he can block him at the same time. So we're going to have a recap, but this is an interesting heat. Let's have a look at these waves. There's high scores throughout this, and that's Reginato. Powerful surfer on his backhand. 
These are strong moves, and um, Reginardo has the power game, and he began well. He has a good uh, 7.6 wave. Watch this strong turn, and here's our heat leader. Super smooth, stylish surfer. Finishes off well. They were all turns, no airs, but watch him here as he takes to the air. Super clean. That was Billy Stammen up on screen there. The Kiwi competitor linking this one all the way through. Pretty cool finish, but still sitting in fourth place. This man here got an 8.23 as he took to the air and managed to get the completion and finish off with a little foam climb to finish. It's an excellent number there from the man in the blue, originally from Sweden. Sweden, Kian Martin. Yep, lives in Indonesia, has developed all his surfing in Indonesia. Needs a 6.07. It's crazy to think that you can lock in such a high number, but still not be in I a know. position to progress through into the next round. Yeah. Seven and a half minutes remaining. He'll be very, he'll be anxious, nervous. And if he doesn't get through, he'd be super frustrated because he has had plenty of time to get rid of that 4.5 and chase down that 6.07. But there's still seven minutes remaining. So Kian Martin in third p position. Billy Stammen, don't count him out. He's the most experienced surfer out there in the lineup. And uh, he knows exactly what he has to do to try and get that 7.38. Just under seven minutes on the clock. I feel like there's still enough time for another opportunity to come through for all four surfers. Yep, exactly. At the moment, it is Joel Vaughan, the local from the Central Coast, in first place with an 8.93 and an 8.17. At a fifth place at the Great Lakes Pro. He's currently sitting 24th on the 2022 2023 QS series here on the Australasia Oceanic Regional Leg. He could rapidly move up the ratings. So Joel's priority has gone to fourth priority. So he took off on this wave. You can see what he's thinking, but that didn't offer him the opportunity. No great loss. He's pretty comfortable out in first with an 893 and an 817. Although it was a similar score line that he lost out in his uh, semi final in Maroubra. Okay, surfer up and riding and out of there. What a semi final that was in Maroubra between Joel Vaughan and Dakota Walters. They just went wave for wave, air for air. One of the best heats that I've watched. It was. In the history of surfing. <laughs> and. I guess in a lot of ways it didn't end well for uh, Dakota Walters, who scored a perfect 10, but has, from what I'm told, has done some severe damage to the leg, and uh, it's, not a, it's not a good story. No, I have uh, heard about that too. Some pretty solid uh, damage to his ankle, unfortunate for Dakota. Which is going to require operations and a lot of time and recovery. Uh, so... Yeah, it was uh, emotionally a mixed heat because uh, he scored the perfect 10. He did an incredible manoeuvre. He took out the semi-final, but all that happened at a great cost. Um, so Dakota, Dakota has uh, suffered a serious injury from that event. And, um, yeah, it looks like this season is going to be a lot of... Um, rehabilitation and recovery so we wish him the best and hope to see him back out there as soon as possible I'll tell you what dakota walters he did well to just carry himself the way he did when he you know went out of that competition he got the 10 got the injury on the 10 but still managed to ride out of it and stay on his feet as long as he could before he made his way in i know incredible Yeah, Joel Vaughan, he was the competitor. The other rashy in that semi-final up against Dakota. Joel yeah. Vaughan in this heat, putting 
together another excellent heat here. Looking to move on through into the round of 16 and hopefully get a decent result. You know, 3,000 points. If he could take a win here, that's a massive jump in the rankings. I feel like that semi-final is sort of the catalyst that Joel Vaughan can push himself onto a roll. He's, he looks more confident. He's going for his airs. He's sticking them all the time. He's scoring excellent waves. It could be a real catalyst to his... Uh, to his immediate future. And although he didn't move through that semi-final at the time, I think, you know, one, obviously the surfing performance, but then two, the fact that he did have his, his back up against the wall and just to be able to flip oh. the heat and just course, put yeah. together the numbers that he did in such a short amount of time under pressure. I commentated that heat and we rode him off. We thought he's finished. Dakota had opened up such a massive lead and then Vaughan dug deep and uh, took the lead. It took a perfect 10-point ride from Walters to steal it back. But right now, Joel Vaughan comfortably out in front and it, the, as we've been uh, rambling on, the clock's been ticking down and we're now down to two and a half minutes. So it is getting very anxious moments for Kian Martin especially, only requiring the 6.07, and Billy Stearman holding second priority, looking for a 7.38. And now only two and a half minutes to achieve the score. Now's the time Reginato may be seriously looking to utilise that priority, which he holds. This is, of course, our final heat of this men's round of 32. Coming up next, we have the women's round of 16 heats, one to four. We'll see Ellie Harrison, Mariah Ikeda, Sarah Baum, and Mia Huppets. Exciting matchup for the women. It's going to be fantastic. They've got pristine conditions out there. We have been blessed with the conditions here at Avoca. It just seems to provide the goods every single year. Beautiful All these location. beach breaks, yeah. These beach breaks up and down the central and um, mid-north coast of New South Wales. Incredibly consistent, lots of variety and good waves everywhere. Have a takeoff. That is Joel Vaughan up on his forehand. Well, he's just out there having fun now, Robbo. What a great style. His powerful in-pocket surfing combined with his aerial talents and not quite sticking that one, but uh, with a minute to go, he's going to be safely through. It's second place that's of interest, and one minute remaining, Reginato holding priority. It's going to take something very special for Kian Martin or Billy Stammen to get through. As we hit the Mad Max minute with 45 seconds on the clock, thanks to Mad Max, partnering with Surfing New South Wales again across the entire Pro Surf Series to help share their passion for healthy Mexican food and to make people aware of their sponsorship program. But live action in the water, this is Alistair Reginato. Couple of turns, I don't think that's going to improve on his situation. He was looking to drop a 6.63. And he was looking to block Billy Stammen, which he did on that wave, so... Um, yep, his score won't improve. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Kian Martin, not, no opportunity for an aerial there, so he's kicked out and we're down to 10 seconds. Billy Stammen, what's he got? He's going to need something big and special. <laughs> Gets the completion, makes it look easy. Is it a 7.38? I don't know, he made it look so easy. He is milking this one for all it's worth. One big move from Billy. That was unexpected. He knew he had to do something big. We'll get a replay on that one. Absolutely effortless there from the man in the red. But will it be the number that he requires? He's chasing a 738 as we watch the Destination New South Wales Wave replay, Robbo. Well, yeah, I mean, we never know what to think when the aerials, I mean, there's a lot of technicality to them, and the judges understand those technicalities better than we do. Um, will he get the score of 7.38? I don't think so, but it wouldn't surprise me if he did. Well, Britt? We've been wrong before. <laughs> Many times. I, uh, I, f I feel like it, it just wasn't critical enough yeah. to get the 7.38. Had he have done this and then linked it to another turn, yep. I feel like he would have got the number, but... 
I just don't think it's going to be enough. But like oh. I said, we've been wrong before. I know. He's given, a, he's given the judges something to think about. That's for certain. Billy Stam and the Kiwi needs a 7.38. And it looks like that concludes the men's round of 32, heat number eight. We'll cut to a short commercial break and join you back here with all the live action of the women's round of 16. This is the motivation. Voca Beach for the Visla New South Wales Pro Surf Series 2023. This is our final stop of that series. This is, of course, the Sister Evolution Central Coast Pro QS 3000 presented by Magmex. We are into the women's round of 16. My name is Britt Nicol, joined in the booth with Steve Robertson. And, well, who have we got in the water, Robbo? Ali Harrison, who's begun with a 3.33. Mia Huppets. Sarah Bourne. And... Aikida, I'm not sure of the Christian name, from Japan, no doubt. Marae, 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 <laughs> Marae Aikida, I'll go with that. I'm sure she's from Japan, but uh, Ali Harrison has been uh, a fantastic surfer on the QS. She's a young emerging Victorian surfer and she's doing really, really well. Mia Huppets, originally from Victoria, Torquay girl, and now residing on the Gold Coast. Sarah Baum, as we know from South Africa, spends a lot of time in Australia. And Aikida from Japan. So we've got a replay. Is the action that went down while we're in that short commercial break. This is Ellie Harrison from Victoria the one turn there so quick start there for Ellie destination New South Wales for that replay we are of course into the women's round of 16 heat one we have four heats of this round and then we're calling it a day yep. that'll be it we are calling it a day so we're making the most of these conditions that we have in front of us they are 30 minute heats Still plenty on offer in the lineup been talking about it all day I really just feel like these conditions are improving as the day continues of watching Liza action of that Japanese competitor up and riding carves into the pocket wave starts to flatten out yeah she got sold into that by Sarah Baum and uh, utilized her priority uh, it's not going to be a big score but she's they all have plenty of time so um, she'll be back out in the lineup Mia Huppets holding priority Green up and riding, just hitting the eject button right in front of her competitor in the black. Quick up and out. Absolutely stunning day here at Avoca. No sea breeze, which is uh, amazing, but plenty of heat. 
as uh, New South Wales endures yet another heat wave. Hot for the next four days or so. <laughs> we have our previous heat winner down there ready to go with a post heat interview. Joel Vaughan, it's Britt Nickel and Steve Robbo in the booth. How are you feeling putting together two excellent numbers and just running away with that heat? Yeah, I'm really stoked to to get a get a good um, good start in that heat and um, yeah, stoked to take the win. The, the boys have been surfing really well, so yeah, I knew it was going to be a tough one. Now, Joe, you're looking really confident. I know that you're from the Central Coast. Does it help having the local area as the event site and just being able to go home and stick to your regular routine, sleep in your own bed? Uh, does that help with events like this? Yeah, it's it's so so useful just to be able to drive home. I only live 15 minutes away, so just to get to sleep in, in my own bed every night is is um, yes, it's really good. And um, come over here a, a little bit to surf, so I feel like I know the area a fair bit. And um, yeah, I'm just I'm stoked. It's nice and close to home. Joel, the um, the quality of all these heats seems uh, incredible. Every heat you go in must feel like it's a high pressure, tense situation. There's just just no easy heats. Yeah, there's none. I um, I watched a few of the the first few heats and the, everyone was surfing so good, and I I just had to kind of remind myself just to to focus on myself and um, try to pick good waves and not worry about everyone else and just kind of kind of try to uh, like pick my own good waves and just as a surf as good as I can. Well, that game plan seems to be working well for you, Joel. We'll let you go now and uh, prepare for your next round, which will probably be tomorrow. But uh, good luck uh, as this event unfolds. We love what you're doing. Thanks, heaps. Joel Vaughan, he's a great young surfer emerging and, um, yeah, I'm sure quite a few people will be tipping him to take out this event, the way he's surfing. He's a phenomenal surfer, and like we talked about before. Just that pressure, I, f I feel like for Vaughan, he's a surfer that I've seen a lot of over the years, coming through the New South Wales system as a junior and then progressing onto you know, the pro juniors and the QS. But I just feel like we all know what he's capable of. I feel like he knows what he's capable of and has that confidence, but maybe coming off situations like what he had in Maroubra yep. really helps build that momentum with the confidence coming into QS events like this? Absolutely. He would have learnt a lot from that to be able to come from so far behind and take the lead, put the pressure right on Dakota Walters in that one, go down, but go down on a huge score line. Yeah. So we see Sarah Baum on her backhand and finishes off reasonably and the thing that impresses me about Joel Vaughan is that his on face moves are incredibly precise technically flawless and uh, he's a very powerful impressive surfer that seems to have a good head on his shoulders as well yeah he's, he's very humble he's very grounded he comes from a good family and he's I think he's got a good support network around him in the local area as well and I think you know like like you said, he's good at keeping the board in the water as well. And it's, yeah. I feel like it, it is one of those things that if surfers can be as good on the face as they are in the air, that's a massive advantage. Because more is. often than not, you see they might be good at the foundations, but yep. not great in the air or the other way around. Whereas when they've got the full package like that, they really become hard to beat. Yep. No, he's a threat in any heat. That's for certain. In the water, we have the women's. This is, of course, the women's round of 16, heat number one, just under 21 minutes on the clock. Sister Evolution Central Coast Pro QS 3000 presented by Mad Max. In the water at the moment, Ellie Harrison in the red in first place with a 333 and a 1.9. Sarah Baum in the white, locked in a 4.33 on that last one. She's got a backup of a 083, looking for a 0 0.9 for first. And I think Mia Huppets has a reasonable score to drop. So There it is. Uh, yep, a 4.73. So that puts her into the lead. 4.73 is the top scoring right of the heat so far. Mia Huppets has it. She's in the lead, just ahead of Ali Harrison. With a 3.33 and a 1.9. Sarah Bourne, the 4.33. So, yep, it's a close heat. 
Puppets, Ellie Harrison, both from Victoria. I know Mia now lives on the Gold Coast, but these two competitors would have surfed up against each other a fair Many bit over times. their time. Yes, no doubt. Watch the Destination New South Wales Wave replay of Sarah Baum on her back end. We've got the replay for the surfer in green. Nice couple of turns, little hung up, but she managed to get up and around the section again. Yep, and good surfing from Mia. Lock in the number that she was chasing. Surfing green in first place with a 473 and a 1.2. Still plenty of time remaining. 30 minute heats. Mia actually travelled to a lot of the Asian events last year, and particularly at the event that we ran at Nias, she was super impressive. She yeah. got some big barrel rides, and um, I think she made the semi-finals of that event, but it was a real breakout performance for Mia, and her barrel riding technique was particularly impressive. I think events like that as well, it really shows the separation because the waves are pumping. Yeah. And uh, you soon be able to pick the pack of who can handle themselves yes. and who can't. Yep. Really rising to the challenge, young Mia Huppets. So she had a fifth place in Taiwan and she had a fifth place at Nias. Yeah, there you go. Great couple of results, Good results. there. And her younger sister is a super impressive surfer as well. She Isla. took out a win on the QS at Burley not long ago. So young. <laughs> yeah. Winning her first QS at QS. I know. Already. I think she's uh, maybe a, an Australian junior. She's had a good result there as well. But uh, the Huppets family, Marcus, the father, we know well. He's a great surfer from Portland. But now they're all based on the beautiful Gold Coast. So Ali Harrison um, posted a 3.27. So it's a pair of three point of low three-point rides that has uh, Ali in the lead over Mia Huppets with that 4.73. Early days, still 17 and a half minutes remaining. Bit of a slow start here for the Japanese competitor, but at the moment there hasn't really been much of substance caught. There's nothing over a 4.73 on the scoreboard at the moment. So it's still anybody's heat. It is wide open at the moment. Just over 17 minutes on the clock, as I mentioned earlier. 30 minute heats it allows competitors just to really make the most of their time in the lineup. And uh, I heard one of the guys say earlier that he knew that within that 30 minute period, there'd be at least two good sets that came through. Yep, and that's a good way to look at it. I feel competitors just really able to find their rhythm with the ocean rather than scramble. They're able yep. to sit and, and select the waves that they actually want. And when it gets down to two-person heats, they'll have even more time. Not sure if they'll stick to the 30 minutes. Well, I feel like now that they've started the 30-minute run, the, I feel set like the precedent. Set yeah. the bar. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you never know, yeah. contest directors. But uh, I feel like once they've already... I know when you start a round and yes, if you, you cut halfway it. through, you've yeah. got to finish it at the same time clock. Uh, yeah, we'll wait and see. We've got still plenty of time up our sleeves with the schedule. Still another two days of the event, and well, after this, we'll be into the women's quarterfinals. Any um, any forecasting expertise, Britt, from yourself? No, no, you don't know what it's going to be like tomorrow. Uh, Get up, we'll wind, see what I it's like. I think there's meant to be a slight change in wind direction. Oh, which that can't be good. It's probably partly explanatory as to why they decided to run yes. the women's round of 16 this afternoon, knowing that they've got good conditions, certainly want to capitalise on that because you never know what could happen overnight. We're playing with Mother Nature. As much as there might be a forecast there, it can be thrown out the window in the morning. Yes. World's best surfers and the world's best waves. So while you've got good waves, make the most of them. And that's what the crew at Surfing New South Wales are doing. course our final stop of the Visla New South Wales Pro Surf Series for 2023. We started at the Great Lakes Pro. We're finishing here at the Central Coast Pro. Both of those events QS 3000s. We also had a QS 1000 in Port Stephens and another in Maroubra. So it's been a great leg of events here in New South Wales. 
massive thanks to Visla and Sister, Sister Brand 2 Visla, partnering with Surfing New South Wales on the QS events for the past four years and doing amazing things in and out of the water with around 80% of their product range made of environmentally better materials. Men's board shorts pioneered from the use of coconuts in the construction of those board shorts. Visla uses the husk of the coconut, and turns it into a thread, which is then blended with cotton or recycled plastics and turned into board shorts. And most of their tees from Visla are also organic cottons. The party shirts are made from hemp and plastic bottles. Most of the walk shorts are made from hemp or recycled materials. And all the wetsuits are made from a bunch of environmentally better materials and processes. So Visla really leading the way with environmental sustainability and uh, yeah, doing great things in and out of the water. Be sure to check out visla.com or sisterevolution.com. Grab yourself some products, clothes, wetsuits, accessories, you name it, they've got it all. They do, and are you aware that coconuts are also used to make some surfboards? I am aware of that actually, yeah. And they're successful. They make uh, really strong decks and... So yeah, the coconut. I feel like just from what it's like to try and cut open a coconut, I feel like there's a lot of strength in that. Yeah, there's so gotta be. So I can be. see why it works. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> They're very hard to open. Where have you had your best coconut? Oh, I don't know to be honest. I, I know where I've had my best coconut. Where was it? In Papua New Guinea. I've never tasted coconut water that you are. tasty. Um, I said to the guy I gave it to, "Is this this must be flavoured? You must have put something in." He said, "No, that's the natural coconut flavour." Wow. It was incredible. Papua New Guinea. Never been there. Maybe one day. Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting destination. There's surf there. I have heard that. I've got mates that have been there. But uh, well, we're in a beautiful part of the world at the destination that we're at right now. Exactly. No place we'd rather be. We are, of course, at Avoca Beach on the central coast of New South Wales. And thanks to Avoca Beach Hotel for partnering with us on this event and offering great surfing accommodation with fully self-contained rooms and plenty of parking. Be sure to check out avocabeachhotel.com.au for rates and availability. Live action in the water, Surfer in Black, our Japanese competitor, linking a couple of nice turns. She's only searching for a 3.27, Robbo. Yep, she'll get that. Could be the best way over the heat. Might be worth having another look at that. So, uh, Akita from Japan. We also have a Surfer in White, Sarah Baum, up and riding, comes hard off the bottom, carves into the pocket. And again, wave really not steepening up yet. Trying to link this one all the way through and get something more critical on the inside, but just not able to get the connection. Surfer in white in third place. She was only looking for a 1.61. Safe to say that she would have got that number. Okay. So there's Ellie Harrison. This wave really didn't offer up too much for Ellie. But uh, here's our Japanese competitor in the black. A couple of reasonable moves there, so it'll be interesting to see how the judges decipher that particular wave, along with Sarah Baum. So, Akita's posted a 4.5, and it actually puts her into the lead with a 4.5 and a 2.67. Ali Harrison in second position with a pair of three-point, low three-point rides. Mia Huppets has the best wave of the heat with a 4.73 in third position, and Sarah Baum. With a, Sarah Baum has just gone to the lead with a 4.33 and a 3.27. There's nothing in it. The wave scores are all in the three to four range. There's absolutely nothing in this heat whatsoever. Just like that, surfers that were in third and fourth have jumped into first and second with ten and a half minutes on the clock. The surfer up and riding, that is Mia Huppert's now chasing a 2.44 to progress. So there's really nothing in this heat so far. Unfortunately, her feet just come unstuck. But I look at the scoreline, it is so close. Yeah. Between all four competitors, no one's really separated themselves from the pack on that leaderboard yet. Ten minutes remaining. 
and um, yeah, this is super, super close. Mia Huppert still has the best wave of the heat, a 4.73, but she's in third position. Ali Harrison, we know, can do a lot better than um, two low three-point rides. So it has been, compared to all the other heats today, this has been one that uh, has slowed up a little. As it might be a little changing in the tide. Uh, Still plenty on offer. But yeah, just feel like the wave selection is more crucial than ever right now and feel like I might have slowed down a little bit. Doesn't seem to be as consistent as it was in that previous heat. But uh, with 30 minutes. Well, they're going to need that 30 minutes in this heat because we're down to the last nine minutes and this heat could go any way whatsoever. Really could as Sarah Baum is in the lead with a 4-3-3 and a 3-2-7. And Japanese competitor Marai Ikeda in second place, looking for a 3.1 for first. Mia Huppert, she's in third. She's looking at this one, opting not to take off. Smart choice. Wasn't going to get the number on that one. She's no. only chasing a 2.44. Ellie Harrison in the red, been bumped back to fourth place, now searching for a 3.85. But the positive here for Ellie, not only is there eight and a half minutes still remaining in this heat, but she does hold first priority. Yep, I haven't seen Ali um, backed into a corner like this before, so it'll be interesting to see how she handles the pressure. She's normally um, racking up consistently good wave scores, but this particular heat just hasn't played out for her at all. But she's a very experienced competitor, and um, let's see how she handles this situation. Someone who's still so young, she's got a lot of experience already under her belt. She's sitting third on the rankings at the moment for the Australia Oceanic region of this QS. On screen, that is Mia Huppets. First turn in the pocket. Carves around for the second. Can she get a finish on the inside? Great surfing here from the young competitor in the green. Yep, that'll be our new heat leader, Mia Huppets. So timely choice of waves there for Mia and I'm pretty sure this is the best wave of the heat she's got a nice style a lot of power off the back foot uh, stays busy on this wave and finishes it off so Mia Huppets you almost came out of that second turn with more speed than what she went in with it yep. I feel like whatever board that she's got under her feet it just seemed to carry that momentum really well she didn't get caught she didn't get hung up but just continued to maintain the speed throughout every single turn of that wave. She did. And we're awaiting that score to drop, but there will be a change in situation for sure. Just under seven minutes on the clock. This is, of course, the women's round of 16, heat number one. She's okay, well, there it is. She scored a four. It is enough to put her in the lead. I thought it would be a better score than that. <laughs> but regardless... The situation has seen Mia Huppets go to the lead with a 4.73 and a 4. So it's a narrow lead, but it is a lead at the moment. Sarah Baum in second position only requires a 4.41. Okay. Uh, this is a 4.73 of Mia's, so it's a bigger wave and they're bigger turns. So I can see why this is a top scoring ride. So, yep. Good time to analyse both waves. Smaller waves, she stays busy on it. She gets some nice turns in, but it is a much smaller wave. So uh, I'll give that one to the judges. Um, they've got that right. So a 4.73 and a 4 to Mia Huppets. And she is in the lead. Sarah Baum is up and riding. Only needs a 4.41 to go to first. That wave uh, just uh, fattening up and running into deep water. So... I don't think she'll get the 4.41 and we've got five and a half minutes so yeah right across the board super close ellie harrison up and riding nice couple of turns can she get an inside connection here she's only chasing a 4.28 if she can get the completion i feel like she could have got the number but we'll wait and see where that number sits will it improve on her situation in fourth place yeah i don't know Watch Mia Huppert's current hit leader up and riding. This is live action. Comes hard off the bottom. Hits the lip. 
straight up into a second turn. Good surfing from Mia. So she's staying busy, needs to improve on the four, it's possible. The uh, in black answers back, Robbo. Yep, the Japanese competitor. And she's getting busy here, she'll be looking for a big finish. Nice turn. And rides out of the completion. So, wow, this is going to be a super, super close heat. Just like that, a couple more numbers to drop on in. This will get interesting with just under five minutes on the clock. It's one of those ones where you just kept on the edge of your seat. Not I much know. had really happened, and then they've all left it until the <laughs> last five minutes. Yep. So Akita's going to get the 3.1 for sure. She'll get that and better. So I would imagine her position's going to improve. Mia Huppets, some nice work here, and finishes nicely. She could improve on her four. And here's our Japanese surfer, who probably got the best of the exchange. So I have a feeling Aikida in the black could go to the lead here. I feel like that last turn was the major turn on that wave. I feel yep. like she maybe got a little lost with the middle section, was kind of like, do I go for the section, do I not? She kind of hung with it. Made the most of what was in front of her, but I just feel like that middle section, there might have been an opportunity to do a bit of a carve down and then into that next section. But 3.1 is what she's requiring. It's really not much. I feel like she will come close to getting that just off the basis of yeah. the last turn, let alone everything else that she did on that wave. Yep. Mia Huppets has improved her scoreline. She got a 4.6 there, so uh, that's improved her lead. And she actually has the two best waves of the heat, a 4.73 and a 4.6. Uh, we think we're waiting on a wave for Akita, and it needs to be, there it is. Wow, she got a good score, six. So Akita goes to the lead with a six and a 4.5. Huppets now in second, needs a 5.78 to try and get back into first. Sarah Baum only needs a five, and Ali Harrison, let's face it, only needs a 5.76. She's been getting those scores and way, way better than that throughout this series. So two and a half minutes remaining, Ali Harrison, importantly, holding priority, looking for a 5.76 to try and advance. It's close right across the board. The numbers are all there. You can make sense of that. You realise it's a super close heat. Late takeoff there for Ellie Harrison. That's not going to be the way that she's searching for, for a 5.76 to advance into the next round. That next round being the quarterfinals. Will she get another opportunity with two minutes on the clock? The surfer in black from Japan went straight up into first place. That's 6.0. She's got a backup of a 4.5. And like I said, I just feel like majority of that six came from that last turn. It was a yep. solid critical section. We've got a few turns leading into that, but I feel like the last turn was the money turn. Well, big turn there from Ellie Harrison. That? Will oh. she get a 5.76 for that one manoeuvre, Robbo? Oh, I don't think so, but it's a big turn. Um, it'll be her best score. 5.76? I don't know. She's uh, busted the fins out, the, out of the back. We've seen one manoeuvre get decent scores. I don't know. Um, but it's so the pressure's on out there because even though Ali's in third position on the rankings, there's no, with two, lots of points in this event and the next event, those rankings will change big time. You're never safe until you get told that you're oh, safe. Yeah. <laughs> there Not it is. A 6 eight, 3 So Ellie Harrison, she got the number on the basis of that one big solid manoeuvre. She busted the fins. She got the completion. And there you go. Surfer in red goes from fourth into second. And well, Mia Huppets now in third place, chasing a 5 6 eight. And Sarah Baum in the white, a 6.08. So I feel like this is wow. an unusual situation here for Sarah Baum in the white. It is. And it's unusual for Mia as well because... Two minutes ago, she had the two best scoring rides of the heat, and now she's in third, third position due to a couple of six-point rides from her competitors. So, yep. And Ellie Harrison, she needed a, I think it was a 5.76, so she well and truly got above that score. Judges I'm deeming the one big turn. I, I have to agree with them. It was a solid section. She put everything into it. She had the innovation there as well. Yep. No, it was good. She went for it. I'm handing in my judging certificate. <laughs> I'm done. 
as we count out this heat. And well done to the Japanese surfer and to Ali Harrison under extreme pressure found a way through. We will cut to a short commercial break and join you back here with all the live action of heat number two. motivation. Welcome back to beautiful Avoca Beach. Uh, we're in the round of 16 of the Sister Evolution Pro. It's a WQS 3000 event. It's super important at this stage of the season and we have a surfer up and riding. That looks like Zali Kelly. I think. If that's surfer in red, it's actually Philippa Anderson. There you go. Uh, Philippa up and riding straight into it. Yeah, great to be back. And uh, we're going to round out this afternoon with four heats of women's as we see surfer in white. That's Arabella Wilson up into that wave. Great to see Noah Amura, who I've known for a long, long time. She used to come to Australia and compete in Sydney at our junior events when she was 10 and 11. And she has been on the QE grind, as they say, Robbo, for years and years. Very uh, solid competitor. She has a lot of support in Japan and good to see Noah Amura back over here as we see Philippa Anderson lock in four point ride. So I was watching the uh, webcast during my break and it seemed to have slowed up quite a bit as that uh, sort of tide started to fill in, Robbo. Yeah, they're getting into deeper water and um, a lot of these waves on takeoff, they look good, but then they run into the deep water and um just doesn't quite work. Good to see the crowd still are hanging around. Look at those. It's, conditions are amazing. Offshore, yes. a bit of a light westerly wind. Zali Kelly locks in up 6.33. So the uh, very, very established competitor she is. She is just 
always seems to be on good waves. Right now she comes into this event surprisingly ranked at 14th, but she has had a pretty big result. She got fifth at the Tweed Coast Pro. So that's her best result of the system. But let me tell you, uh, she'll need a big result in the last two events to get herself into that qualifying position because there's only four spots. I know. Perhaps. It's it's critical. And look at the, the playing field we've got now, Adam. Um, had our surfer in black, the Japanese surfer, right up the northern end. And, yeah, it's a big spread right down to the other bank down here for the others. So tactics coming into play. They're moving around the bank trying to find the better conditions, find the better waves. If you get the better waves, there's every chance you're going to uh, get the better scores. 100%. And they would have been identifying that with their coaches as they've moved along the afternoon session. But, I mean, when they come, the waves are pumping. And in that last seat, we saw Ellie Harrison get the uh, job done oh. very late. And it's like Philippa is going to score herself a nice again wave. Philippa Anson. Nice bottom turn here. Into a good top turn. Philippa cuts back smooth into the white border. Moving it through. This is going to be a good score, Adam. She's worked this way for all it's worth. She's definitely done that, and I love the depth of that bottom end turn, as we see, by the looks of it, that could be uh, Zali up yes. and riding again, and she's found a nice oh. connection as well. Look at that. Just engaging that rail for all you uh, grommets out there. That's what the judges love to see, that rail work, just really flawless in the way she went about that. So she's got a 6-3-3. She's going to back that up, and Philippa Anderson on the strength of that ride as well, is definitely going to improve her situation. And that last wave of Zali, I think. That's going to be the best wave. The best wave of the heat. Yeah, I, I agree with you. But I love the depth of Philippa's surfing. She's yeah, very, very good, yeah. relaxed. Uh, absolutely. And what I love is she's got a lot of patience in the way she reads the ocean. So we'll see what the judges think. But yeah, we've got a bumper day. It's been a cracker of a day, wave-wise. The, the, both the men and the women have just been on point at the Visla New South Wales Pro Surf Series and waiting for scores to drop in. We're hoping tomorrow we're going to wake up and see some really clean conditions. We'll see what the forecast comes up with as we see Destination New South Wales replay. Philip see how you made that adjustment, yeah. Robert? Beautiful. Critical turn in the pocket, smooth, stylish. Cutback is full and complete. Great surfing from Philippa. Yeah, but she uh, this wave, ass. even better. I think this is more and more cut the bank a little bit better. Yep. And uh, Zali just really leaning in. And watch how much rail she engages here. Just lovely transition. And the good thing about her surfing is I feel like she doesn't lose any momentum, no. even when she buries a lot of weight on that back foot. There we go, 6.47 for Zali Kelly. So she has the two top scoring rides of the heat, 6.47, 6.33. Philippa scored a reasonable score, 4.76. I thought it might have been a little better than that, but yeah, that's so not a bad I. score. And there we have Arabella Wilson. Nice. Two-turn combination. Yeah, I felt Philippa's might have gone sort of mid, mid fives, but it was close to the mark, but definitely on what we saw. Zali was definitely the uh, best of the uh, exchanges. Yes, no, agree. And interesting that these women have moved south onto this bank and they're getting the best of it. The Japanese surfer went to the north and, um, yeah, these waves look far superior at this stage. We could be wrong. Now, you're, you're an esteemed coach, Adam, and you would have given advice throughout your years. What happens when you give the surfer the advice, go and surf that peak over there, and the opposite peak fires? What happens? How do you feel? You get sacked. <laughs> no, but honestly, I mean, at this level, uh, you're just there to, to, you know, to formulate a strategy, and I, you always leave it up to the athlete. To where so they go. Look, good, look, yeah, good because, point. Um, because these surfers are elite, so you just... And you give them your opinion, but at the end of the day, you let them make the decisions because by the, you know, they live and breathe their own choices, yep. as we see Noah going nice and ham on that one. But yeah, uh, you, you always look at different conditions and, and try to identify. I know Matty Cattle does a lot of work with a lot of surfers, and, and, uh, but for me, it's about 
if I was coaching any of them, I'd say, you guys, you know, you're the athletes. You need to make your own choices and live and yeah. die by the sword. So, yeah, that's how I'd do it. Yep, Different cool. for a grommet, but yep. I feel for, you know, somewhat of the surface of these eels. Yeah. They know what they're on about. Half the time they tell you to shut up and go away anyway. <laughs> okay, mate, <laughs> give it up. And you can be, uh, you can make all the right decisions and the ocean can prove you wrong anyway. So that's, I mean, that's the dynamics of what oh. we, you know, and how unique our sport is overall. Yes. Like, it's such a stretched out playing field. Yep. Okay, so uh, Arabella Wilson in the white scored a 5.0 for that ride. So that's a reasonable score for her, even though she's in fourth position she only has a one point ride as a backup philippa anderson with a 4.67 and a four zali kelly definitely getting the best of it so interesting score that from arabella wilson's way that five point ride was actually deemed better than philippa's 4.67 which is a little bit surprising but I think it was just due to the size of that wave philippa's wave sort of tapered off a little bit where yeah. arabella sort of you know, she held that sort of the weight of the wave right there and got some nice turns done. But the, as I said, these heats are stacked up, and Nara Moore is fighting back a 3.67 last of black. So important event for Nara Moore as well, because she is looking to qualify through the Asian region. And we were talking a little bit earlier as we see the surfer, current heat leader, Zali Kelly, up and riding. Strong first turn. Wanted to get around that section, wasn't able to. Nothing on offer at the end, so that will not improve her scoreline. But she's in a very healthy position with a 6.47 and a 6.33. Photographers on the beach on a scorching hot day. Wow, it's been hot. That's hard work. But Noah Amura comes into this series of events, ranked 14th on her regional qualifying series. And uh, I do believe the top three women at the end of the season go into the challenges. From the Asia region? Yeah. All right. and, and who are they at the moment? Well, it's pretty tight, but I can tell you, I know Mas Masuka lost earlier today and Suzuki is in second on the ratings, but it's very tight between, oh, actually there's a bit of a gap between first, second and third. So, Nonaka, Minari Nonaka, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce that, yep. is in first. So only the top three, but if you look at Sarah Wakita, Shino Masiata, like they're all there and uh, it's pretty surprising to see Noah so far down actually, yeah. because she's such a, an established, competitor overall. There's some big names. Well, she's Masuda is a talent and uh, she's she's actually quite far down on the ratings in the Asian region so surprising here we go. Sally up and riding just trying to negotiate that left. So it's been a bit shifty during the course of the day. We've seen some really big scores on the rights and then as the tide sort of ran out we saw the change up on the lefts, and um, now it's sort of, I feel like the southern corner towards the uh, surf club, towards the our uh, point, is where the bulk of the scoring's been done. No sea breeze today, Adam. Beautiful day, it's like a summer's day in the middle of autumn. Yeah, and I was and sort you were of- saying it before. Yeah, I know, this is the- The change. The end of La Nina. People out there who probably don't really understand, talk us through that. What is that? <laughs> I know <laughs> about it? it. I don't understand it. It's just weather pattern and changes, yes. right? Yep. I just listened to a few of the experts who tell us that uh, during La Nina, the east coast of Australia gets a lot of wind and a lot of swell. The south coast gets a lot of wind and no swell. And that seems to be what happened over the last uh, couple of years. You still get those deep sort of wild sort of swell patterns uh, 
down in Bells and in... Yeah, occasionally, but not as often not as, as often. they should. Okay, uh, not not, not so during often. La Nina. And in fact, last summer, not the summer just gone, but the previous summer, they had the worst summer ever. Like basically dead flat? Uh, basically unrideable for a, an entire summer. Uh, but that's all changed, Adam. It's back to its beautiful best. Yeah? <laughs> yes. There you go. We are halfway through this heat, and it is the surfer in green, Zali Kelly. She is in a very dominant position right now. Philippa Anderson's in second. She needs an 8 1 3 to move up. Philippa has first priority. She has a 4 6 7 and a 4. But just biting out of hills right now, Noah Umura and. Arabella Wilson. And Noah, sticking with your advice, Adam, and staying on that northern bank. It's not working well for her at the moment, mate. It's not my advice, <laughs> let me tell you. But, yeah, I mean, look, I think with these 30 minute heats, Robbo, yeah, too, she's that, got time. that'll make a difference. She's got time. Yeah. In the next five minutes, I feel like if she doesn't get a score in the she'll five to six point she'll come back over. Yep. And you can just see Philippa deep on the peak, just. Trying to negotiate exactly what she's, you know, trying to identify what she wants. Zali's a little bit further up. And, uh, yeah, I, feel, I do feel like the south corner is the uh, best place at this stage. Uh, important event for Zali Kelly comes into this event ranked 14th. And like I said, she had a really good result on the Tweed Coast Pro. That would have given her a lot of confidence. And I feel like she's one of these athletes who is, you know, a flick of a switch away from advancing to the next stage of her career. She's got such a great power base. Uh, <laughs> she's very stable and, uh, yeah, she's a strong competitor. Adam, I know you'll know the answer to this. How many Australian women qualify from the series onto the Challenger? I think it's four. And a wild card. It is top four, four and one and wild one card. And one wild card. It's such a... Uh, oh, it's, it's cutthroat. It's cutthroat. And when you look at it right now, Philip is actually fifth. <laughs> Nixie Ryan's fourth. But there's, you know, you have... The, the talent that's coming behind them and all around them, the, the, the rankings are going to change. They're going to change at this event and then they're going to change in a we big way. We saw Mia Hubbard get very unlucky at the end of that oh. heat, right? <laughs> Ellie Harrison beat her. Well, she was in seventh. Yeah, and I know. And that could be the difference between... I know, qualify yeah, or not. Yep, it's uh, it is cutthroat. Okay, we've got a few wave replays here. Let's have a look at this. Current heat leader, look at her looking very strong. Nice. Love the extension, how low she got that center of gravity, very low, and formulating a solid plan on these rights. And this I loved as well. I love yep. the rail work she the way she was actually able to execute that second turn. And then she went to that rail game. Watch how clinical this is, Robbo, how smooth. The wave delivered as well. It hugged the bank and uh, gave her the opportunity to really um, rack up the points, which she did. She took that opportunity, 6.47 for that last ride that we saw there. She's backing it up with a 6.33. She leads the heat, 12 minutes remaining. Tides filling in, water's getting deeper. There's not as many waves, and the surfers have to be strategically smart out there. Definitely they do. So a big shout out to all our event partners. Visla, the major sponsor of the uh, men's side of the draw, and Sister Evolution, the sister brand to Visla, involved in the women's, as we see. It looks like Philip Anderson's going to have a look at this up and right in from Good looking Newcastle. Wave. Good looking first turn. Nice and smooth off the bottom, just holding her place through that turn. And I think that gave her a nice chip shot into that second manoeuvre. I love how patient she was off the bottom. And we'll see what the judges think. Is that her best score? It has to be. But I mean, yeah, I'm having, I thought a 4.67 was better than that, but better than that score. But this one I think has to be, because it was, mm. Well linked together, powerful turns. You know, it's a good test on your own judging skills to, to, to give a shot at it. The judges will get it right no matter what. It, we're just the, uh, 
the commentators and we can analyse the waves, but I feel this has to be her best wave and I feel it goes into the six point range, personally. Yeah, great extension through the body as well and what I loved was that she didn't rush that second manoeuvre. She just patiently waited and got deeper off the bottom to put herself in that prime position to execute that turn. Here we go, the young Japan or the Japanese surfer. I used to call her young all the time because <laughs> Not she's, been, she's been coming down <laughs> since she was 10, but she's a veteran of the Japanese surf scene for sure. Now Noah Mura, always walking around with a smile on her face, very uh, respectful for to be a part of it, loves the sport, driven, and uh, I'd love to see her one day get that opportunity. She's been close a couple of times to make the uh, World Championship Tour, just not able to get there. My and judging credentials have just, oh, it's just they've stepped just, up a notch. Yeah, it's 6.67 for Philippa Anderson. Best wave of the heat so far. And, um, yep, that was well served. I handed him my judging ticket after the last heat. I'm You're taking back. it back. I'm back. It's like surfing, mate. It's all, it's all a confidence thing. <laughs> but, yeah, a 6.67. Well deserved. Well deserved. Yeah. And, and I think it was just on the read and the execution of those series of turns for Philippa. And she has now put herself in a strong position. And it is going to take a pretty solid ride for Noah Mura, 767. And Arabella Wilson only needs a 6.35. But that in itself, in these conditions, it's going to be tough because. It, the, uh, the quality of wave is starting to drop off due yep. to the fact that tide's coming in. True. And I feel Philippa may have been a little angry about the 4.67, Adam, and, and put more energy into that ride and said, well, you know, I'm, I'm not getting the scores I want to get. I've got to surf harder. And she surfed hard on that wave and was well rewarded with a 6.67. Her analytical skills when it comes to, you know, a heat, is pretty impressive. She's been around a long time. She has. Her, and she's another one of these surfers who have basically missed by one oh, or no. two spots on multiple occasions. <laughs> There's so many people who oh, love no. the way Philippa serves and want to see her take that next step in her career. But right now, her whole focus point is trying to make the challenger. Sits in fifth position. A good result here will elevate her position in the uh, rankings and uh, maybe she'll get the dream will come true. But it's great to see her just, you know, continue to, to, to fight for the dream she's had since she was a child. Who runs the surf school if she ends up on the CT? Uh, she's got other people. <laughs> she's pretty good good people in Newcastle. Oh, mate, it's Newcastle. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be people to step up. Yeah, 100%. Here we go, Philippa, a little bit off. We talked her up and then that's what happens. That's what happens, but yeah, no, I think that you know, someone, Dad will probably come out and run the surf school, get <laughs> yeah. Craig Ando down there. Yeah, he'll run it. He'll run it. But yeah, it would be good to see her take that journey. It she, would. Nah, uh, she's a wonderful, a wonderful person. For, reward for hard work. Yeah, I know. And she's a great surfer. And like you said, she's missed so narrowly on a number of occasions. And with Newcastle coming up, she'll have a great support base on the beach. And, yep, I feel that this northern bank just hasn't delivered for our Japanese surfer. She's surfing well. Yeah, she's the... definitely connecting the dots, but that, the waves, I feel, are too fat down there. I yes. feel like there's They're too not... much water on the bank, and I yep. feel like she needs to get herself in a position where she can really, like these waves, yeah. this was Ali. Oh, beautiful oh. turn, opening turn. Nothing on uh, after it, but it was a strong first turn. Just with a lot of power off the tail. So people are probably thinking, you know, that aren't, you know, highly in tune with the sport. If they were watching this on television, they'd think, well, you know, the surfer in black, she's got some really good work done further down. And Noah did do some work, but the uh, potency of the wedge that the other surfers are actually surfing enhances the scoring potential. Exactly. And, and, and that's the difference. Like, Zali Kelly's one turn would would probably be a better score than three turns from where Noah is, based on the fact that the waves are so, there's so much water on that bank. Exactly. Here's this bank delivering again for Zali. That's our heat leader. Goes to the air. Not quite sticking it, but had a go. We had saw... Go. Um, Front side. Grab. Did you see the Yes, air? I did. Nixie. Nixie Ryan did. Yes. And did you know she said funny? She said, I haven't been practicing no. airs for a long time. <laughs> uh, I used to do a lot of stuff off the ski for surfing australia yep but she just went oh just she pulled that up. air perfectly had earlier in had the day 
Weeks ago, we are into the afternoon session at the Sister Evolution Pro QS3000 event. Tomorrow we'll be back nice and early. The Destination New South Wales Wave Replay, here we go. Noah up. she's got such a great low centre of gravity, nice and smooth off the rail. But again, it's yeah, just Yeah, the wave's not there, is it's it? It's not Like you pointed right out. Yeah. She's was... having to do the work, where if you watch Zali's one turn here, yeah. look how wedgy that wave is. Yeah. Such a strong manoeuvre. No one needed to move bank. And it's probably too late now. It's never too late, but five minutes remaining. From her, Robert, I'm going to ask you this question. Five. You may or may not know the answer, Adam. She's on the northern bank. She holds third priority. What would happen to her priority if she moved from that bank across to the southern bank? Does she still hold third priority yes. on a different bank? I, I think she does. <laughs> I think she it doesn't change anything because she's in the she's in the in the lineup. But now it does. Yes, now she's got no she's priority. She's got no priority. But I th I f I'm pretty sure the rule would stand because of the fact that she's at the uh, the point where the priority judge would call her into the lineup. Yeah. The fact that she's 300 metres away is pretty much irrelevant. Uh, she's because she did paddle for that wave. She goes back to, to the end. So priority. now she's pushed herself in a position where, if I was Noah Moore, I would stay where she is because there's no there's no advantage of going over to the other three surfaces. It's too late. You might, you might be able to jag the best wave of the day wide where she is, and um, she'll have she'll have yeah. it on her own. But again, like you said, you identified it. Too much water on that bank. Yep. So from a strategy point of view, it's been a mistake. Yes, absolutely. Big shout out to the Central Coast Council for being a big part of the event and to all the staff who have looked after us wonderfully over the years at the Avoca Beach Hotel. Destination New South Wales, of course, are. we go to the polls in New South Wales <laughs> next Saturday. That'll be interesting. So who will be our governing this, our state, I don't know. This great state. Oh. Yeah. I'm not into my politics. I just wake up every day and I'm glad for it. But uh, yeah, we do go. But without the government, and the fact that the government is so invested in surfing as a sport shows the development and the growth of our sport. And you've said about, you know, what the Olympics has done to the sport on a worldwide base, it's, it's incredible. So it's not that sort of niche sport anymore. It's coming to the public eye and to have the government supporting events like this, it's just wonderful. So massive shout out to Destination New South Wales for uh, getting behind it. Absolutely. And recognising how important surfing as a sport is to all these regional areas. People travelling in, surfing, holidaying, and uh, events coming in, economic impact, it all adds up and it's all a uh, positive, proactive thing as we see the next heat in the water paddling out and they're focusing on this bank down the beach. It's the yeah. bank to be on now. And when you think about it, Robbo, during COVID, surfing became the number <laughs> one sport in the world. And that's true. <laughs> Yes, uh, yeah. It was one of the only sports other than walking that you could actually <laughs> go and enjoy through COVID because you were allowed to exercise for an hour a day. You weren't allowed to play golf. No. I can tell you that our beach at Manly... That Everyone you know, went surfing. <laughs> no one worked. It's tenfold. Here we go. Surf up and right in. Important ride for... Natural foot, a lovely style, but that wave just runs out of juice for Arabella Wilson, who locked in a five, trying to offload that one. She needs a 6.35. Uh, interesting time because it seems to be even getting deeper on the southern bank now, so it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out, particularly in the next heat. One minute remaining. It is the Mad Max final minute. 
And there you go, get your phone out, Adam, quick. Two for one. Oh, two for one, you gotta love that. I was actually in the airport yesterday and I had a wonderful nachos. Mad Max at Sydney Airport. Really? Yeah, it was great. Had Did you try and get through with a scan, a nah, recent scan? No, nah. <laughs> get two. I was on a jet star flight. That was about eight hours late as usual. <laughs> so here we go. Surfer in red, up and right in Philip Anderson, looking to. It's another good it's, wave. It's a good wave. She's really got yeah. a great read on this bang. She needs a six-one-three to go to first. So that will be interesting. It's in that ballpark, surely. As we count out the heat, take off out the back. I'm not sure if that was inside the heat time or not, Zali Kelly. It's academic, really. Because Zali and Philippa will be the two surfers progressing through. It's a great wave for Zali. Just, um, wow, a really good wave for Zali. But uh, it'll be Zali Caliper. So that's the end of that heat. Kelly and Anderson through. We'll go to break. We'll be back here for the third heat of the round of 16 at the Sister Evolution. Stay with us. We'll be back very shortly. Welcome back everyone to a beautiful afternoon on the central coast of New South Wales. We're at Avoca Beach. We're into heat number three of the round of 16. And what a heat we've got coming your way. Right now it is Coco Cans up and riding. She's in the black. We've got Dimity Stall in the red. Holly Williams in the uh, green. And Paige Harrop in the white. Robbo, wow. Yep, what this a is a great heat. And uh, Coco Cans just finishing off there. We'll wait for that score to come in. There's been a few scores uh, dropped at the start of this heat while we're at break. So we'll uh, get an update on those very shortly. But yep, these are great heats and they're really important heats as we've been discussing. I just had a look at the R swell for tomorrow. It looks like there's going to be no wind again, a little bit small then this morning but uh hopefully we're going to get good ways as we see Paige Harab who was on an absolute uh burner this morning just on fire found in every good waves so she's had a solid connection with this uh area and again looking strong and that's probably one of the first waves we've seen in a while Robbo that's gone right into the shoreline so yep. It'll be interesting to see where it sits. She worked it for all she could, milked that, that wave. Coco Cans, very impressive. I know. It's a famous name in surfing. Yes, uh, no relation, I'm sure. No, that's generation. That's the Christian name and the surname, famous in surfing. Yes. Here we go, it looks like the surfer in green. Lovely extension, just that body position is really nice 
and uh, again, I, I feel like, you know, all these surfers come into this round, they've all surfed once today, so they, they know and look at the uh, precise nature of the rail work there. Yeah, I've been impressed with Coco Kansas surfing and his uh, replay of Paige Harrop and uh, some strong turns there and Paige uh, then used all her energy to milk this wave through to the shore break. May have only given her an extra half a point, who knows, but uh, at the end of the day they want to get everything out of these waves that they can, so Paige Harab worked it for all it's worth. And we've got Zali Kelly. So, Zali Kelly um, that looked like a great choice, uh, moving south and onto that bank. The waves look uh, a lot of fun out there, Zali. Tell me, how did, how did you feel out there surfing? Yeah, the waves were super fun. I was, like, watching that bank before I um, paddled out. I saw a couple of the boys get a good one out there, and I just, yeah, I kind of knew that the waves were there. I just had to get them, and I was lucky that I got those first two that um, opened up for me. Yeah, I felt like that southern peak... Zali was the spot to be. I know Naramua sort of pushed down towards the north, but yeah, even though the tide's coming up, I feel like there's so much opportunity out there and it would have been such a great way to sort of attack because the waves look really fun. Yeah, the waves were super fun. I was, I just wanted to keep catching them, they were that fun. Now talk about where you're at at the moment, uh, just taking it heat by heat. I feel like you've coming off some really good results on the tweed and how are you feeling in this year like overall um i'm feeling good i know that because i focused on the challenger last year i've got a big ass to qualify for it again but i'm up for the challenge and i'm just trying my best trying my best to go out there and surf every heat as well as i can and just see where i end up after newcastle now talk about what you did during the course of the day. You surfed early this... Did you surf this morning or did you surf yesterday? I surfed yesterday, yeah. And how did you go about spending today just making sure you're in a good frame of mind and knowing that you would have to actually surf probably at the end of the day? How did you go about it? What did you do? Um, I kind of just chilled all morning and then went out for a little surf to the right of the bank before my heat and just watched, yeah. Moving on to tomorrow, you must be excited. A big result here will, you know, catapult you in towards qualification. We wish you all the best of luck. And going off what we saw today, I feel like you're right there and ready to roll. Thank you so much. Have a great day, Zali. She is absolutely ripping. Yes, no, that was a great heat. And um, both Zali and Philippa enjoyed those waves out there and uh, they're through to the final day. And Paige Harrop uh, is off to a good start, a 5.33 for her opening ride. I think she's got another wave score to come in very shortly. Coco Cairns also, I think, has a wave score to come in. Interesting, uh, Zali was talking about, you know, she'd watched the boys on that right bank and she was always going to go to that bank because she felt like, you know, the bulk of the scores were going to come from that side of the peak. And, and like, she easily got the two best waves, yeah. identified waves that had quite a bit of punch to it, quite a bit of wedge to it as well, and that's what the judges love to see. She looked very calm then, to be honest. She did. No, she looks calm, focused, and, um, yeah. There's uh, a replay of Paige Harrib on her second scoring ride. Oh, that was such a nice turn from the surfer in green. Yeah, so uh, talking with Zali there about, you know, last year, the challenger and the fact that, you know, it was a learning experience. I feel like she would have come out, out of that experience a lot more mature and, uh, and she looks a lot more, you know, relaxed in her demeanour when it comes to competing. And talking about someone who's mature and has the runs on the board, this lady certainly has Dimity Stall just reading the bank perfectly here great way for dimity um she didn't have um the the great start the first eight minutes weren't uh, kind to dimity she only had a one point uh, ride on the scoreboard but that wave that she just scored could well be the best wave of the heat oh coco ho nice powerful maneuver she's got power in her game for sure coco ho 
Coco Ho, Coco oh, Cans. I was, I was going to wait for you there. <laughs> yeah, you confused me earlier. You know what, because you said uh, I know, but Coco no. and the Cans, cans are the two uh, famous names, but what about the rail work of that one turn? I know. We spoke about it earlier, very powerful. Robo, yep. About the fact that, you know, we've seen some big numbers drop for just one manoeuvre. It'll be interesting to see what the yeah, judges think. Because it will. I love the speed she actually carried into that turn. And Dimity here. This is a good wave. Lots, um, multiple manoeuvres, power, precision, and yeah, gets the best out of this wave. So, Dimity Stoyle has put herself right in the game, and here's the replay of Coco Cans. And yeah, wow. extension. Wow, I love the extension, but what I love more was the flow from the bottom of the wave, just that bottom end turn, and that created that speed line. Well, we'll wait for those scores to come in. I'm calling it could be the best wave of the heat, just based off one turn. I'm We've not seen sure. It happen. I feel Dimity's might be the best wave as well, so it's uh, it's tricky. We'll have to throw our, our judging tickets out the window very shortly. Yes. But, but yeah, I, I love the speed and the reaction time from the surfer in a black on that one turn. Of course, Dimity Stall, she put together a solid series of turns, just that tradesman like attitude. and. Her ability to find the best waves in heats is pretty much one of her strengths when it comes to competing. Good to see Ever all the locals down here. This bloke's probably thinking, mate, I'm gonna throw a line out here shortly. Yeah. When are you guys racking off? What would be the fish of choice out there? Adam, what do they catch mm, on them? I don't know, maybe. Maybe Taylor or something, I don't know. You're not well, I am, that is the one thing I cannot do in my life. Fish. I am You horrendous. don't have the patience. No, never been able to. But the only thing I can catch when I'm fishing is a cold. <laughs> so waiting on these scores to lock in. So judges having a really yeah, good to, think about it. They're yep. trying to sort of go back to the best waves of the heat as we see Holly up and right in. Smooth just sets his turn up into the lip and unable to carry through that manoeuvre. But yeah, I think they're, what they're doing is they're going back to what Paige Harab did on that 5-3-3, three, three, decide to, to decipher exactly what score they want to give both Dimity and Coco for that last exchange. And they can work it out precisely because they have, yeah. they have replays. Uh, replays. They, they call up waves, they analyse them, they have split screens where they can analyse them one-on-one -on -one, and they can work out exactly who gets the better ride so even though we pitch scores we don't have access to all the information the judges do so they're always going to get it right now we're we sometimes going to get it right so at the moment what i like is the fact that dimity's got a little bit more uh busier even though she took eight minutes to get away, in the last seat, I felt like she waited to about the 15 minute mark to actually get off to a start. And I feel like she's thought about that process yep. and making sure that she doesn't leave herself short in this round of 16 heat. She's gone to work a little bit earlier than she did in that heat this morning. And she's so, a very experienced competitor, Dimity. She's been on the big stage. She works on the big stage. She works well. on the big stage as well. And uh, yeah, she had a number of seasons on the championship tour um, where she surfed incredibly well up against the world's best. So Dimity's had a great career. Paige Harrop has also had an incredible career on the big stage. Seven years on the championship surf. Uh, and a lot of big results in amongst that as well for Paige Harrop. And every chance, every chance, both of them will re-qualify at some stage, so... Oh, I think, you know, being around it at the moment for Dimity too, as she said in a post-seed interview, sort of has lit the fire a bit too, as yeah. we see uh, Dimity have a look at that way. But she said there's sort of two sides of that story where you, she looks at some of the surfing and goes, oh, wow, that's intense. But she also, is, you know, she's getting a little bit itchy feet. She yeah. wants to be a part of it. She knows she's Get got the skill there. set. Yep, it's an exciting tour. How about Caitlin Simmers? Yeah. <laughs> she actually, along with Taj Burrow, they're the only two surfers yes. I think, in the history of our sport to ever knock back qualification standings. 
Yep. Imagine having that amount of ability and confidence. And then the next year she went, you know what? Why not? Yep, oh, there I, we go. I, I you get, called it. Yep, your ticket's back. My ticket is secure. back. A six point ride last of the surfer Coco Cans and just on the base of the speed and, and just the the power she threw into that one manoeuvre, six point ride and Dimney saw a five point one three, so yep. It's game on here. It's game on. Super, super close as well. 5.13 for Dimity, 4.93 for Holly. Paige Harab has a 5.33. Here's a replay of it. Wow. Look at that. Powerful, precision, extended turn, and that's what scored the six-point ride for Coco Cairns, and that's why she's in the lead. Paige Harab second. Only needs a 4.35 to go to first, looking to get rid of a 4.3. Holly Williams, 4.93 and a 3.6 in third spot. And Dimity Stoyle with a 5.13 and a 1. Nothing separating them, really. It's extremely close. It's going to get down to these uh, second wave scores that they have to get. Yeah, I love the, uh, you know, the power off the bottom for Coco Cans. And the fact was, if you slowed that wave down, you'd see all the fins exposed yep. and, and that's what gave that speed line when you talk to young grommets you always talk about the most important part of a junior surface development watch how she comes off the bottom you can see it just the, the amount of water coming from the bottom of the board and those fins sort of in your face and yep. the whole thing with you know young surface is to get them to understand the importance of a solid bottom end turn. Set up by that beautiful bottom turn. 100%. Yeah. There's no surfer in the world who's at the elite level. That who, doesn't have a great bottom turn. 100%. Yeah. You try to talk that, to, tell that to 11 year olds yeah. and 12 year olds. They go, what are you talking about? Yeah. No, it is. Yeah. Sets it up. And Coco Cans has set herself up to advance into quarters the quarters and that's where these big points start to come in and this is a really tight heat rob have a look at it it is nothing like she, separating coco needs to offload that 3.67 she'll be well aware of that right now it is priority over to the surfer in black and she's going to go oh, for wow. it nice off the bottom into the lip this wave starts to taper off a little bit and uh. that that slowed down her momentum yep i don't think she'll get rid of the 3.67 on that so back out there and Plenty of time, just under 14 minutes. Priority now with Dimity Stoyle. So Dimity, using all her experience, she'll be looking to use that priority really smartly because she knows she's got a decent score on the board, a 5.13. Has priority at the halfway stage. She'll want to use that priority in a smart, clever way and put herself into the lead. That has to be her aim. Yep, she's got plenty of time on the clock too. These 30-minute heats have worked wonders, I think, for everyone today because you can just see uh, there's, a, there's a certain calmness when they extend the heats out. Yeah, it, it, it's not hectic. It mentally, you know, it mentally gives the uh, athletes an opportunity to really sort of think about their strategy and not be over-pressurised in, in what is going on in the, in the lineup. So it's yep. more about, you know, the opportunities you take Get my two good waves. They're more than the frantic pace of a 20 minute heat. Yeah. Great day of surfing. When you think back, like we've been at it since 8 a.m. And, and I feel like, you know, the surfing has been on point the whole day. It has. It's been a fantastic day. And um, there's a takeoff page, Harab, going left here. Looking to get rid of a 4.3, a 4.35 or better would put her into first, but that wave ran into deep water. Deeper water, Paul Kelly. Mm. Good song. <laughs> Anyone ever told you you look a little bit like Paul Kelly? Uh, no, I normally <laughs> get asked uh, many times, can you sign something? I'm like, oh, yeah. They You're Paul people, Kelly? No, I think I'm Justin Langer. Oh, there you go. Irritates me. But uh, you're not the only person who said the Paul Kelly thing. The Paul Kelly thing, yeah. there you go. Here we go, Paige Harrop, up and right in, nice carve, nice, you know, just that really fluent 
rail work, just engaging the rail and... Coco cans. Coco cans, impressive. I'd love to know what board she's riding because that board looks ultra spicy. It's got a lot of speed to it and the bigger the section, the more speed she's able to carry. No change to the situation. So those rides from Paige and Coco did not change their score line. Dimity, holding priority. She's going to be patient. She's got plenty of time. So she can sit there and use this priority to advantage big time. Yeah, she's got time on the clock and she's also got the skill set. She won't be rushed into, uh, you know, taking waves that aren't going to offer up that scoring potential. She only needs a 4.51. And this is a really tight battle because for the most part we've seen at least one surfer really sort of extend with a couple of solid scores. I feel like this is a much tighter situation. Surfer in white page Harab with third prod. Have a look at this wave and not able no to get good. onto it. Just under 11 minutes to go. Like I said, we're going to run right through to the completion of this round of 16 in the women's at the Sister Evolution Pro for 2023. Jeez, hasn't this year just flown by? It has. And all the focus on the sport heads to Australia right now with uh, this event and the big one in Newcastle next week. Then on to the CTs and the Challenger events. It's all going to happen in the next... Uh... It's the entree yes. into the main event when the CT hits town. Yep. That's going to be intriguing in itself when you consider where everyone is positioned on the ratings and there's some big names. They're going to have to pull I know. out of the hat. <laughs> Paige Harrop. What she got here. Working it through. Again, she's not going to be able to get rid of that 4.3 on that ride. She wants to improve on the 4.3 because Dimity only requires a 4.51 and Holly only requires a 4.71 and they hold first and second priority respectively. They sit in fourth and third positions respectively. Nine minutes on the clock, plenty of time. There's a lot of interest in this wave, Adam. Here we go. Up and right in the surfing red. Little chandelier, but she's going to have to get to work. She needs something on the inside of that wave. And I don't know, Rob, if that's going to be enough. I don't know either. We'll have to uh, analyse the replays. And Holly Williams uh, got a decent wave behind there, so that may be interesting as well. So they've used their priority. They've thrown the dice on it. Dimity needed a 4.51. Holly needs a 4.71. Let's have a look. Good takeoff. Looked for a little bit of a cover up. Didn't get it. A cut back there. And then the wave. Another cut back. Yeah, I, I'm not feeling it. And Holly Williams gets around. I'm not feeling it for either of them, Adam. Yeah. It looked good on takeoff, Dimity's way, but it, yeah. I, I felt like it sort of ran away too quick. So a 4.51, uh, I think it's going to come in under, but again, you just don't know. Because there wasn't much meat on the, left on the bone at the end of that way. It didn't like open up towards, no. towards the north. So see what the judges think. The good thing for Dimity, there's still just under eight to go. So, so there's still plenty of time, but she has used up priority now. They'll be looking at it. The scores have not dropped, so the judges will be giving it a lot of consideration. There you go. We're on the ball, Adam. A 3.6 for both of them. So not enough for either surfer. Dimity requires a 4.51 still, and Holly requires a 4.71. They've relinquished their first and second priority positions. So the ball is in the court of the surfers currently in first and second position. Coco Cairns and Paige Harib. Here's a nice ride out the back. This is a Holly. good wave, Holly. Wow. She's chosen a great wave. So this will be a change in situation, I'm sure. So clever move to pick that, off that left. That goes back to that, you know, being a little bit more freed up. Yep, Without priority. under priority. 
paddling back out. Oh, I'll just paddle over this peak and there you go. Dimity taking off on that wave, did not deliver, but Holly Williams stand by for that score to come in. Yeah, that was a smart move and the execution. Here we go. That look first at this. turn was powerful and yep. the second manoeuvre, look at that, and it's a grower, Robbo. Yep, out of nowhere, left as she's paddling back out and that's going to change the situation of this heat. Holly Williams needs the 4.71. Down to six to go. We spoke about it earlier. Coco can still trying to offload that, that score. And there it is, that last wave. 4.93 and a 4.9. Holly Williams in the lead. What a tight heat this is. It is. Coco Cairns now in second position looking for a 3.83. Here's a replay of it from a different angle. Nice opening turn. Gets to work on multiple top to bottom turns. The wave delivered for her in a big way and she's in the lead but it's uh it's still a narrow lead with um around five minutes remaining five and a half minutes 4.93 and a 4.9 coco cans only requires a 4.83 to go to first and paige harrod looking for a 4.35 to go to second not much more and she would go to first and dimity Stoyle very much still in the hunt looking for a 4.55 five minutes yeah so we've just been told holly williams is headed towards the uh, far bank so well it worked for her she that's where she picked off the left out of nowhere she might get another big score over there she actually, she actually hasn't word. gone she hasn't gone way to the north she's just gone marginally to the north Picked off that left, which we haven't seen ridden, and uh, got the score to put herself in the lead. She's under fourth priority. There's no point going out and mixing it with the other three. She's gone back over there and uh, looking for another good score. Yeah, good strategy. Stage, that's a smart move because it frees her up to, to have a crack at anything she likes. And you can see the other three competitors now moving towards the north. And I think they've just been pulled a little bit too south, so they're trying to put themselves back in the prime position on the bank. As we head down towards the last four minutes of the heat, this is a very tight encounter, and it is a surfer in black losing, losing priority. priority. Wow. And Paige Harib now has priority. That's a dangerous surfer to give priority to. She's Double. in third spot. Paige Harib, the New Zealander, all the experience and know-how and she's got priority and here she goes looking for a 4.35 nice first turn nice second turn she thinks she got the score she, felt she gave that. the fist pump and you don't see a lot of emotion from Paige for most part and uh she felt that and she felt that was going to give her the score required and look at this thing down the peak holly williams that'll run into this inside corner but will it still stand up on the bank on this well, high sort of time? is oh. doing a lot more when because as you identified she's a little bit further down towards the south from where noah amura was positioned and that wave sort of gave her enough opportunity she might improve and paige might get the score so well Coco Cairns under pressure here, and Dimity Stoyle. Dimity now holding priority, another very dangerous surfer to give priority to. Here's a replay of Holly Williams on this uh, right down the bank. This one, just when we thought it was going to hit deep water, it, uh, it gave a little. There was a critical section there where she was able to get a good turn in. Doesn't finish it off. I'm not sure if that's going to improve her score, to be honest. Paige Arab, on the other hand, a 5.73 puts her into the lead. So we said it was dangerous to give a surfer like Paige priority at the, in the dying minutes. It certainly was. She's gone from third to first position with a 5.73 and a 5.33. Holly Williams in second. And Coco Cairns doesn't need much at all. Here's a replay of Paige Harrop getting the 5.73. 
the bulk two, of the score was that second turn. Yep, yeah, two nice turns. She knew what she had to do. She did it with something up her sleeve. Now, Coco Cans only requires a 3.83, one and a half minutes. She'd be kicking herself right now. Oh. She had priority she and had went for a wave and did not get on her. So she knows that she opened up the door for, for someone Paige. Yep. with Paige stature and, and experience. And she didn't. She doesn't need much to turn the tide. And she got the job done with that two-turn combination and puts the Kiwi, the current leader of the series, back in a position of advancement. So it has turned the tables with one minute to go. Will there be another opportunity for the surfer in black? Yeah, as you said, only needs a 3.83. It's not a lot. In fact, Dimity Stoyle only needs, needs a 4.70. Oh, and no. and there's a priority. set approaching. Yep. 50 seconds. This set will get into the lineup comfortably in time. Let's see what they're going to deliver here. Right, Who's in position? This is a great set. Dimity Stoyle. Perfectly positioned. What's she got here? Okay. Well, we thought it was a great wave. It crumbled on the inside. Not Dimity's fault. The wave just did not stand up for her. She was a little bit deep on the bank there. Yeah. I think Holt, I think Coco would have had a great line into that wave, but unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be the score required. We're into the Mad Max minute, and Holly Williams are up and riding once more, surfing green. She has really been impressive in this heat, and you've got to say it, the change of the dynamics of this round three or round of 16 heat was that paddle. That was, absolutely. Well, we'll go to a break. We'll be back shortly for heat number four of the round of 16. So don't go anywhere. It'll be the final heat of the day. We'll be back very shortly at beautiful Avoca Beach. It's a beautiful day. Huge thanks to Surfing New South Wales for getting out there. Not only um, communicating with people about why it's important to not use single-use plastic, but how easy it can be to transition and stop it and swap it. We're basically down here to showcase how we are reducing our plastic footprint through all things like keep cups and reusable water bottles and our beautiful toggles which we use instead of cable ties. We've invested in about 100 water bottles and keep cups. Um, we've distributed to the whole team. You know, everyone's so passionate about this program and so enthusiastic to be a part of it. We're doing our bit to give surfers a cleaner ocean and save the environment for a better future. issue is a complex problem, but it can be solved. Take three for the sea! Earth Ava and take three for the sea. Welcome back everyone. This is the final heat of the day at the Sis Evolution Pro Central Coast. Beautiful place, the sun's out, the weather's been fantastic and the surfing has been on point. I'm in the booth with Steve Robinson right now and Robbo, what a great way to finish off what's been a bumper day of surfing. Look at our true up and riding. Lovely first turn and really solid engagement on the rails, just working this inside section you be stoked with that. Final heat, big day. It's been hot and uh, offshore winds all day. There's been great surfing and a lot of heats decided on such a cr 
critical day for all these surfers. They're vying for points. They're chasing prize money, but points are probably more important as they try and uh, achieve the dream and get onto the Challenger Series. Yeah, this is one young lady doing exactly that. Elise Cooper looked very solid there on, on that first couple of turns. And we saw uh, a score about to lock in for True Star as well. So, yeah, this is a serious, serious times for these athletes because... A win here or a massive result is going to dead set elevate you towards qualification. Only four spots. True gets a little bit caught up on that first turn, but able to ride out. And then I love the way she engages the rail and really leans into that. Judges love to see rail work and power and speed and flow. Elise Cooper also looking solid. A two turn combination to start. So difference between a round of 16 and a quarter final when it comes to points could be the difference between you getting onto the challenger or not that's absolutely how it is. And true styling opens oh, doesn't open but gets a score of 5.33 so she'll be happy with that like you said she, at the first turn wasn't quite precisely executed but she recovered from that and reeled off some nice turns after it and was well rewarded with a 5.33 so a reasonable start for true styling Elise Cooper, 3.33. She'll be hoping to do better than that. And here we go, True Starling again. And riding out of that one. So a better first turn on that one. We'll be interested to see what that uh, score comes in at. Yeah, but been ultra impressed by True's con uh, consistency in 2023. She's got such a great platform when it comes to, you know, her surfing. But I felt like... It's taken her a couple of years just to find that groove and that consistency in her performances. And she's definitely done that in 2023. And again, she's come out of the blocks firing. And we await that sec sec third wave score of True Starling, which will probably be her second scoring ride on the score chart and increase her lead. And here we have a surfer going left. Nixie Ryan, but that wave not cooperating at all. Will Nixie go to the air again? Only time will tell. She's the current uh, defending champ, I think, of the series. And she's also right up there in the, uh, in the ratings at the moment. So she's had such a solid run into th in this series, current series of, of events. And like she said, she wasn't surprised that she went to the air. She just felt it and had a crack. Yeah. Well, as commentators asking the question, we say, you must have been practicing your airs. And she told us, no, I haven't practiced them for years. <laughs> <laughs> True Starling scored a 6.1. So that's the um, best score of the heat so far. She has the two top scoring rides, a 6.1, a 5.33. So a good start to the heat for True Starling. Yep, great way to start, just putting herself right at the top of the ratings as we see Nixie again up and right. And on the forehand this side, coming around, the surfer from Lennox Head, she sees no value in that ride, so she's out. But yeah, momentum, uh, you know, builds confidence and all these four surfers come in in a good mindset, struggling through some really big heats at the early stages of this event. Like I said, I feel right now True Sailing is just starting to find, you know, the magic when it comes to competing. And talking about magic, the young Japanese server, look at how wow. dynamic these turns are. Wow. She's got such a solid base, and that is going to be an amazing way to start. She's Matsuoka. She is ripping on that wave. That was super impressive, Adam. I'm going up into the excellent range Yeah. Just, without looking at the replay. Just the aggressive nature of those turns and, and where she placed the surfboard. linking them together with speed and precision, I was impressed. Oh, true. Setting myself up for a big fall, but I'm going into the excellent range uh, on I'm, that score. I'm with you. I just felt it was dynamic surfing. Here we go. At least, nice turn off the bottom. In another turn. Wow, that was sick. She releases the tail. Third manoeuvre, Elise Cooper looking switched on and strong. The goofy footers. 
enjoying the uh, backhand attack on these rights. Matsuoka yeah. from Japan. Anun Matsuoka, she comes into this series right now ranked third. So she's had some big results. Okay, here we go. Watch this. Off the bottom, critical in the top. But watch these turns here. Right in the pocket with power. Snaps hard. A well, series. You have seen this young lady surf. She, was, she got third, equal third at Nias. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I get confused. There's surfers oh, coming they're, they're from everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, she was on fire in Nias. And like you said, it's going to be interesting on Corn. That is easily going to be up into the good to the excellent range. At least Cooper waiting on a score to drop in. That'll she be a good nice score work. as well. Has Look to be. Look at these waves. It's starting to turn on again. Here we go. Nixie Ryan up on the forehand. This is like a, a mini point break. <laughs> Wow, just exploding onto that rail and just digging in. Lovely transition for Nixie Ryan. And again, like all these four surfers are in tune with the ocean. So we spoke about True Starling's start of this heat. She locked yeah. in a 6.1 and a 533. All the others are in the game now. I have a feeling all four surfers are going to be right up there. Look at that, a 7.83. We're close, yep. And Elise Cooper, seven. No, fantastic. And uh, we've got the winner of the last heat, Paige Harab. Steve Robbo here with Adam Hennessy. Well done, Paige. It must have been a nerve-wracking heat out there for you because it was super close. Yeah, thank you. It, um, yeah, it changed a couple of times. And, I mean, another ex-CT surfer in that heat and a couple of good up-and-comers. So it was a pretty tough heat. And, um, yeah, happy to get through that one. Uh, were you surprised towards the end of the heat when uh, you didn't have priority and Coco Cairns went for a wave and lost priority? That really opened the door for you. Yeah, that helped me out a lot. Um, I thought she was going to sit on me the whole time. So, yeah, happy with that one. <laughs> yeah, I was saying that you can't leave the door open for experienced campaigners and I felt like as soon as she did that you went to work to find something and, and to identify something that was going to offer enough scoring potential for you to get the job done yeah it was pretty tricky actually um because obviously dimity um didn't need much either so i knew that i had to get like a four something but um yeah there wasn't that much coming through and um yeah it was pretty tricky to decide what one to take and you know, there could always be a better one behind it for Dimity get in, to get into. But, um, yeah, I was, I was lucky with how it played out. Well, well done, Paige. We love what you're doing and uh, you're well positioned in this series. Uh, but you've got to keep your eye on the ball and keep, the, keep these good results running. Good luck tomorrow as we head into uh, the real pointy end of this event. Cool. Thanks, guys. Yeah, absolutely ripping, and it'd be great to see her take that next step again. She was there for seven years, and talking about, you know, what, you know, heats that switch on and switch off, I was just thinking about that, because it was a slow heat for those last four surfers, but this heat has just switched come out on. all guns are blazing. Look at this, Nixie Ryan, last wave, a six-point ride. Elise Cooper locked in a seven, Yep. and then you have the Japanese surfer, we spoke about just the, the dominance on the backhand, a 7.83, and True Starling still sits in the lead. Nixie Ryan fighting back. It is she rapid is. fire. Yep. What a great way to finish the day. Yes, it is. It's been a fantastic heat up to date. 18 minutes re left in the heat. It's fully game on. The surfer in first position absolutely no longer holding a, a great position of strength with these surfers racking up the scores. And Nixie Ryan has a score to drop, I think. And, um, yeah, a great finish to the day. What has been a fantastic day. Here we go. Take off. True, True styling. And, um, yep, that wave not cooperating for True, so that's not going to improve her score line at all. Puts her into fourth priority, but... No great loss because there's plenty of time left. And as we saw in that last heat, Adam, uh, Holly Williams not having priority actually helped her cause because um, she was able to duck off and pick off a left-hander, which got her through the heat. 
Yeah, I think at times surfers can uh, lose sort of track of where they're at when, they're, when they've got priority. But in Holly's situation, it just freed her up and allowed her to sort of move around. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But in yeah. her circumstance, it, it definitely worked. worked for her. Yep, absolutely. Coco Cairns would be having nightmares about paddling for that last oh, wave. <laughs> she would be so disappointed. And, I mean, it probably looked like a good wave when it hit the bank, but it just, with yeah. that higher tide coming in and... And uh, it just didn't allow her to get in. It maybe she was a little bit too far over towards the north. She needed to be a bit more south to get into that way. But yeah, it was definitely something she's going to have to look at, identify, and she'll come back from that because yeah. her surfing is on point. Yeah, no, I agree. So 16 minutes to go great day massive shout out to everyone who's been online on seven plus watching the webcast Visla, new south wales pro surf series the last event of a four event series this is the sister evolution pro big shout out to the sister brand of Visla and our presenting sponsor mad mex along with our supporting partners central coast council Avoca beach hotel destination new south wales wsl and surfing new south wales here we go, true, up and riding once more. That wave not offering anything that she likes, but uh, yeah, Robbo, exciting day. It's been a great one to commentate. I feel like we've been blessed with such good conditions. Not a drop of wind when you think about it, or n not enough to win to cause any havoc. In no, fact, it's remained the offshore. offshores have been really firing up the juices as we see the surfer in white. Elise Cooper up and riding. This wave is going to have to sit up on the bank. That's and twice we've seen both yeah. True and Surfer in white taking off. And, the, and that's when it becomes a little bit tricky about trying to identify the waves that are going to stand up on the peak. It is very tricky because that looked like a good wave when she took off on it. 100%. Got sold a dummy, as we say in the NRL. <laughs> Here, we, Here go. we go. Japanese surfer. Again. Wow. He's got That's such an amazing backhand. Surfer from Japan, Matsuoko. She's going to the lead, Adam. Oh, just slightly. <laughs> Again, we spoke about it. She's in third position on the current ra rankings for the Asian Tour. It's an important event. If it she, is if, if super she important. A massive result here it's going to consolidate her spot and give her an opportunity imagine watching the we want to see her on snapper. the snapper we want to see her on the challenger <laughs> imagine her at snapper on a backhand uh, beautiful surfing from the japanese surfer that was, is definitely going to be a great way to back up and look, she's picked off the, the right wave that does stand up on the bank. And very powerful, great backhand surfing. And finishes off superbly. So good for the Japanese surfers, good for the surfers from the Asia region. They're emerging fast, headed by Rio Waida. They're coming from everywhere out of Asia. And there it is. She didn't get the eight on the first one, but she did on the second, Adam. 8.0, excellent score. Matsuoko is in the lead. She has an extremely healthy lead with a heat tally of 15.83. Second position, however, is certainly up for grabs. That is super close, and there'll be a lot of focus on fighting out for second position, but I feel even with 12 and a half minutes remaining, Matsuoko has opened up a big lead. Yeah, that's an impressive performance from the Japanese server, Nixie, Ryan up and riding and engaging the rail, just really lovely free-flowing, explosive maneuver there, but just love the, the pace she sets on this wave. Yep, I feel she's going to second, and uh, Elise Cooper, well, we need to see the first uh, manoeuvres on that wave, but uh, she's uh, right in the hunt here as well. 
So Nixie Ryan needed a 5.44. I think she's going to get that, Adam. Yeah, I do, but I'd love to see what Elise did on the outside. Just look at how much water she disperses there. That's wow. a great turn. That's a great turn. A little bit caught on the second turn, but this turn there, yeah. exploding through the lip. Unfortunately, she didn't ride out of this final manoeuvre, but the, the bulk of that score has already been there. And out the back, at least, you know, a nice series of turns. So this is a three-turn combination as well for Elise Cooper. Looking very solid indeed. Yep. So that, I reckon that's going to easily better that 3.33 and it's going to make the requirement for Nixie a lot more Yep. and might push it into the 6.5 or 7 point range. Yeah, you're right. Here's Ed. She's having a fantastic heat. Oh, she's having a dream run in this. Yep. Look at the way she's just attacking <laughs> these inside bowls. She's got every way to stand up I know. on the bank. The waves she catches don't... They don't don't fatten up, up. At all. <laughs> don't stand up for her. So we'll call it good wave choice, but I think there's an element of luck in picking off the waves as well, and she's uh, she's got that with her. But as far as surfing ability goes, uh, Matsuoko has it all on the backhand anyway. This is great surfing. Right now, Rob, I feel like True Stalin is in a, in a yeah. pretty... She started off magnificently. She was in the lead. situation. But, uh, yeah, the other women have uh, found their rhythm. And there we go, Adam. Look at those scores. Nixie Ryan with a 7.77 has gone into second briefly. Elise, Elise Cooper, Cooper with a pair of seven-point rides has uh, jumped from fourth back up into second position. Wow, what a turn of events in this heat. Ladies and gentlemen, True Starling's basically gone from first to fourth. She needs an 8.07. And that last exchange, Nixie Ryan loaded up with a 7.77 7 and fighting back, Elise Cooper locks in a 7.17 with 10 to go. In fact, when you have a look at this, even the surfer in green isn't secure at this stage and no. her performance has just been electrifying it has yep love it another intriguing heat towards the back end of this heat because nixie's going to need a pretty good score she's got a nice looking wave is she too deep can she come out of the barrel no she cannot so true starling holds priority she knows she needs an 8.07 she can break it into increments but for her she knows she can get an 8.7, but it's going to have to be a really good wave. It's going to have to be an excellent ride. At least Cooper holding a 7.17 and a 7. She wants to get rid of the 7. <laughs> she, she, <laughs> she needs to. She needs an 8.66 to take the lead, and that will give her a little bit of breathing space. But this is such a big heat. Yep. You've got the surfer in third, sitting there with a 13.772 wave combination. That's incredible. Yep. And a 7.77 to her name. Six is the backup, and she only needs a 6.4 to go to second. So, yeah, an intriguing heat. I was going to ask about uh, what the highlight of the day was. It could be this heat. It could be Matsuoko. It could be Nixie Ryan or Alice Cooper. Or it could be TK Huku Butler. And, um, oh, that was a sick heat. That was a fun <laughs> heat. Oh, there's but been this so could many. be the one. Yeah, I know. There's been uh, action all day. Okay, Elise Cooper comes into this event ranked eighth. She ah. needs a result here. And here we go, True Sowing on a good looking wave. Comes in that first turn, lovely connection with the lip, flying down the line, trying to give herself some space. That's a solid two turn combination. Yep. Great choice of uh, wave, using priority really smartly. So that's brought her back into the game. Yep, absolutely. I'd say that's her best scoring ride. But when you look at where they sit on the rankings, Nixie Ryan sits at number four. So it's only the top four women. But Philippa already threw. She's at five. So it's starting to really heat up. And that's what we want. It's yep. probably a bit nerve wracking for oh, the, uh, the, the, the different camps of the athletes. But for us as the public, wow. Waiting on this score to lock in with seven minutes to go. Elise Cooper with priority. She's in second position. The Japanese surfer who's been absolutely blowing up with an eight and a seven point 
8-3. She has second priority. Nixie Ryan, incredibly, she's in third. And True Starling looking for a big number. I want to know what that last score was to see if she shortened the requirement. And this is where, oh, wow. Robbo, look at that. <laughs> True Starling just locks in an 8.13. And goes to second yeah. position. Only needs a 7.7 7 to power go to first. Yeah. Love to get a replay of those. Last wave of the surfer in lap. True Starling, just under pressure. As I said, the consistency of her performances has been wonderful to watch. And look at the power. Bang, into the lip that first turn. And this second turn, again, just waited. Critical airdrop finish. Rides out of it. She doesn't claim a lot, and she didn't really no. claim that either, but I felt Excellent like... wave. She, Best she, wave of the she heat. Loved it. She was liking it. So, yep, the heat is right on. Have a look at those four two-wave combinations. Lucy Ryan's in fourth. She's got a 13.77. This has definitely been the highlight of my day. Yep. Watching these four athletes just attack... Alice Cooper holding priority, only needs a 7.07. .07. And Nixie Ryan in fourth position, only requiring a 6.47. Just look at that and go, how can this be? This no. is incredible. It's been a great heat. That might be an indication the waves are going to stick around for tomorrow. So if you can't be at the beach tomorrow, come join us. Tune back in. Tune yep. back in. We'll it's be, be here. A fantastic day. We go red. You see up and riding. Wow, this is an important wave, but just the one manoeuvre, it was a good manoeuvre, but the wave didn't uh, offer anything else. Needs a 6.47. Just under five to go. So she needed an 8.06. I know. An 8.13. Yep. And Elise Cooper sitting out there holding priority needs a 7.07. .07. Four and a half minutes to do it in. Pretty sure she's going to get the opportunity. What a brutal sport. It's been it such a clinic for all four surfers. These four athletes have just put on a wonderful show and there's going to be Another twist in the tail, I feel. I feel like there's been a real pulse in the swell. And I feel like, you know, we've had some of the better conditions we've had in the last couple of hours right now. And that has allowed these athletes to really open up. But when you look at the three best waves of the heat, Surfer from Japan with that eight point ride, True Starling with that last ride in 8.13 and that 7.83. 7 7 yeah. yeah, that 7.83 solid connection on the back end. And then you have Nixie and Elise with two big scores of their own. Okay, eyes on the lineup. Elise Cooper's having a close look at this wave. Will she throw the dice at him? Gonna have to have a crack at something. Here we go, Elise up and right in surfing. So strong, lovely extension. Comes around into the lip again. She's gonna get around the corner. Nice turn and kicks on out. Is that gonna be a 7.07? 7 .07. I don't know. I don't know, I'm not a judge. No. But I'm not gonna sit on the fence. I'm gonna look at the replay and I'm gonna give it a score. Oh, <laughs> you got your ticket back out yeah. here. No, judging tickets come out. Yep. Now, I, I will go back to her best wave. And uh, I don't know. I feel They're like going to analyse this closely. It might come in just... She surfed it harder. well. She, she was, she's absolutely ripping, to be yep. honest. She's ripping the bag out of it. But okay. the wave. Let's have I a need look. to have a Did close look at up? this. Nice bottom turn into top turn combination. Round that section into the critical part of the wave. Wave died out on her. I'm only going to give her a 6.5. Well, 
Let's see what the judges think of that last wave. They're probably having a good look at it. And, and it was more that the wave tapered off. It did. It wasn't uh, Elisa's fault that I didn't give her the score. The wave uh, didn't deliver the full opportunity, I think. That's just my opinion, and it counts for nothing, really. And True Starling looking to get rid of a 6.1. She won't do it on that wave. Take off here. All right, this is an important wave for Nixie Ryan. Very important. Good start to it. It's lining up on the inside. It's a critical section. Looking for a 6.47. Wave ran out on her as well. I'm not feeling the 6.47 on that one. As we get down, with the clock ticking. That last of Elise Cooper was not enough. It was only a 4.73. Wow, I gave it a 6.5. Yeah, so <laughs> your ticket goes back yeah, in the yeah, bin. Yeah. But no, but it wasn't the surfing. It no, was truly it was based the on the quality of the wave. It was. She, she might have another opportunity. She's still back in the lineup, but it is the Japanese surfer who has priority. She's up and riding again. And again, she's found herself a nice little pocket to work with. Will it open up? No. Deep water. Fans up on the bank. 35 seconds. True Starling wants to know the position. Elise Cooper holding priority. Time could be the biggest enemy for Elise with under 20 seconds remaining. There's a line there, Adam. Will she get it in time? She has the priority. Here we go, Nixie up and riding. Nixie riding on the inside. That's not going to do the job. At least that wave did not stand up for her as we count out the heat. And yep, what an amazing finish to the day. And there goes Elise after the siren. So, the Japanese surfer and true styling. Wow, what a heat, what a way to wrap up. Perfect First way to wrap up, a cast. fantastic day it was, an amazing day. There's the uh, final heat winner, great performance from her, along with true styling. What can we expect tomorrow, Adam? I think we're gonna get waves, yeah, maybe in the uh, three foot range and pretty clean. It doesn't look like a lot of wind, but what we're gonna see is we're going to see the performance levels and what we see right there is the Japanese contingent frothing right now to see this young lady just absolutely on a burner out there but yeah tomorrow another exciting day the pressure's going to continue to build because we are getting towards the business end of this sister evolution pro and the Vistler pro part of the surf new south wales pro surf series we're going to throw off some highlights it's been great to be here robo enjoy i'll be back tomorrow with you adam yeah. At this beach, a beautiful place to be. Enjoy your afternoon, folks.
Kings when in the building in the building is a happy city. If I was born to be a winner, then I'ma grow up to be go get up. But sweat your tears written in the blacks of kings. One in the million, in the building is a happy sin. I've been a champion for all of my life. Uh -huh. Has the young and golden medals more than something I like. That's how we always look for challenges. The sorcerer's type. Uh -huh. Always wear the hazard is left hook. So when the Japanese uh -huh. brought up with the savages, I had to win. Thought about the war long before they brought the battle in. Hashtag warrior, what he channeling. Pick up the ball, then I'ma slam it in. What do you call what's really happening? Slap it with the bat in hand. Full house, now bring it back again. Oh, you lost, get back to hassling. Uh -huh. Hustling hard to get back to the front Reach for the stars until the day you catching them up But you ain't never gonna catch me, son You can call me the immaculate one Fuck the track and you're done Supersonic, I'm a comic, short the black of the sun It's not back to the one uh. If I was born to be a winner I'ma grow up to be a go-getter Blood, sweat, and tears written in the plaques of kings One in a million, the billions a half percent Come on. If I was born to be a winner you I'ma grow up to be a go-getter go get up. But sweat your tears written in the blacks of kings One in a million, the billion is a half percent Come on, if I was born to be a winner Then I'ma grow up to be a go-getter But sweat your tears written in the blacks of kings One in a million, the billion is a half percent If I was born to be a winner Then I'ma grow up to be a go-getter But sweat your tears written in the blacks of kings One in a million, the billion is a half percent